Section 1 of The Sikh Religion, Its Gurus, Sacred Writings, and Authors, Volume 3. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The Sikh Religion, Its Gurus, Sacred Writings, and Authors, Volume 3, by Max Arthur McAuliffe life of guru arjan chapter one life of guru arjan the fifth guru chapter one bibi bani wife of guru ram das gave birth to arjan at goindwal on tuesday the seventh day of the dark half of baisak sambat sixteen twenty a d fifteen sixty three we have already related one legend of guru amar das's fondness for his grandson arjan and of his offer to him of the guruship another legend is also current the child arjan one day found his way to the bed of guru amar das while taking his repose it was generally considered a serious thing to disturb the guru in his siesta bibi bani on missing the child ran to fetch him he had however already awakened the guru who said let him come to me ye mira dohita panika bohita hawega this grandson of mine shall be a boat to take mankind across the ocean of the world. Arjan was in due time married to Ganga, daughter of Krishan Chand, a resident of the village of Mio in the Phylor sub-collectorate of the present district of Jalandhar. The details of Arjan's life up to the date of his father, Guru Ram Das's death, are given in the life of the latter. It will be remembered that he died in Goindwal, after his decease mori maternal uncle of arjan bestowed on him a turban as his father's heir according to ancient custom prithia urged that it was he himself who as eldest son of the late guru ram das should receive the turban upon this guru arjan conferred it on him and returned to amritsar a short time afterwards prithia met sulahi khan a revenue officer of the province of lahore and interested him in a complaint which he was preparing to make to the emperor on the subject of his supersession by his youngest brother prithia next complained to the chadras of amritsar that he and his brother had been left without maintenance the chadras made a representation to guru arjan on the subject he accordingly granted certain taxes and house rents to prithia the customs duties of pasya khan chak a ward of amritsar to mahamdev his second brother and merely reserved for himself the voluntary offerings of the faithful as we have seen it was under guru amar das that jetha his son-in-law afterwards guru ram das began the excavation of the tanks of santaksar and amritsar and the foundation of the city after the death of guru ram das guru arjan applied himself to the task of completing the tanks and extending the city of ramdaspur it was his practice to go every day and sit under a shisham tree which had sheltered guru ram das and superintend the work when the tank of santaksar was approaching completion it is said the workmen came on a hut in which a naked yogi was seated in profound contemplation the guru clothed him and restored him to consciousness he was rubbed and the breath which was concentrated in his brain was diffused through the, his body he then opened his eyes and seeing the guru and his sikhs standing round him inquired who are you and who reigneth now by buddha answered these and many other queries the guru interrogated him as to how he had been so long concealed alive beneath the earth the yogi replied i pleased my guru and he granted me the privilege of lying in deep contemplation here he promised that i should sleep till the coming of guru arjan who would awaken me and grant me deliverance he then put several questions to the guru who replied by the following hymn a player playeth his part and representeth many characters but when he taketh off his disguises the play is brought to an end and he assumeth his original appearance what characters appeared and disappeared whither did they vanish and whence did they come 
many waves are formed in the water and ornaments of many fashions are made of gold i have seen seeds of various kinds sown when the produce ripeneth the seed reappeareth in its original shape in a thousand water-pots there is one sky reflected when the water-pots burst the sky remaineth as before man goeth astray through the sins of covetousness and worldly love but when he is freed from his error he assumeth the likeness of god who is imperishable and perisheth not who neither cometh nor goeth the perfect guru hath washed away the filth of my pride and nanak hath obtained the supreme state it is said that the yogi on hearing this found his doubts resolved and obtained divine knowledge he then cast aside his body in the words of the sikh chronicler as a snake sloughs his skin and by the favour of the guru obtained salvation the tank from the site of which the yogi had emerged was completed on the first of fagan sambat sixteen forty five a d fifteen eighty eight the guru hastened the construction of the amritsar or sacred tank and projected the har mandar or temple of god he appointed his most trustworthy sikhs Bais Buddha, Salo, Bhagtu, Paira, Balo, Kaliana, and others to superintend the work and procure lime, bricks, and all other necessary materials. The removal of the earth had all been effected under Guru Ram Das in Sambat, sixteen thirty four. The task of making the masonry side walls and floor fell to Guru Arjan one day the guru seated in court said that in order to complete the work more money was required and he suggested to his sikhs to endeavour to obtain it from the hill chiefs bhai kaliana said he would gladly act in furtherance of the guru's wishes he proceeded to the hindu state of mandi in the hills and appreciating the beauty of the country after his residence in the plains decided to sojourn there on the occasion of the janam ashtami eighth day of the dark half of the month of Badan, the anniversary of krishan's birth the raja decreed that all the inhabitants of his state should observe a rigid fast during the day and not sleep the following night but keep vigil occupy their time uttering krishan krishan in the morning they should repair to the temple to behold the salagram and there they might break their fast by drinking water in which the salagram had been bathed kaliana was the only one who heeded not these stringent orders he did not fast or go to the temple or drink the water in which the idol had been bathed in reply to several questions as to the cause of his disobedience he replied my god is a living being who speaketh and conferreth great happiness on his worshippers vain is the worship of a lifeless stone which neither eateth nor speaketh nor conferreth favours it is true that you occasionally fast but at the same time you refrain not from grievous sins the sikhs of my guru eat little and thus are ever fasting they ever restrain lust and wrath and apply their hearts to god's worship he then repeated the following hymn of guru arjan did god put aside all the other days of the month that he should have been born on the eighth man led astray by error uttereth nonsense god is not subject to birth and death man taketh cakes and giveth them secretly to an idol to eat o brute of an infidel god is not born nor doth he die all thy sin resulteth from fondling the idol may the mouth which saith god entered a womb be burnt nanak's god is everywhere he is not born nor doth he die he cometh not and goeth not on hearing this everybody laughed and began to criticize kaliana's words they were repeated throughout the city and the raja was informed that there had come to the state a stranger who spoke slightingly of the salagram and called it a stone and who did not fast on the holy anniversary of krishan's birth the raja became very wroth and at once sent an orderly to summon kaliana when he arrived the raja in imperious and angry tones asked him to tell his place of residence his religion and the name of his guru Ga kaliana replied on the throne of the holy guru nanak who was very famous in the world now sitteth the holy and perfect guru arjan we who are his disciples obtain the object of our desires from him 
he giveth us instruction which conferreth happiness here and hereafter we ever read his hymns wherefore we reverence not stones which neither see nor hear nor speak how can a stone be pleased and what can we gain by worshipping it god who is the life within our lives by whose support we exist and who is ever bounteous to us all that god you suppose to be a stone god who pervadeth sea and land who conferreth happiness here and hereafter who is contained in animate and inanimate nature who is in the past present and future who is supreme in the three worlds and to whom none is equal that god you imagine to be an inanimate object how can he be pleased with you when you treat him with such utter indignity the raja finding kaliana thus intractable ordered that he should be imprisoned next day he was again produced and ordered to bow before the idol kaliana refused and said his idol was guru arjan the raja then ordered him to lose one of his legs as punishment and be expelled the country after the delivery of this order the raja fainted and the execution was accordingly stayed every known remedy was employed to revive him but in vain the wise men at the royal court frankly said that this was all the result of the annoyance inflicted upon the holy stranger instead of being punished he ought to have been received with hospitality and respect better counsels having thus prevailed kaliana was called to the raja's bedside he said he could cure him if he promised to believe in the guru and become one of his sikhs otherwise he had no healing power his ministers promised on behalf of the raja that he would act as kaliana desired upon this kaliana stood up clasped his hands and prayed to god to save the monarch's life while kaliana was thus praying the raja recovered consciousness on seeing kaliana as his physician standing before him he ordered that he should be received into his palace and treated with all possible courtesy and distinction the raja after complete recovery begged kaliana to take him to the guru the raja went with his queens his concubines and his army and pitched his camp outside amritsar kaliana proceeded to inform the guru of the monarch's arrival and of the circumstances which had led to it the raja next day accompanied only by his mace-bearers went on foot to see the guru on arriving in his presence he put his head on the guru's feet and begged him to save him now that he had come under his protection the guru imparted to him religious instruction upon which he realized his past errors the guru asked him to stay with him for three days and he would reap the advantage thereof the raja consented to delay his departure and also to take his meals from the guru's kitchen in due time he took leave of the guru and returned with all his suite to his own kingdom there is a story told of one manj a votary of saki sarwar a mohammedan peer whose shrine is on the border of balakistan the guru's fame had reached manj he had heard the guru's hymns recited and passionately desired to behold him when this favour had been vouchsafed him he made the following requests o guru heal my three fevers make me a sikh and deeming me thy servant save me and remove the great pain of transmigration the guru replied thou hast made saki sarwar thy priest his way is easy sikhism on the contrary is difficult in it thou canst not put thyself forward or assert thyself thou canst not embrace it without being ready to sacrifice without a groan thy life on its behalf if thou become my sikh thou shalt be an object of public obloquy thy relations will ridicule thee and not allow thee to associate with them they will also dispossess thee of all thy property if thou art prepared to endure such hardships and sufferings then mayest thou become a disciple of mine otherwise continue to worship the shrine of thy saint and talk not of sikhism keep thy wealth and the good opinion of thy family why heap on thyself trouble by embracing my religion manj replied o guru the very moment i saw thee and heard thy words i turned away from saki sarwar 
and I was overwhelmed with shame when I reflected that in imitation of others I bowed my head at the shrine of a pretended saint possessing no real greatness. Thus do men forfeit their religion and lose the advantage of human birth. Manj thus spoke in his humility, and tears clouded his eyes. The guru replied, Accept Sikhism, worship the true God, and it shall be a source of happiness to thee. The guru then told his visitor that he must go home, demolish the niche appropriated to Saki Sarwar's worship in his dwelling, return to the guru, and place himself under his protection. Manj did all this, returned to the guru, lived by manual labor, and contributed a fourth part of his earnings to the Sikh cause. A Sikh named Bahilo came from Alwa to visit the guru. He professed to know how to make bricks in the most durable manner. The guru accordingly entrusted to him the whole of the brick-making necessary for the completion of the tanks and the temple. Indeed, there were many Sikhs at the time who served the guru with the utmost fidelity. Among others, the names of Ajab, Ajaib, and Umar Shah are mentioned. They were Masans who collected offerings for the guru and faithfully delivered them. On one occasion, he asked them in what light they regarded the offerings which passed through their hands. They replied that they regarded them as poison, not only for their bodies, but for their souls. End of section 1section two of the sikh religion its gurus sacred writings and authors volume three this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox dot org the sikh religion its gurus sacred writings and authors volume three by max arthur mcauliffe life of guru arjan chapter two Unexpected help reached the Guru from various quarters. One Gangaram, a Brahmin merchant, came from Batinda with corn to sell. He visited the Guru and remained with him for some time. During his stay, the Guru's kitchen one day became empty, so Gangaram gave up all his corn and fed for a space of five days all the labourers on the tank. As the Basaki fair was approaching, the Guru persuaded him to stay and enjoy it. Large offerings were made to the Guru on the occasion, all of which he ordered to be given to Ganga Ram. This was done to test his devotion and sincerity. Ganga Ram, however, refused to accept them. The Guru, who was naturally pleased at meeting such a disinterested friend, commended and blessed him. When the tank was excavated, it was represented to the Guru that Har Mandar or the temple of God to be built in the midst of it should be raised higher than all other buildings in the neighborhood so that it might receive proper respect. The guru replied, No, what is humble shall be exalted. The more a tree is laden with fruit, the more its branches descend to the earth. By whatever way you approach the temple, you must descend eight or ten steps. Wherefore, let the Har Mandar be made the lowest edifice of all. The guru himself was humble, but through his spiritual greatness he obtained the dignity of being visited by people of rank from all parts of India and receiving their rich offerings. Hindu temples are closed on three sides and opened only towards the east or rising sun. The great Sikh temple at Amritsar was to be open on all sides. This meant that the Sikh worship was open to all and was not concerned with sun worship. The Granth Sahib is placed in the middle of the temple so that no man may seat himself in its place. It was on the 1st of Magh, Sambat, 1645 A.D. 1589, the Guru laid the first brick of the masonry foundation of the Har Mandar or the Darbar Sahib, now known to Europeans as the Golden Temple. A mason afterwards accidentally displaced the brick, whereupon the guru prophesied that the foundation should again have to be laid. His words were subsequently fulfilled. Ahmad Shah Abdali in Sambat 1819 destroyed the temple and desecrated the tank. 
Two years afterwards, the great army of the Khalsa recovered possession of the temple, relayed its masonry foundation, and reconstructed it. The guru had given orders that only kiln-dried bricks should be employed. Some masands who had charge of the bricks resolved to cheat the guru and scamp the work. They smeared sun-dried bricks with plaster and laid them. The guru heard of their dishonesty and ordered them to desist. They disobeyed his orders three times. He then dismissed them and said that when he became tenth guru he would visit them with condign punishment when the sikhs in large numbers contributed their assistance and the tank and temple were approaching completion the guru felt that god himself had assisted in the work and in joy and gratitude composed the following god himself came and stood up to do the work of the saints into the beautiful land and the beautiful tank he poured nectarious water he poured nectarious water completed the work and all our desires are fulfilled there are rejoicings in the world and all anxiety is at an end the vedas and the purans sing the praises of him who is fixed and imperishable god hath been mindful of his usual function nanak hath meditated on his name the creator gave me the nine treasures wealth and supernatural power i have not been in want of anything i have obtained happiness eating spending and living comfortably god's gifts ever increase his gifts increase are never exhausted and i have found the searcher of hearts millions of obstacles have been removed and trouble hath not approached me peace composure and happiness in abundance are mine and all my craving is satisfied nanak singeth the praises of the lord wonderful is his praise he did it whose work it was what is wretched man the saints are adorned by singing god's praises and ever wishing him victory pleasure is produced by singing god's praises and forming an alliance with his saints how shall his praises be recounted who exerted himself in the construction of the tank bathing in this tank is equal to bathing in the sixty-eight places of pilgrimage to the bestowal of alms and the performance of great purifications the purification of sinners is the function of the lord his word is nanak's support treasury of excellences my god creator what praises of thine may i utter the prayer of the saint is o lord grant us the great elixir of thy name give us the name grant us this boon forget us not for a moment o tongue repeat god's praises let us ever sing them night and day the mind and body of him who loveth the name shall be filled with ambrosial essence nanak representeth my desires have been fulfilled i live by a sight of thee the following also was composed on the same occasion the creator stood in the midst of the work and not a hair of any man's head was touched the guru will render ablution herein very profitable and by repeating god's name sins shall depart o saints ram das's tank is excellent he who batheth in it shall save his family his own soul too shall be saved he who here below singeth a song of rejoicing over this work shall obtain the fruit his heart desireth he who while meditating on his god cometh to bathe here shall be made safe and whole he who batheth in the saint's tank shall obtain final salvation meditating on god's name he shall not die or suffer transmigration he to whom god is merciful knoweth divine knowledge his cares and anxiety shall depart who seeketh the protection of baba nanak and god the guru thus described the advantages of the tank by bathing in the tank of ram das all the sins that man committeth shall be done away and he shall become pure by his ablutions the perfect guru hath given us this boon 
when we meditate on the guru's instruction god bestoweth all comfort and happiness and causeth the whole cargo to cross over safely in the association of the saints uncleanness departeth and the supreme being abideth with us nanak by meditating on the name hath found god the primal being end of section two section three of the sikh religion its gurus sacred writings and authors volume three this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox dot org the sikh religion its gurus sacred writings and authors volume three by max arthur mcauliffe life of guru arjan chapter three when the tank and temple were completed there were great rejoicings the enormous exertions and personal sacrifices made by Bhais buddha bhagtu and bahilo are especially mentioned one day as they were all bathing guru arjan shed tears on seeing the state of their bodies as a result of their labours the guru said with mournful voice that as the tank had been constructed by such devout and sincere sikhs all sins should be removed and all desires fulfilled by bathing in it and duly worshipping god he who batheth herein having meditated on his god shall be completely restored to health he who batheth in the tank of the saints shall obtain salvation he who meditateth on god's name shall not die or suffer transmigration he to whom god is merciful is thoroughly acquainted with divine knowledge guru nanak hath entered god's sanctuary he hath removed all my cares and anxieties the following was composed by the guru on the same occasion god himself hath given the support of his lotus feet he who entereth god's asylum shall ever be renowned god is the preserver unequalled holy is his service the divine guru hath made ramsdaspur god's empire ever and ever meditate on god and no obstacle shall thwart you nanak by praising the name the fear of enemies fleeth away the guru wrote the following on the completion of the har mandar by repeating god's name i have made god's temple ye saints and worshippers sing god's praises remember remember the lord your god and ye shall be released from all your sins by singing god's praises the supreme position is obtained his word is the best the savour of divine knowledge is very sweet when the tale of the ineffable is told good the juncture true the time and moment when i had the immovable foundation laid o slave nanak when god was merciful everything was completed the instruments of joy continually play the supreme being hath taken his abode in my heart the performance of the work of the true one under the guru's instruction is best of all by it false doubts and fears are dispelled the guru hath spoken the divine word on continually hearing it the mind and body are refreshed he whom god hath made his own hath obtained all happiness in his house are the nine treasures his garners are filled with god's name which he loveth nanak the servant who is fully fortunate shall never forget god when god the lord of the umbrella affordeth shelter all trouble departeth the abode of sorrow and sin hath fallen and the work hath succeeded when the lord god ordered it misfortune was averted and true religion and charity flourished ever meditate on this god whether sleeping sitting or standing the treasure of excellences the sea of happiness the lord is in sea and land in the nether and upper regions o slave nanak there is no shelter except in god my house hath been constructed my garden and tank have been constructed may god enter therein my heart hath become glad my friends and associates rejoice and sing songs of praise and gladness to the lord they have sung the true god's praises meditated on him and obtained all their desires they who are attached to the guru's feet are ever awake in their hearts resound god's praises when the lord who dwelleth in happiness 
casteth a look of favour this world and the next are arranged nanak representeth ever repeat his name who supporteth soul and body the emperor akbar's new prime minister raja birbar a learned and accomplished man was on religious grounds hostile to the guru and jealous of his daily increasing influence and popularity the minister was a great favourite of the emperor who desired to have him always by his side he is said to have been capable by the force of his intellect of telling the emperor his secrets at any time his energy blazed for a while but it was only the expiring flicker of the lamp on account of his hostility to the guru evil days came upon him on the failure of zain khan koka in his expedition against the yusuf zais birbar was ordered to proceed to him with reinforcements before his departure he received a written permission from the emperor to levy a tax of a rupee on the house of every khatri on the way he crossed the bias and sent his agents to collect the tax in amritsar the khatris there refused payment and complained to the guru he represented to the prime minister's agents the tax is on khatris we are sikhs and look for exemption up to the present the government has never imposed forced labour or taxes on the guru's house my kitchen is kept open by the offerings of sikhs and saints no one has refused access to it take as much corn and food as you require but i have no money to give you i live on confidence in god the agents repeated this speech to the prime minister who became furious on hearing it he said i am a commander of many men how dareth the guru disobey me moreover i bear the emperor's order even if it be the guru's house it is for sikhs and not for me to reverence it upon this birbar sent some soldiers to the guru with the following message thou art a khatri a subject and in every way subordinate to the state if thou come to meet me it will be well otherwise i will sack the whole of thy city the soldiers went but were dumbfounded in the presence of the guru divining their object he thus addressed them my friends i care not for any one nor do i fear any one let raja birbar come and do what he pleaseth the creator will protect me the soldiers fearing the guru's words and also their master's wrath went and falsely told him that the guru would come on the morrow raja birbar said what, what mattereth it if he be a saint or an object of reverence or even very old if he have not fear of me well if he come not to-morrow i will sack amritsar that night the raja never slept through perturbation of mind meanwhile another order arrived from the emperor telling the raja to make haste and proceed with his troops by forced marches to unite with zain khan against the yusuf zaris the raja was much disappointed on receiving this peremptory command as it left him no time to wreak his vengeance on the guru he ordered his staff to remind him of the guru on his return and said that if he did not then get a rupee from each house in amritsar he would raise the city to its foundations as the sacrificial fire flames up when clarified butter is thrown on it so did the raja's spirit burn at the recollection of the guru's language when the sikhs communicated to the guru the raja's wrathful words he merely said if the raja return he will give us trouble zain khan the commander-in-chief and raja birbar held divided councils they were attacked and defeated by the yusuf zais zain khan escaped with difficulty but birbar was slain prithi chand in alliance with sulahi khan found ample opportunities of annoying the guru wazir khan the emperor's assistant prime minister interposed on the guru's behalf and prevailed on sulahi khan to bring the contending brothers to a compromise the reason why wazir khan espoused the guru's cause is said to have been the following once as he was lying ill in his house in lahore suffering from dropsy a sikh passed by singing the guru's sukhmani as wazir khan listened his pain decreased when the sikh had gone beyond hearing the pain appeared again when he returned by the same route singing the same strain wazir khan's pain was again allayed he called the sikh and requested him to continue to seek the sukhmani for him 
he then distributed sacred food in the guru's name and was soon restored to perfect health when he found an opportunity he visited the guru told him the whole circumstance and became a devout follower of his wazir khan until his death retained sikhs in his service to sing the guru's hymns for him every morning before daybreak a time which the sikhs called the ambrosial hour when wazir khan solicited the guru to give him instruction the guru addressed him the following o servant of god the inscrutable cease to think of worldly occupations become the dust of the feet of poor travellers thus shall the darwesh be accepted at god's door make truth thy prayer faith thy prayer carpet chasten desires and subdue thy feelings make thy body the mosque thy conscience the mula and the very pure god thy creed make thy sharia the practice of real sacred law make thy tarikat the search for god and abandonment of the world make thy marifat o devotee the chastening of thy mind and thy hakikat the meeting of god by which thou shalt not die again make the restraint of thine organs of action and perception from evil ways thy hearty practice of the precepts of the koran and sacred books make subjugation of the five thieves thy sadak charity thy suburi and thou shalt be accepted make kindness thy maka humility thy fasting implicit obedience to the word of thy priest thy heaven the service of god thy hurus thy nur and thy perfume and god thy lofty hudra he who practices truth is a kazi he who chasteneth his heart is a haji he who banisheth satan is a mula and he who praiseth god is a darwesh at every time and on every occasion remember god the creator in thy heart make the subjection of thy ten organs the rosary by which god is remembered in thy heart good conduct and great restraint over thyself thy circumcision know in thy heart that everything is for the moment sports banquets and sodalities are all entanglements kings rulers and nobles are perishable god's gate alone is the stable place let first god's praises second patience third mildness fourth almsgiving fifth the five evil passions restrained in one place be thy five most precious times of prayer make the knowledge that god is everywhere thy daily worship the abandonment of evil deeds the water-pot in thy hand the knowledge that there is but one god thy call to prayer such a muazin shall have an excellent reward what is honestly obtained eat thou as thy food wash away thy filth in the river of thy heart he who recognizeth his peer is the man for heaven azrael will not keep him in hell make good works thy body faith thy spouse and obedience to god thy pleasures and spectacles purify what is impure make god's presence thy hadis let a complete body be the turban on thy head let a mussulman be soft-hearted and wash away the filth of his heart let not the pleasures of the world approach him and let him be pure as flowers silk clarified butter or deerskin he is the object of the kindness of the kind one who is a man the manliest of men he is a shaikh a chief of shaikhs and a haji the man on whom god's look of favour falleth is his slave power belongeth to the omnipotent kindness to the kind one the attributes and love of the merciful are unfathomable understand god's order which is true o nanak and thou shalt be released from thy prison End of section 3section four of the sikh religion its gurus sacred writings and authors volume three this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox dot org the sikh religion its gurus sacred writings and authors volume three by max arthur mcauliffe life of guru arjan chapter four when the buildings around the guru's tank had increased the guru ordered his sikhs and worshippers to take up their abode in them thus did the city of amritsar gradually extend 
a seat called by salo who appears to have possessed much local influence materially assisted the guru in the accomplishment of his design after a little time however the sikhs finding there was no worldly advantage to them in living in amritsar presented a humble address to the guru true king there is here no trade or commerce of any sort by which we may gain our livelihood and support our families there are very few inhabitants and consequently as yet no buying or selling the guru in reply told them not to despair that amritsar should yet become a great city and possess a large population he counselled them to depend on prayer and divine worship for their prosperity they were to rise early bathe and go to the temple to hear expositions of the guru's hymns after that they were to attend to their worldly affairs till evening when their worship should begin anew by the repetition of the rahiras and sohila notwithstanding the compromise that had been effected the guru's quarrelsome brother prithia continued to give him every form of annoyance consequently the guru decided to leave amritsar and make a tour in the manja or country between the ravi and bias he first visited kadur and goindwal and then proceeded to the village of sarhali where he sought to obtain land whereon to build himself a dwelling a sikh of the village of baini invited the guru to visit him and the guru knowing his devotion consented when he arrived in the village the day was far advanced the sikh's wife saw that the guru was hungry but at the same time it would take too long to cook vegetables for his dinner she therefore prepared a dish of broken bread mixed with butter and sugar and laid it before him having satisfied himself he inquired the name of the village she said baini the guru replied the name of this village shall be choha that is titbit or dainty dish upon this he composed the following i am a sacrifice to my guru who implanted god's name in my heart who pointed out to me the straight road when i was in a great wilderness and darkness god is my life he feeleth anxiety for me regarding everything in this world and the next by remembering him i obtain all treasure respect greatness and perfect honour by repeating his name the dust of whose feet all saints desire millions of sins are erased let him who desireth all desirable things worship the one supreme treasure the lord is the supreme being limitless by remembering him man crosseth over the world by abiding in the association of the saints man obtaineth comfort peace and great happiness and his honour is preserved to amass god's wealth and make god's name my food nanak hath made these things his choha dainties on the same occasion the guru composed the following god's name is priceless it is naturally comfortable god abideth with me and helpeth me he forsaketh me not he is unfathomable and unrivalled he is my beloved brother my father my mother and the shelter of the saints the invisible is seen when he is obtained from the guru who o nanak is god's cholha dainty the name baini was duly changed into cholha in the government records of the period a jat inhabitant of the village of choha represented to guru arjan that the inhabitants of the village of bu would not allow his cattle to graze on their lands though he had an ancient right of pasturage the guru replied bu ju hoega that is bu shall become sterile a prediction which was subsequently fulfilled guru arjan on this tour visited a village called kanpur between goindwal and the present tarn taran he was accompanied by five sikhs including bidi chand and gur das men famous in different ways of whom we shall hereafter have much to say 
he remained the whole day engaged in his devotions in the evening it rained heavily and wintry winds were blowing bidi chand said to the guru that lofty house which thou seest in the village is very near let us go and rest there for the night the guru objected and said it would be better to remain where they were than associate with the evil people who dwelt there bidi chand however prevailed on him to let him go into the village and endeavour to secure shelter as the night was piercingly cold bidi chand begged the people to let his party have even one room in which they could all sleep together the villagers only laughed at him and called the guru and his sikhs hypocrites bidi chand went and duly informed the guru of the character of his reception the guru replied pay no heed i told thee they were foul-tongued people whoever hath devotion in his heart will come to us of his own accord and give us accommodation for the night as guru arjan had anticipated hema a devout sikh of the village arrived and said o true guru i have a tattered hut made out of grass and twigs which is at thy service it will be hallowed by receiving thee hema who had been made a sikh by guru ram das lived by grinding corn for the villagers his leisure time he employed in repeating the guru's hymns though he was extremely poor and possessed only a coarse blanket to wear his hut was ever open to the stranger the guru seeing his love and devotion gladly accepted his hospitality he then cooked and supplied his distinguished guest with the best food in his possession before retiring he took off his sole blanket and put it under the guru as bedding so that he might enjoy sweet repose the guru seeing his devotion composed the following very beautiful is that hut in which god's praises are sung while the mansion in which god is forgotten is of no avail there is a pleasure even in poverty when in the company of the saints god is remembered may that grandeur which is bound up with mammon perish even when turning a handmill or wearing a coarse blanket the heart may be happy and contented that empire is of no avail which conferreth not satisfaction they who wander even naked in the love of the one god obtain honour while vain are silks and satins attachment to which maketh man covetous everything is in thy power o god thou actest and causest to act may nanak obtain the gift of remembering thee at every breath he draweth on the same occasion the guru composed the following the place where the name of the beloved god is repeated is like a mansion of gold the city in which the name of god is not repeated is like a wilderness he who eating dry bread remembereth god shall behold him whether at home or abroad know that he who through pampering his belly committeth bad deeds is planting for himself a garden of poison the spiritually ignorant man who loveth not the saints and committeth sins in company with the infidel loseth his human body so difficult of attainment and uprooteth himself i have entered thine asylum o compassionate to the poor o ocean of comfort my great god nanak singeth thy praises mercifully preserve his honour the guru remained for some time in kanpur during his stay hema obtained his desire and went to his heavenly abode after the guru's departure the emperor's viceroy who had some reason to be dissatisfied with the inhabitants of kanpur sent an army against it raised it to the ground and massacred its chief inhabitants the survivors had reason to reflect on the words of kabir kabir the house in which god and his saints are not served is like a cremation ground and ghosts dwell therein the guru thence proceeded to the village of kara where he was pleased with the prospect around him the flowering woods and glades the limpid water and the fresh and exhilarating atmosphere 
on entering the village he received a friendly reception from the headmen they afterwards assisted him in obtaining land from the villagers on which he laid the foundation of what is now the famous sikh city of tarn taran and proceeded to construct a tank for the devotional ablutions of his sikhs the year in which these events occurred is stated to be a d fifteen ninety the name tarn taran means a raft to take men across the world's ocean the guru at great expense built lime kilns and caused bricks to be baked when these were seen by nur ul din the local mohammedan governor they were according to the tyrannical custom of the age seized by him for the construction of a seraglio designed by the emperor for the public use the sikhs on seeing this suggested to the guru to write to the emperor to allow the tank to be finished and to inspire fear in nur ul din the guru who was the essence of humility refused to take notice of the outrage he said that god had not yet ordered the tank to be made wherefore they were to stop its construction altogether mercy continued the guru is the basis of religious worship wherefore we should have mercy on every one all the acts of him who hath not mercy in his heart are vain in the sambat year eighteen thirty two a d seventeen seventy five sardar kushal singh of faizulapur and sardar jasa singh of ramgar destroyed nur ul din's edifice and employed the bricks of which nur ul din had robbed the guru in the construction of the tank the guru then went into the jalandhar district where he purchased land to build another city kartarpur or the city of the creator which has since risen to considerable spiritual and temporal eminence it lies in what is called the jalandhar doab between the bias and the satluj rivers the guru with his own hands cut the first sod for the construction of the city and its necessarily accompanying well to supply water to the inhabitants the well he called gangsar or the ganges tank for the following reason a man called baisaki who used every year to visit the ganges once called upon the guru on his way the guru asked him not to go but bathe in his well worship god repeat the true name and he should thus obtain all the advantages of bathing in the ganges baisakhi respectfully represented that he had made a vow to go to the ganges and must accordingly proceed thither the guru on seeing his determination allowed him to continue his journey when baisakhi on the point of returning sought to fill a vessel with ganges water it slipped from his hand and was taken away by the current he did all in his power to recover it but in vain when he returned to the guru and related the untoward incident it is said that the guru to his astonishment produced in his presence from the new well the very vessel that had fallen from his hands at the ganges baisakhi was then convinced that his pilgrimage to hardwar had been in vain on this account the well at kartarpur was called the gangsar the guru went to the country of naka at the invitation of bai buria chaudhri chuhar mal and other pious sikhs he visited kemkaran chunian and other villages where he preached with great success he then went to jambar where he remained for some time during which he converted kidara keda samdu mukanda tulsa lalu and others the guru then proceeded to lahore at the request of the sikhs who resided there he rested in the dabi bazaar on the site of the present guru's bawali and planned its construction people of all classes hearing of his fame flocked to see him receive his instruction and make provision for their future salvation thither came the yogi sambunath and the hindu saints kana and chaju the moslem saints shah hussein shah suleiman shah inyat qadari shaikh 
wali shah and others all humbling themselves before the guru and beseeching soul-saving religious instruction the guru fixing his thoughts on god uttered the following hymn o wise men think of the lord in your hearts the true king the releaser from bondage dwelleth in the heart by the mind's affection nothing is equal in value to the sight of god thou art the pure cherisher thou thyself art the lord great and incomparable give me thy hand o brave one thou art the only one to assist me o creator by thy power didst thou create the world thou art nanak's prop this hymn when heard by the viceroy of lahore produced a great impression on his mind it is said that he reformed his life and devoted himself to god's service he invited the guru to ask him a favour the guru did so and the result was the excavation of the bawali at the viceroy's expense the guru then went to the shrine of guru nanak at dera baba nanak in the gurdaspur district thence he proceeded to barath in the same district to visit sri chan guru nanak's son after mutual salutations they held a conversation sri chand asked why the guru wandered hither and thither and did not reside in amritsar the guru replied that prithia was distressed at his residence there and so he travelled to propagate his religion after some further conversation in the course of which sri chand censured the conduct of prithia and said it would be the cause of his damnation the guru took his departure for amritsar and thus consulted the wishes of his sikhs and of shri chand end of section four section five of the sikh religion its gurus sacred writings and authors volume three this is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The Sikh Religion, Its Gurus, Sacred Writings and Authors, Volume 3 by Max Arthur McAuliffe. Life of Guru Arjan, Chapter 5. Chapter 5 after the guru's return to amritsar prithia continued to annoy him as before prithia's jealousy was to a great extent fanned by his wife's reproaches she said to her husband my lord hadst thou pleased thy father by serving him thou shouldst now be guru and i should be the guru's revered wife the eldest son hath been superseded the youngest hath obtained the position of guru and is worshipped by the world the emperor and kings bow before him wealth ever cometh to him while the fates are against us prithia replied thou hast the greatest wealth of all in thy son murban when he shall have grown up he shall obtain the guruship arjan hath no son himself and his prosperity is but short-lived the guru's wife who overheard this conversation repeated it to her husband he bade her pay no heed to it but continue to repeat the true name he then addressed her the following hymn o oh my soul grasp the shelter of the supreme and omnipotent god repeat the name of god who supporteth the regions of the earth and the universe o oh saint of god abandon thine intellectual pride understand the will of god and thou shalt be happy except the act of god is good in weal and woe meditate on him the creator saveth in a moment millions of fallen ones and in this there is no delay the lord is the destroyer of the pain and sorrow of the poor he rewardeth whom he pleaseth he is mother and father cherisher of life and soul and a sea of comfort for all there is no deficiency in the creator's gifts he is omnipresent and a mine of jewels the beggar beggeth thy name o lord thou abidest in every heart the slave nanak hath entered the sanctuary of him from whom nobody departeth empty the guru continued his instruction fools love the world though it is as a mirage an enchanted city or the shadow of a tree in the same way nanak wise men regard family and wealth as perishable and remember god's name 
o oh, my good wife even if carmo's jealousy and pride please thee not be not jealous and proud like her if one throw a handful of dust at the moon it will not reach it but recoil on the thrower if my eldest brother's wife hath addressed thee bad language bear it shaikh farid hath said farid do good for evil clothe not thy heart with anger thus shall thy body not suffer pain and thou shalt obtain everything the guru's wife said although thine instruction is the best yet my married life would be most happy if thou grant me a son great king they who seek thy protection obtain happiness in this life and salvation in the next if thou grant not thy servant a son it will not be well with the object of giving his sikhs a lesson in humility he decided on referring her to bai buddha to pray for the desired boon and gave her the following directions my beloved if thou really desire a son then go to bai buddha an ancient sikh of baba nanak's time and wait on him he dwelleth in a forest he is a humble man he carrieth firewood and grass and sendeth to my kitchen the corn which is the guru's right after the cultivators have taken their share he is ever engaged in worship and only eateth when he receiveth food from the guru's kitchen if he be pleased he will bless thee and thou shalt have a son god arrangeth the affairs of his saints next day the guru's wife set out in great state to see bai buddha she took with her as her attendants the wives of the headmen of amritsar they rode in carriages palkis and sedans and formed an imposing procession she was also attended by servants male and female who carried plates of sweets as offerings to the saint they reached his place in the forest in the afternoon when he was hungry and thirsty and in momentary expectation of his meal from the guru's kitchen when he saw the dust of the cortege flying and the carriages palkis sedans bearers and horsemen approaching at high speed he said is there a stampede from amritsar that the inhabitants have left the city and sought shelter here the guru's wife on being informed of bai buddha's surprise was much distressed and remarked that her journey had brought her a curse instead of a blessing having made her obeisance and placed before him the delicious food she had brought she addressed him thou hast seen and heard and served guru nanak thou art respected by us and worthy art thou of reverence the guru hath sent me to thee that by thy blessing i may obtain the boon of a son bai buddha replied revered lady i am but the grass-cutter and servant of thy house if i possess the power thou supposest why should i cut grass and sweep the guru's stables it is the guru himself who fulfilleth every one's desires it is the guru himself who is the ocean of supernatural power should he desire to dismiss me i must be content as for these savoury dishes thou placest before me i am not worthy of them they are only fitted for the guru himself if thou think i should take them expect not service from me were i to eat them how could i afterwards think of cutting grass if thou desire menial service from me then i am thy slave but take away these viands the lady's further solicitations were useless she had to return disappointed and crestfallen to the guru the guru on hearing the result of his wife's mission quoted to her the following hymn of guru amar das o man be not proud of thy knowledge become pious and humble within thee are ignorance and pride of intellect by the true word wash away this filth be humble before the true guru and allow not thyself to be at all noticed the world is burning by its own pride allow not thyself to be noticed act according to the will of the true guru and abide by his wishes thus saith nanak forsake pride and continue to be of humble mind thus shalt thou obtain happiness the guru continued the saints and the true guru are not pleased with display if thou desire anything from them never appear in the character of a superior come i will teach thee how to succeed with devotion in thy heart grind corn knead the flour and bake the bread with thine own hands dress it with onions then take it with some thick buttermilk on thy head to buy buddha dress thyself as a cultivator's wife 
and go on foot and alone so shalt thou obtain the saint's blessing the guru's wife in accordance with his instructions proceeded next day without attendance to bhai buddha she found him hungry as before and waiting for his meal on seeing her he thought to himself if a mother take not care of her son who will do so she hath brought me my meal and i need it much i was wrong in sending her away yesterday but she hath pardoned mine error hail lady give me what thou hast brought bhai buddha while eating said the guru is the owner of the storehouse but i have received an order to open it as thou hast given me food to my heart's content so shalt thou have a son to thy heart's content he shall be very handsome and brave possess spiritual and temporal power become a mighty hunter ride on royal steeds wear two swords be puissant in battle and trample on the mughals with every morsel he ate bhai buddha uttered a blessing on the lady's progeny and said as i now crush these onions thou hast brought me so shall thy son crush the heads of his enemies and be at once a great warrior and exalted guru his shall not be the humble seat of a village guru but a gorgeous imperial throne as i am now filled with thy viands so shall thy heart be filled with joy on beholding him a son who received at his birth the name of har gobind was duly conceived and in memory of the event an anniversary fair is held in the forest where bhai buddha resided the guru on hearing from his wife on her return home of the graciousness of her reception by bhai buddha said if the saints desire it they can make a poor man a king fill the empty and poise a mountain on a blade of grass it may be convenient here to give a panegyric of bhai buddha which a sikh biographer put into the mouth of guru arjan buddha sahib is the impersonation of austerity a mine of divine knowledge and virtue simple and pious he hath asserted himself he is unequalled like the sun the moon and the philosopher's stone he hath adopted no religious garb nor in any wise practised hypocrisy he hath subdued all his desires and organs here o ganga ineffable is the word of the saints in whose complete power god is o ganga the guru on being satisfied of his wife's conception composed the following that the words of holy men are immutable is apparent to all whosoever associateth with a saint shall meet the lord god this faith and comfort are obtained by uttering god's name everybody hath been making his own remarks the guru hath brought a child to my house there is no doubt god is the preserver of him who seeketh his shelter plant god's name in the soil of acts since this opportunity is difficult to find god himself is the searcher of hearts he doeth everything and causeth everything to be done it is god's function to purify many sinners be not led astray o men by the deceit of mammon nanak god will preserve his honour whom he hath robed in his court when karmo prithio's wife heard of the guru's wife's pregnancy she upbraided her husband with having falsely prophesied that no child should be born to guru arjan when bhai buddha spoke of a stampede from amritsar he little thought that there would be a stampede of another character which would give his words literal fulfilment prithia instigated his friend sulahi khan now grown insolent with power to proceed under pretence of levying tribute with a strong force to plunder amritsar and inspire fear in the guru the guru anticipating the raid and otherwise apprehending unprovoked annoyance from sulahi resolved to leave amritsar and seek shelter in wadali a village six or seven miles distant a faithful sikh apprehending danger to the guru persuaded him to retire to a tract of barren land called raur in the local dialect which belonged to him it is said that after the guru's arrival the land became green it may be here mentioned that the guru's retreat is still called the guru's raur and possesses an imposing and well-appointed temple the guru was not suffered to abide long in peace in his retreat wadali originally founded by the chambal and man tribes had become a prosperous village 
and on this account the inhabitants of the neighboring villages grew jealous and made war on them the wadali people unaccustomed to a marauding life were defeated and in their difficulties hearing that guru arjan was encamped in the vicinity sought his protection and mediation with their enemies the guru accepted the role thus offered him and proceeded with the wadali men to their village where he lived for a considerable time prithia not wishing to undergo the expense of entertaining sulahi khan went forth to meet him sulahi after salutation said prithi chand thou the eldest hast not obtained the guruship where is thy youngest brother who hath obtained it prithia replied my lord my brother arjan hearing of thine approach hath left amritsar and gone i know not whither prithia offered sulahi a present which he refused saying that it was more proper for him to give than to take a present from a guru sulahi requested prithia to let him know when arjan returned and he would take measures to restrain his irregularities the guru finding in wadali a scarcity of water ordered a large well to be dug and worked by six persian wheels chiharat whence it was afterwards called chiharta on the fifth day of the light half of mag the indian vernal festival there is a yearly fair held at the place End of chapter 5section six of the sikh religion the gurus sacred writings and authors volume three this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox dot org the sikh religion its gurus sacred writings and authors volume three by max arthur mcauliffe life of guru arjan chapter six sikhs from distant countries visited amritsar during the guru's absence but their hearts withered and pined like a lotus without the sun prithia made many efforts to convince him that he was the real guru but the crane is not made a swan by pretense or by a coat of paint he who has no spiritual peace consolation truth love and devotion cannot communicate these gifts and virtues to others har gobind was born at wadali on the twenty first of the month of har sambat sixteen fifty two a d fifteen ninety five on his birth the guru composed the following the true guru sent me a son a long-lived son hath been born by destiny when he took up his dwelling in the womb his mother's heart was exceeding glad a son a saint of god hath been born the destiny recorded in the beginning hath become manifest to all by god's order the boy hath been born in the tenth month there is no more anxiety great joy hath taken its place our female friends sing the anand the composition of the guru which is pleasing to the true lord the vine of my race hath extended and shall last for many generations god hath erected the machinery of the faith the true guru hath granted me what my heart desired having fixed my attention on the one god i have become free from anxiety as a child who is very proud of its father obeyeth his words so i speak as it pleaseth god to have me speak it is not a secret or a concealed matter that guru nanak being pleased bestowed this gift on me the guru composed the following also on the same occasion god hath remembered his function and conferred all happiness on me the saint hath been merciful and all my family is delighted the true guru himself hath accomplished the matter long be the life of har gobind god hath consulted our comfort happiness and peace of mind the woods the dales the three worlds are blooming and all creatures rejoice nanak hath obtained the object of his heart's desires god hath fulfilled them on hearing of the birth of a son to the guru karmo prithia's wife became very sorrowful she said to her husband hast thou heard of the rejoicings at wadali arjan's glory is now like that of the sun and thou art hidden like the stars before his brightness all thy talk and boasting have been in vain prithia's heart also burnt and he impudently replied my words are ever true what if a son 
hath been born to arjan shall i cherish grief in my heart i will not allow the child to live Carmo took no sustenance the following night and was quite unable to sleep the birth of a young heir reminded the sikhs of the time when the whole of ajudaya rejoiced at the accession of ram to the sovereignty and kikai one of his father's wives alone mourned the event next morning Carmo sent for an old nurse of the family and after some preliminary conversation asked her to go to wadali pretend to be a friend of the guru's family and find an opportunity of poisoning his newly born son should the nurse succeed in this she should have as much money as she pleased at present she could have one hundred rupees and when karmo's son mirban obtained the guruship she should be rewarded with a further pecuniary grant an excellent house and maintenance for life the nurse replied i have been employed in your family for many generations and now when it is my turn to obtain the post of nurse the guru's wife hath employed another my heart was already distressed before i heard thy tale in a few days thou shalt see i will accomplish thy work Carmo gave her the promised money and a splendid shawl as a retaining fee the deceitful nurse went home applied poison to the nipples of her breast mixed some more in a medicine called girti given to infants in the east and proceeded to wadali it was at a time when owing to some temporary indisposition the child refused the breast and the family was in great anxiety in consequence sage women recommended each her own medicine when karmo's nurse arrived ganja the guru's wife was much pleased to see her and the nurse too rejoiced in the hope of being able to carry out her hostile design she hypocritically said o queen ganja hundreds of thousands of congratulations to thee may thy child and thy husband live for ever thou hast not remembered me but i have remembered thee i have come to wish thee happiness ganja told her the child was not well and ceased to suckle the nurse replied bring him hither i will give him infant's medicine i understand infant's complaints and i treat numbers of them who are brought to me from distant countries after one dose of my infant's mixture they require no more prithia's wife always had her infant treated by me and he was never ill afterwards the upshot of it was that ganja deceived by her specious words entrusted the child to her the nurse took har gobind in her lap and offered him the poison medicine but he refused it she caressed and fondled him and succeeded in putting the drug into his mouth but he would not swallow it she then drew out her breast and offered it to him the moment she did so she fainted and fell backwards some put water into her mouth others sprinkled rose water on her with the object of restoring her having become conscious she looked about her and said the bribe of one hundred rupees which prithia and his wife gave me hath undone me why did i poison my breasts and undertake to kill the child the story of prithia's instigation of the child's murder spread from house to house and caused him deserved obloquy the guru composed the following hymn on the occasion the perfect guru hath stretched forth his hand and preserved him the glory of his servant hath become manifest ever repeat the guru's name ever meditate on the guru and lay before him thy heart's desires i have sought the protection of the true divine guru and his servant's service hath been successful he hath preserved my soul body youth and life saith nanak i am a sacrifice to the guru during har gobind's illness suggestions were made to the guru that recourse be had to a local witch who possessed a high reputation for skill and sorcery in the hope of obtaining from her a charm for the recovery of the child this was to be done by repeating some cabalistic words over water and then giving it to the child to drink the guru ridiculed such suggestions and such remedies and composed the following on the occasion the name of the pure one is holy water by repeating it with the tongue sins fly away god dwelleth in everything god shineth in every heart by repeating god's name man descendeth not to hell by serving god all boons are obtained god is the support of the soul god is the ship of the world by repeating his name death fleeth away god breaketh the witch's teeth god is ever the pardoner 
he giveth comfort and happiness god manifesteth his glory he is the father and mother of saints god is with the holy they continually sing of him the invisible thing is obtained by meeting the guru his servant nanak hath taken god's shelter owing to the perpetual importunity and taunting speeches of his wife carmo prithia's mind became daily sadder and he again plotted nefarious designs he sent for a snake charmer gave him some money and promising him a further large reward on his success induced him to undertake to kill the child by exposing him to a cobra as the mother was sitting at her door rejoicing in the sight of her son and pleased with his youthful gambols the snake charmer escaping her notice let a black snake loose in the courtyard har gobind took the hissing creature in his hand as it rushed towards him and killed it immediately guru arjan arrived on the spot soon after and composed the following here and hereafter our protector is god the true guru compassionate to the poor he himself protecteth his servants his voice speaketh in every heart i am a sacrifice to the guru's feet by day and night at every breath we draw he who filleth every place should be remembered thou o god art my protector true is the support of the true one greatness is obtained by devotion to thee nanak o god hath sought thy shelter when har gobind was about two years of age a deputation of the inhabitants of amritsar went to the guru at Wadali. they said to him wherever thou abidest there is happiness conscious of the advantage of beholding thee we have abandoned our villages our homes and our relations to dwell in amritsar but thou continuest to dwell apart other sikhs too come from distant countries to behold thee when they arrive in amritsar and find thee not they return to their homes come now with us ramdaspur shall long prosper by thy presence the guru acceded to their request and set out for his capital amritsar on arriving there he sent his wife child and servants to his private dwelling and then walked to the golden temple he bathed in the tank and distributed sacred food with the usual prayers then was sung the following hymn i have meditated on my guru and reached my home in comfort this is due to the greatness of the name whose worth cannot be expressed ye saints worship god 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 by worshipping him ye shall obtain everything and all your affairs shall be adjusted very fortunate is he who findeth love and devotion to god the slave nanak hath meditated on the name and thus received the reward of all happiness on that occasion also the guru composed the following i have meditated on god in my heart and so have returned home safe and sound everybody is consoled that the perfect guru hath saved us o saints my god is ever merciful god taketh no account from his worshippers but preserveth them as his children i have clasped god's name to my heart and he hath arranged all mine affairs the perfect guru being pleased gave it me nanak shall have no further anxiety the guru taking his son waited with some sacred food on prithia as his eldest brother prithia hated the sight of the guru and his son but pretending to be pleased ironically said may you both live long the guru then went with his son to visit mahadev his second elder brother and receive his blessing there were great rejoicings and illuminations when the guru after such long absence returned to amritsar accompanied by the young heir to the guruship prithia and his wife karmo alone burned with jealousy karmo addressed her husband my lord thou hast made many efforts to secure for thyself the guru's throne and kill har gobind but thou hast not succeeded now our rivals who are near us indulge in ostentatious rejoicings my breast is burning i suffer intense agony and cannot endure their happiness thou didst formerly say and thus console me that the guruship belonged to our house and that after arjan's death our son murban should inherit it now even that hope is shattered since a young prince hath been born in arjan's house wherefore contrive some other plan by which the desires of our hearts may be fulfilled prithia replied hear me my beautiful have no anxiety thy son shall sit on the guru's throne har gobind arjan's son shall be the victim of smallpox if he survive then shall we contrive some other plan for his destruction he must not live when this conversation was reported to the guru he repeated the following composition of guru ram das the perverse are all day occupied with avarice though they pretend otherwise at night oppressed by drowsiness 
and their nine apertures relax they worship not god women exercise power over the perverse and ever make fair promises but they who act as women tell them are impure thoughtless and foolish the impure who feel lust ask the way from women and travel thereby but he who walketh as the true guru telleth him is a true man the best of the best god produced all women and men he playeth every play saith nanak all is the work thou o god hast made the best of the best har gobind exhibited some feverish symptoms on the third day afterwards his body became inflamed and showed red pustules which eventually assumed a confluent form the child's eyes closed as if in perpetual sleep smallpox of a very virulent type had declared itself the child's mother prayed o oh, great god i have one son obtained after long waiting may he be able to bathe and rise in health the guru administered to his wife such consolation as suggested itself to him the people of the city advised him to make an offering to the goddess of smallpox and propitiate her by worshipping a young virgin they said the goddess is pleased when an immaculate virgin is worshipped by offering her food and money and paying her other abject service according to the skand puran of the hindus the goddess of smallpox should be thus addressed i bow to sitala devi who rideth on a donkey who is naked who weareth a broom as her diadem and whose forehead is adorned with a sieve hindus are in the habit of repeating this as an incantation in the hope of obtaining recovery from the malady the guru rejecting the advice of his hindu friends addressed them the following god is my sole prop i have relinquished other hopes god the perfect lord of excellences is powerful over all the name is the support of god's slave who entereth his protection reliance on god is in the saints hearts he himself preserveth he himself bestoweth he himself cherisheth the compassionate to the poor the ocean of favour remembereth us at every breath we draw what the creator continueth to do is for our advantage the perfect guru hath taught that happiness is obtained by the will of god they who dismiss care anxiety and calculations recognize god's order nanak they who are imbued with god's love perish not nor are they abandoned by him the child gradually began to show signs of recovery upon which the guru uttered the following i have ever and ever repeated god's name and god himself hath preserved my child the small pox is stayed our troubles are removed by god's name my god is ever merciful he who is merciful to all creatures hath heard the prayer of his worshipper god is omnipotent to act and cause to act by remembering him all sorrows depart he hath heard the supplication of his servant nanak every one may now sleep in comfort on the ninth day of the disease the child opened his eyes whereupon the guru composed the following the divine guru hath opened his eyes my anxieties have fled my prayers have been successful god hath preserved my son from the smallpox the lord the supreme being hath shown mercy nanak he who repeateth the name shall live and quaff god's nectar in the company of his saints the guru composed the following also on the same occasion the fever hath departed god hath granted relief my son is now well by the grace of god it is by god's favour men become happy and they who through various births were separated from god become united with him by ever remembering his name the abode of all diseases is destroyed with composure and devotion utter god's hymns and remember him o mortal through the eight watches of the day sorrow and pain and death approach him not saith nanak who singeth god's praises god hath protected the honour of his servant the guru gave the medicine of god's name and all the fever hath departed god of his mercy hath preserved har gobind the calamity was removed he obtained all happiness by ever reflecting on god's attributes my creator consented to the magnification of the perfect guru guru nanak laid a fixed foundation which ever groweth more secure o god thou hast been merciful there is comfort and joy o god my boy hath recovered clasping both hands i made supplication and meditated on the supreme being in my heart god giving his hand hath preserved him and removed all his sufferings the husband and wife joined in rejoicing and singing victory to god saith nanak i am a sacrifice to the man who saveth all the following also was composed by the guru on the same occasion 
the primal brahm the supreme being pardoned and all my son's maladies are healed they who enter the asylum of the perfect guru are saved and all their affairs adjusted god's servant remembereth the name which is his support the true guru being compassionate hath cured his fever be ever happy my beloved friends the guru hath preserved har gobind nanak great is the greatness of the creator true is his word and true his speech the authors of the gurbilas the suraj parkash the guru samhita and other works without paying due regard to the guru's hymns falsely asserted each according to his own hindu proclivities that the guru's wife went to worship in the temple of durja performed the hindu ceremony of ham and adored virgins all for her son's recovery there is no indication of this superstitious worship in the guru's hymns on the contrary it is only the anand of guru amar das and the other hymns quoted herein which were repeated or sung on the occasion end of section six section seven of the sikh religion its gurus sacred writings and authors volume three this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox dot org the sikh religion its gurus sacred writings and authors volume three by max arthur mcauliffe life of guru arjan chapter seven when har gobind had completely recovered there were illuminations and great rejoicings prithia's wife however kept raw the sore of her husband's inflamed mind my lord and master thy words have proved false thine enemies increase daily like the waxing while thou decreasest like the waning moon i cannot endure arjan's greatness therefore i will either drown or poison myself prithia sent for har gobind's male nurse and said to him thou art a high brahman and on that account i ever take thought for thee what are thy wages thou wearest no necklace and no bracelets arjan squandereth on others and boasteth of his generosity thou gottest nothing even when the child was born my friend if thou do business for me i will fill thy house with wealth and thou shalt not want for jewellery but since thou art intimate with arjan's family i will only tell thee what i wish thee to do on thy taking an oath on thy janu to keep my secret when the servant complied prithia said take five hundred rupees from me and kill that boy i will show thee how to do it thou wilt not find it difficult for he is all day with thee put poison either in curds or bread pudding and extract the thorn from mine eyes i will give thee half of the money now and the other half when thou hast done the deed fear not in the slightest the brahmin was thus persuaded to promise to poison the child he took very powerful poison and ground it into powder next day when the boy's mother sent him milk by another servant the brahmin found an opportunity of slipping the poison into it the child turned his head away from the poisoned food thrust it aside and asked for something else to drink the brahmin began to fondle and pat him on the head and said thou oughtest certainly to drink this the child then began to cry the guru heard him sent for the brahmin and inquired the cause of the weeping he had heard the brahmin replied that he had offered the child sweet milk but he would not take it and when pressed to do so began to cry the guru taking the child in his arms began to encourage him to drink what was offered him the child however still turned away his head and would not touch it the guru then began to suspect another plot he took some of the potion and gave it to a dog which fell ill immediately and very soon after died the brahmin seeing the state of the dog was himself seized with colic and began to suffer great agony he confessed his intention of poisoning the child at prithia's instigation and then expired upon this the guru composed the following the poison produced no impression whatever on him the evil brahmin died of the colic the supreme being himself preserved his servant the sinner died by the guru's power the servant hath meditated on his master god himself hath destroyed the plotter against the innocent god like a mother and father protected his servant the face of the slanderer is blackened here and hereafter god heard the prayer of his servant nanak and the vile sinner was destroyed without hope 
guru arjan found an opportunity of reproaching prithia with his murderous designs prithia became furious at their discovery and determined to set out with his family for dili to make a complaint to the emperor akbar against the guru and thus anticipate any charges the guru might subsequently make against him mahadev endeavoured to restrain him and quoted many passages from ancient writings to prove that brothers ought to live in harmony but prithia could not be restrained by any remonstrance prior to his departure for dili he decided on going to the village of Hihar and paying a visit to his friend sulahi sulahi conferred on him the proprietorship of the village and there he tarried for some time and built a tank for public use the guru sent by gur das to prithia with the object of endeavouring to conciliate him by gur das failed in the negotiations and only received abusive language to communicate to the guru gur das composed the following on that occasion the crane though dwelling at a place of pilgrimage is not content it reigneth near the shatrik yet he drinketh not even though the bamboo attach itself to sandal it is not perfumed the owl unlucky bird seeth not the sun the musk is in the deer's navel yet he fleeth elsewhere in quest of it the true guru arjan is the true king the mina prithia's face hath been blackened the meaning of this hymn appears to be that no one knows when he is well off prithia did not appreciate the advantage of dwelling near the guru a letter was in due time received from the emperor summoning sulahi to dili he took prithia with him to present a complaint against the guru the emperor decided in the first place that he would not interfere in the affairs of religious men and secondly that the memorial was false prithia crushed by his disappointment became seriously ill the guru on hearing the total result of his enemy's proceedings composed the following god himself showed the memorial to be false and affliction befell the sinner death shall not approach him whose helper my god is the blind fool told lies in the true court and smote his head with his hands they who commit sin contract disease god himself sat as the judge prithia is involved in the consequences of his own acts all his wealth shall pass away with his life nanak my creator guardeth the honour of those who seek the protection of his court when har gobind was of a suitable age to receive instruction the guru went to his own brother mahadev and requested him to take the boy under his protection and educate him mahadev recommended that the delicate and responsible duty should be entrusted to bhai buddha who was experienced who had seen guru nanak and by whose intercession the child had been born the guru accepted mahadev's advice and sent for bhai buddha he modestly pleaded that he was himself quite uneducated the guru replied thou hast all eloquence in thy heart as a preliminary to har gobind's education prayers were read in the temple the guru publicly announced his intention of entrusting his son's education to bhai buddha and quoted a line from one of guru nanak's hymns he who hath meditated on knowledge conferreth favour on others bhai buddha began his tuition he first wrote the thirty-five letters of the gurumukhi alphabet on a wooden tablet and told har gobind their names the pupil immediately repeated them from memory as if he had previously known them in a few days he knew how to join vowels with consonants and mastered spelling he then began to read the guru's hymns upon which his faculty of perception and comprehension was developed in a short time he received the gift of tongues he was then taught the use of offensive and defensive weapons riding swimming chemistry astronomy medicine agriculture administration and other sciences on the completion of his education the guru took him to the temple offering thanksgiving to god and acknowledgment to bhai buddha for his successful and comprehensive instruction a sikh called paira lived with guru arjan and used to wait on him day and night the teaching of the guru made a great impression on his mind at that time a proud ritualistic pandit arrived to hold a religious controversy with the guru on the morning after his arrival he put a tilak on his forehead and went and sat in devotional attitude on the margin of the guru's tank 
he was provided with a salagram a bell and a shell which he ostentatiously displayed it was the guru's custom to bathe every morning in his tank after that he used to go into the temple and make four circumambulations then going forth he used to make four more when making the first round he passed by the pandit but did not make obeisance to him or his salagram the pandit became angry and said the guru and his sikhs had sadly fallen away from orthodox worship although he calleth himself a guru said the pandit and hath followers and worshippers yet he is only a khatri and a family man while i am a rigidly continent brahmin he therefore ought to have worshipped me ram and krishan who were incarnations of god used to reverence and worship brahmins the guru knew what was passing in the brahmin's mind and stopped to speak to him at the second circumambulation excellent twice-born what fancies hast thou conceived that thou art angry pray explain the cause thereof the brahmin briefly stated the cause the guru upon this gave utterance to the following hymn thou readest the veds with their commentaries but the all-pervading god abideth not in thy heart thou givest instruction to make men firm in their faith but thou practisest not thyself what thou preachest o pandit study the veds and banish the greed of thy heart thou placest a salagram before thee but thy thoughts are dispersed in every direction thou puttest a tilak on the salagram and fallest at its feet thou blindly followest the world thou performest the six duties thou spreadest thy mat and wearest a loincloth but it is only in wealthy houses thou ever readest thy books tellest thy beads and beggest for alms o my friend no one hath thus been saved he is a pandit who acteth according to the guru's instruction maya with her three qualities departeth from him nanak seek the protection of that god with whose name the four veds are filled the brahman replied o guru even if thou think me not a fit person to bow to thou oughtest at least to have bowed to the salagram the guru then extemporized the following hymn intended to confute and humble the hindu priest saith nanak the guru hath made me this gift it is such a salagram i serve god is my worship my adoration my obeisance he batheth all day long he the supreme gayani is ever banqueting and leaveth no one unprovided for i touch his feet again and again his bell is heard in the four corners of the world his seat is ever in heaven his fan waveth over all his incense is ever diffused every heart is his casket the company of the saints is his perfect court singing god's praises which ever bestoweth pleasure is my adoration his greatness is beautiful and ever endless he who hath come under the protection of the saints feet and is fortunate shall obtain such a salagram the following was also quoted by the guru on the same occasion o blind one thou seest not with thine eyes thou must leave all these vain things and depart saith nanak o god mercifully grant me the favour of the company of the saints man obtaineth something when he becometh the dust of the saints feet he to whom god giveth understanding repeateth his name the brahman desired to continue the controversy but the guru avoided it as much as possible at last he consented to hear the brahman speak on the veds and upanishads the brahman wound up with a discourse on the nature of brahm when he had finished by salo presented himself and was welcomed by the guru as his own special ananya bhagat or monotheistic saint the brahman contended that such an appellation might only be applied to himself the guru denied this on the ground that the brahman worshipped many gods on this the brahman produced all the books he had brought with him but they failed to satisfy the guru the brahman then proposed to send his son to benares for the remainder of his library an auspicious time for the son's departure was fixed by the astrologers but after he had set out on his journey he met an ass which brayed deeming this an unlucky omen he returned the circumstance afforded much banter and amusement to the sikhs who became the more convinced of the truth of their own religion the guru summoned paira and told him that when guru nanak visited ceylon he composed the pransangali and left it there until a successor of his should demand it 
the guru gave paira directions to go and bring the volume while the question of funds for the distant journey was under consideration a sikh came forward and offered the guru five pais all he had in the world the guru gave this sum to paira for his travelling expenses and dispatched him without consulting an astrologer the brahmin remarked on this omission whereupon the guru read him a lecture on the evils of superstition bai gur das who happened to be with the guru wrote the following stanza on the occasion o brahman thou art a worshipper of vishnu and of the salagram thou listenest to the gita yet thou callest thyself a monotheist after inquiring of astrologers and calculating auspicious times thou goest on religious pilgrimages and on visits to holy places when thou goest forth if thou meet a donkey or a dog superstition is aroused by the omen and thou returnest home thou hast not the gift of continence and art not content with the support of one god indecision being in thy heart thou shalt not obtain the supreme rank such is the power of association with the company of the guru's sikhs that continence is produced man relieth on one support and his indecision is removed he will not consult the astrologers or the veds or ask the lunar or weekday nor will he clasp to his heart any superstition regarding the planets and the lunar mansions he will take no note of omens or conjunctions of planets or serve other gods and he will fix his attention love and affection on the word of the formless one the sikhs and the saints are as children the holy guru is their cherisher they who meditate on god shall obtain salvation while alive on hearing this the brahmin's pride was thoroughly humbled and he was obliged to admit that the sikhs were better than his own co-religionists his burning heart obtained comfort from the guru's instruction he threw away his salagram began to utter the true name was initiated into the sikh religion and thus obtained salvation several other learned pandits followed his example and accepted the pure faith of guru nanak paira reached ceylon with great difficulty as was natural considering the restricted travelling expenses allowed him the king of ceylon received him with respect treated him hospitably and gave him the required volume with a letter and many presents for the guru and allowed him to depart on his return journey to amritsar the pransangali was subsequently stolen by a pretended sadhu or holy man end of section seven section eight part two of the sikh religion its gurus sacred writings and authors volume three this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox dot org the sikh religion its gurus sacred writings and authors volume three by max arthur mcauliffe life of guru arjan chapter seven part two guru arjan now felt the necessity of laying down rules for the guidance of his followers in the performance of their daily religious duties and expiatory rites this course would reduce his religion to consistency and hinder divergent tenets and rituals that consummation however could only be attained when the exact words of the gurus were permanently recorded in one grand volume the guru was strengthened in this determination by information he continually received that prithia was composing religious hymns of his own which he described as the compositions of guru nanak and his successors and the ignorant populace had not sufficient intelligence to discriminate guru amar das in the twenty third and twenty fourth paris of the anand had decided that only the real hymns of the guru should be repeated and reverenced by sikhs accordingly such compositions should be collected and arranged for the guidance of the faithful nothing but evil could result from the hymns which prithia endeavoured to impose upon the public in addition to the hymns of the gurus guru arjan praised the compositions of gur das especially his waran being thus commended gur das volunteered to go to goindwal to mohan elder son of the third guru for the volumes containing the guru's compositions 
Gur Das, however, failed to attract Mohan's attention. He had locked himself in his house and was said to be intent on his devotions. Gur Das remained knocking at his door for a whole night, but failed to receive an answer. He then returned to Amritsar and told the Guru the story of his failure. Bhai Buddha then volunteered to go. On arriving in Goandwal, he endeavored to gain Mohan's attention, but also failed. He then broke open his door and found Mohan in a state which simulated unconsciousness. Mori, Mohan's younger brother, came on hearing the tumult and advised Bhai Buddha not to awaken the sleeper. Upon this, Bhai Buddha desisted and returned to Amritsar. The guru, on hearing of his ill success, decided that he would go himself. On arriving at Mohan's house, he called out to him, but received no answer. The guru then addressed him the following stanza, which might be considered partly as addressed to God and partly to Mohan, Mohan meaning the enchanter, being one of the names of the divinity. O Mohan, lofty is thy mansion, and matchless thy palace. O Mohan, saints adorn the doors of thy temple. In thy temple they ever sing the praises of the infinite and merciful God. Where the company of the saints assemble, there they meditate on thee. Show compassion and kindness, O compassionate Lord. Be merciful to the poor. Nanak representeth, I am thirsting for a sight of thee. Grant it to me, and all happiness shall be mine. On hearing this, Mohan opened the door to find that the Guru himself had come to visit him. Not being totally appeased by the verses he had heard, he reproached the Guru with having taken the Guruship out of his family and come to steal the religious and literary memorials of his predecessors. The Guru took no notice of his blustering, but proceeded to address him another stanza. O Mohan, incomparable are thy words, and superior thy deportment. O Mohan, thou believest in one God, all others thou treatest as refuse. Thou believest in the one invisible God, who holdeth the whole fabric of the world. Under the Guru's instruction, thou hast subjected to thyself God the primal being. Thou thyself movest, O God, thou thyself standest still, thou thyself supportest the whole fabric. Nanak representeth, preserve mine honour, all thy servants seek thy sanctuary. Mohan, somewhat softened on hearing this, descended from the upper chamber in which he had been seated in order to receive his distinguished visitor. The guru followed up his poetical address with a third stanza. O Mohan, the company of saints meditate on thee and consider how they shall behold thee. O Mohan, at the last hour death shall not approach him who repeateth thy name. The god of death shall not touch him who with single heart meditateth on thee. All who worship thee in thought, word, and deed shall obtain the fruit thereof. The impure, the foolish, and the stupid on beholding thee obtain divine knowledge. Nanak representeth, O omnipresent God, abiding be thy sovereignty. When Mohan examined the Guru's face, he saw in it such preternatural splendor that he recognized the light of all the Gurus. He then surrendered the books, deeming the divine Guru before him their proper custodian. Upon this the Guru uttered a fourth stanza and thus completed the hymn. O Mohan, mayest thou be successful with thy family. O Mohan, thy children, friends, brethren, and family, all hast thou saved. Thou hast also saved those who, having beheld thee, have dispelled their pride. Death never approacheth those who magnify thee. Endless are thine excellences. They cannot be described, O true Guru and supreme God. Nanak representeth, Thou hast preserved a prop by clinging to which the world shall be saved. The Guru composed the following also on that occasion. I am wealthy and fortunate in the true name. I sing God's praises with composure and love. 
when i opened and saw my father and grandfather's treasury of sacred books my soul was enriched my storehouses were filled with gems and rubies inestimable inexhaustible and unweighable o my brethren let us eat and spread this wealth together it shall not diminish but continue to increase saith nanak he on whose forehead such destiny hath been written will join us in availing ourselves of this treasure after this the guru and mohan held a long conversation on the subject of the gurus from the time of guru nanak mohan was so pleased with the interview that he pressed his visitor to remain with him the guru excused himself on account of the project he had formed to compile the hymns of his predecessors he then departed promising to visit mohan again whenever he was honoured with an invitation on the guru's return journey to amritsar he stayed at kadur datu guru angad's son who had kicked guru amar das off his throne went to meet him and for the sake of self-abasement and as an act of contrition put himself the following questions in presence of the guru how can there be worship without merits how can there be honour without learning how can there be victory without bravery how can there be meditation without mental composure how can the heart have peace without contentment how can empire be obtained without the performance of meritorious acts how can there be divine knowledge without the true guru how can there be honour without virtue since the ocean of life is unfathomable how can one cross it without a vessel how can there be worship without loving god's lotus feet how can there be deliverance without god how can there be singing without a tune how can one acquire fame without verse praise without the bestowal of gifts the ocean of the world is wide how can one cross it without the sikh religion how can there be day without the sun i had no virtues or good qualities so how could i have been guru such have been my reflections datu then narrated to the guru all his misconduct and the result thereof he said he still felt pain in his foot which the robbers had injured he had gone to visit guru amar das on his deathbed and begged pardon for his violence guru amar das told him that the fifth guru would heal him guru arjan in consideration of datu's descent put his hand on the injured limb and made it whole he then after a conversation with datu on the subject of the preceding gurus and after an interview with his brother dasu set out for amritsar on the guru's arrival in amritsar he made plans for the compilation of the granth sahib he fixed for the purpose on a secluded spot where jand wild caper indian fig and pipal trees yielded agreeable shade while green herbage gratified the eye and afforded a pleasant carpet for the feet tents were erected for the accommodation of the guru and his bards and minstrels the guru decided to have a tank constructed there also and set about its excavation on the completion of the tank and at the time of giving it the name ramsar the guru composed the following which may be understood literally or spiritually ever bathe in god's tank stir it up and drink the great nectarious juice god's name is holy water he who batheth in it shall have all his desires fulfilled where god is spoken of in the company of the saints the sins of millions of births are erased the saints rejoice on remembering god's name and their souls and bodies feel supreme delight the slave nanak is a sacrifice to him who hath obtained the treasure of the dust of god's feet the guru on taking up his abode near the tank was accompanied by a crowd of sikhs he now occupied himself with collecting further materials for his compilation and with composing hymns of his own he therefore instructed by buddha to take his place in the har mandar and do duty for him by giving religious instruction to all who presented themselves he sent for gur das and appointed him to write the hymns of the gurus from his dictation 
he ordered that they should afterwards be translated by learned men into indian and foreign languages so that they might extend over the whole world as oil spreads over water the followers of the principal indian saints hindu and muhammadan since the days of jaidev were invited by the guru to attend and suggest suitable hymns for insertion in the sacred volume they repeated hymns of their respective sects and such as conformed to the spirit of reform then in vogue or were not wholly inconsistent with the guru's teaching were adopted and incorporated in the granth it may be here conceded that those hymns received some alterations in the process of transmission from the saints to their followers who were contemporaries of guru arjan and this will explain why so many punjabi words are found in the bhagat's writings and why they differ from their compositions preserved in other parts of india according to the hindu religion it was deemed a sin to listen to the teachings of mussulmans to say nothing of that of sudars it was one of the guru's objects to show the world that there was no such superstition in the sikh religion and that every good man no matter of what caste or creed was worthy of honour and reverence the hymns are arranged according to rags or musical measures the hymns of the first guru mahala one come first then those of the second guru mahala two and so on after the guru's hymns the hymns of bhagats or indian saints who had previously conceived reformatory ideas were inserted though without any fixed order of precedence sata the minstrel who had visited guru ram das now came and completed the long hymn begun by bawand by adding the following pauri in praise of guru arjan the four gurus illumined the four ages of the world thou arjan art the fifth in their place it is thou thyself who didst create the world thou art its standing pillar thou art the tablet thou art the pen thou art the writer the human race cometh and goeth thou art ever new and whole guru arjan sitteth on baba nanak's throne the true guru's canopy shineth over him thou hast illuminated every direction from the east to the west they who worship not the true guru are subject to transmigration thy miracles increase twofold and fourfold this is a true offering to the true guru the four gurus illumined the four ages of the world thou art the fifth in their place kana shaju shah hussein and pilo four religious men of lahore also came and requested the guru to find a place in his granth for their compositions he invited them to give him specimens of their poetical abilities kana was the first to deliver his composition i am he i am he whom the veds and purans sing but whom none hath found by search this a deification of kana himself was promptly rejected by the guru as rank blasphemy chaju's composition was the following look thou not on woman even though she be cut out of paper like a plundering band of balachis she will take thee away and kill thee this was rejected as being too derogatory to the female sex according to guru nanak domestic life was the best of all and he had no wish to depreciate women shah hussein's turn came next the following was his composition be silent o oh my friend be silent there is no necessity o oh my friend for speaking my friend there is no necessity for speaking within and without us is the one lord to whom else shall we address ourselves the one beloved pervadeth every heart there is nowhere a second saith the humble fakir hussein i am a sacrifice unto the true guru this was rejected by guru arjan on the ground that he did not consider it the duty of holy men to conceal the message which god had commissioned them to give to the world pilo the last to claim the honour of immortality in the granth sahib submitted the following they who have died at their birth are superior to us they do not thrust their feet into the mire and are not befouled therewith this was also rejected on the ground that better is the man who struggles with the world to make his life profitable than he who quits the scene at the outset 
Krishan Lal and Har Lal, two elderly learned pandits of Banaras, came to behold the Guru. They told him that Guru Nanak had given them much instruction on his visit to their holy city. That instruction was now incorporated in the Asakai War and had become the common property of men. But they came to Guru Arjan to receive from him special instruction to suit their own particular case. He composed what are called the Sahaskriti Sloks, written in a species of Prakrit for their edification. To these compositions he subsequently added the Gatha, now found near the end of the Granth Sahib. The Guru, probably to make trial of his learned and able scribe Bhai Gur Das, whose compositions he admired, offered to insert them in the Granth, but Bhai Gur Das said that they were not worthy of such honour. The Guru complimented him on his modesty and ability, and said that whoever read the Bhai's writings should acquire spiritual profit and instruction and faith in the teachings of the holy Gurus. Several bards who had accepted the Sikh religion appeared before the Guru and offered him panegyrics of himself and his predecessors. The Guru graciously gave such compositions a place in the sacred volume. When all the hymns for insertion had been determined on, the Guru sat within his tent and dictated them to Bhai Gur Das. After much time and labor, the volume was completed on the first day of the light half of Badan, Sambat, 1661 a d 1604 the guru then wrote the mandawani as a conclusion and affixed his seal thereto the mandawani is as follows three things have been put into the vessel truth patience and meditation the ambrosial name of god the support of all hath also been put therein he who eateth and enjoyeth it shall be saved the provision should never be abandoned ever clasp it to your hearts by embracing god's feet we cross the ocean of darkness nanak everything is an extension of god after this the guru in his self-abasement inserted the following slok i did not appreciate what thou didst for me and yet thou madest me worthy i am full of demerits i possess no merit and yet thou thyself hast compassion on me Thou showest compassion and kindness unto me. I have found the true Guru, the friend. Nanak, if I obtain the name, I shall live, and my body and soul shall be refreshed. A Mohammedan poet called Alim in A.H. 991, A.D. 1583, wrote a work in 353 stanzas, generally from four to six lines each, called Madhava Nal Sangit which purports to be an account of the loves of Madhava Nal and a lady called Kam Kandala. The Ragmala, which forms the conclusion of the Granth Sahib and contains a list of the rags and raginis and their subdivisions, is a portion of Alim's work extending from the 63rd to the 72nd stanza. It is not understood how it was included in the sacred volume. The rags mentioned in it do not correspond with the rags of the Granth Sahib. The Guru invited all his Sikhs to see the precious compilation, the fruit of so much anxious labor, and distributed sacred food amongst them as a thanksgiving for the completion of his toil. The volume was, by the advice of Bhai Buddha and Bhai Gur Das, deposited in the Har Mandar. At the conclusion of his task, the Guru told his Sikhs that the Granth Sahib was the embodiment of the Gurus and should therefore be held in extreme reverence. He then considered to whom he could entrust the sacred volume. If he entrusted it to the Bedis, Tehans, Balas, or Sodis, the tribes from whom the Gurus had sprung, they might become proud and consider themselves far superior to their surroundings or they might perchance owing to their mutual jealousies and quarrels treat it with disrespect he therefore decided on giving charge of it to bhai buddha who had seen guru nanak whose devotion had been often tried and who would perform the duty with reverence and love supplementary to the instructions contained in the granth sahib the guru prescribed the rites to be observed on the decease of a sikh and also on occasions of rejoicing when Bhai Buddha first opened the sacred volume in the temple, his eyes fell on the hymn quoted above, beginning, 
the creator stood in the midst of the work which he regarded as auspicious and having a direct reference to the compilation bai bano who lived at mangat in the gurat district of the punjab took a keen interest in the work and went with a large following to see it his curiosity was aroused and he considered how he could obtain possession of the precious volume he asked the guru for the loan of it to show to his flock the guru for obvious reasons was most unwilling to part with it but was finally prevailed on to do so according to his order bai bano might read it for sikhs on the way but he was not to detain it in his village for more than one night bai bano instead of expediting his journey proceeded by slow and short marches and thus contrived to obtain a full copy of the grand sahib before he returned it into his own copy he introduced some hymns which had been omitted by the guru the guru on hearing of this told him the volume might remain as he had compiled it there is another story namely that the grand sahib was entrusted to bai bano to have it bound in lahore and that in taking it there he had an unauthorized copy prepared End of section 8section nine of the sikh religion its gurus sacred writings and authors volume three this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox dot org the sikh religion its gurus sacred writings and authors volume three by max arthur mcauliffe life of guru arjan chapter eight a deputation of sikhs came to the guru from kashmir and represented to him that the pandits of that country had advised them to discontinue the reading of the guru's hymns and turn their attention to sanskrit sacred compositions and hindu worship otherwise they would have no communication with them they therefore prayed the guru to send a competent sikh to kashmir to silence the pandits and extend the guru's faith in that direction the guru accordingly sent madho on that important errand he commissioned him to instruct the kashmiris to rise before day perform their ablutions repeat and sing the guru's hymns associate with holy men observe the guru's anniversaries distribute sacred food give a tithe of their earnings to the sikh cause share their food with others speak civilly live humbly and adopt the other rules and observances of the sikhs numerous stories are told by the author of the suraj parkash to illustrate the miraculous power and teachings of the guru a sikh called tiloka an officer in the kabul army had thoughtlessly killed a female deer on opening the animal two embryos were discovered tiloka was much distressed at his inhumanity in killing the animal and vowed never to go hunting again in furtherance of his humanitarian vow he resolved to wear a wooden sword for the future when the king heard of this and held a parade for the purpose of examining the officer's arms tiloka's sword was as the result of his invocation of the guru changed into polished steel and he thus escaped punishment for what would otherwise have been a grave military offence one kataru the king's wayman also came from kabul when he solicited instruction from the guru he was told to use just weights and discharge his duties honestly when he returned to his office in kabul a banya or petty shopkeeper with evil and malicious intent placed in his shop a false weight which he unknowingly used the banya went to the king to lay information against kataru the king proposed to inspect the weighing apparatus and kataru hearing this prayed to the guru to protect him the guru who was in amritsar knew by his occult power of his distress at that moment a poor sikh came to the guru with a small offering of five pais 
The guru took the coins, passed them from one hand to the other, simultaneously with the king's inspection. So when the king tried both scales, the weights appeared correct. The guru explained the meaning of his act to an inquiring Sikh. The king of Kabul was satisfied with his inspection, and Kataru, on paying a second visit to Amritsar, attested the guru's explanation in every respect. One Chuhar, a Chaudhri, went to the guru for religious instruction. The guru told him ever to speak the truth. The village dignitary said it was impossible for a man in his position to avoid speaking falsehood. The guru directed him to depart and keep an account of his lies and of his good acts and bring it to him at the end of every month. The first month the good acts were nil and the lies many. The guru obliged him to read out the account in open darbar and thus publicly confess his sins, whereat he was much ashamed. The second month the account showed better. There was steady progress in virtue until the eighth month, when no lies appeared and there was a clean sheet. The guru then absolved him and granted him release from transmigration. Lalu, Balu, and Haridas asked the guru to tell them how they could be saved. He replied, Banish pride, worldly love, and envy. Bear not ill will to others, so shall others bear not ill will to you. Cheerfully meet and salute with both hands the guru's Sikhs. Walk humbly and speak civilly to all. When you eat, share your food with others and live by honest labor. By observing these instructions you shall obtain all happiness. The following was the guru's instruction to a soldier who went to him for spiritual advice. He who exerciseth bravery shall be fearless in the battlefield. He who resolveth to conquer or die in arms, and who when dying claspeth the true name to his heart, shall efface the sins of many births and obtain deliverance. Without remembering God, none shall obtain a place in the hero's heaven. He who fearlessly challengeth the foe and falleth amid the clash of arms shall feel the ecstasy the yogis long for and arrive at a permanent abode of bliss. Many pleasures shall await him as he abideth in the realms of the brave. The greatest merit of a soldier is not to show his back to the enemy. A hero obtaineth for himself bliss both here and hereafter by the might of his arms. If he conquer, he obtaineth the sovereignty of the earth, while if he die, celestial happiness is his portion. Fight for him whose salt thou hast eaten. Give thy life for thy sovereign, and great shall be thy fame in both worlds. Bai Lalu and Bai Nihalu were very successful preachers and expounders of God's word. The guru, on being asked how this result was achieved, replied as follows, When the preacher practiseth what he preacheth, his words make an impression on all. People treasure them in their hearts and thus obtain salvation. The tree must put forth roots before it can afford shade to the wayfarer. He who readeth and preacheth and yet doeth not good acts himself shall produce no impression on others. They may listen to his words, but will never act on them. Guru Arjan gave the following instructions to Nanu and Kalu. He who liveth honestly, who with good intentions readeth or listeneth to the Guru's words, who pondereth on their meaning, who divesteth himself of evil inclinations, and who devoutly repeateth the true name, shall be freed from transmigration and obtain an abode in sak and but he who readeth for the sake of gain doeth evil and shall not be honoured when the snake obtaineth the light of the jewel in his head he availeth himself of it to pick up and eat insects by night such is the man who for gain readeth sacred texts he committeth sinful acts adultery with other men's wives and respecteth not the most excellent true name he shall receive no assistance from the guru but proceed to hell and suffer the punishment there provided for the wicked setha gobinda and baga residents of chaniot 
in the yang district of the punjab went with troubled minds to the guru to inquire whether the corn they had distributed in alms for the repose of the souls of their ancestors ever reached them the guru replied in the negative quoting in support of his decision the seventeenth slok of the asakai war the guru added that they could not know whether their ancestors were in heaven or hell so it was of no avail to make them offerings para and jetha one day visited the guru and said it was their custom to throw some of their cooked food into the fire before eating the guru denied the necessity of throwing food into the fire men need only repeat god's name wa guru wa guru in the time of guru arjan crowds were converted to sikhism in the punjab hindustan and all the neighboring countries it is said that the hill rajas of kulu suket haripur and chamba visited the guru and became his followers as the raja of mandi had previously done at that time chandu shah was the emperor's diwan or financial minister he was a native of the punjab but his official duties necessitated his residence in dili he possessed wealth learning and various accomplishments youth high caste and above all power in the land he had a young daughter seven years of age called sada kaur to whom god had given extreme beauty without the good fortune which so often accompanies inferior natural gifts one day her mother as she saw her playing said to chandu our daughter is growing to maturity we ought to search for a husband for her the turks now hold sway they practice oppression and dark deeds among which is the forcible abduction of hindu virgins it hath therefore become a practice of the hindus to marry their daughters when very young so it is our duty to provide for sada kaur and form an alliance with some respectable family chandu was of the same opinion and sending for his family priest and his barber ordered them to go and search for a suitable husband for his daughter the detailed instructions usual in such cases were duly given the priest and the barber searched in every city as far as peshawar but could find no suitable mate for sada kaur they then returned and duly informed their employer of their ill success the matter remained in abeyance for a time one of the main objects of an oriental woman's anxiety is to procure the marriage of her children she thinks and dreams of her supposed duty in this respect almost from the time of their birth chandu's wife again addressed him we must no longer keep our daughter in our house thou art all day occupied with affairs of state i can go nowhere i sit at home and think of our daughter's future the more i see her the more i sink into the pit of anxiety chandu explained that he had already done his best but failed where there was a boy of suitable age his family was not good enough and where the family was good enough the boy was not of a suitable age he admitted that his daughter was a thorn in his side she was too old to be put to death at the same time he could find no family equal to his own his wife replied take god's name and kill not our daughter no such dark deed could be concealed we must be humble for it is usual for the father of the bride to bow before the father of the bridegroom upon this chandu again sent his family priest and his barber with instructions as before they travelled as far as lahore but could not find a suitable bridegroom there they heard the good report of guru arjan's son in amritsar and thither they proceeded on arriving they were astonished at the regal state and retinue of the guru of whom the bard mathura had sung in this world there is no such great saint as he he assumed birth to lighten the darkness of the age millions of troubles have departed from those o mathura who through him have quaffed the nectar of the name miss not the road to him o man think not of any other god the omnipresent brahm hath in person taken his dwelling in guru arjan's heart until good fortune appeared on man's forehead he roamed and wandered long in transmigration he was drowning in the terrible ocean of this cal age but 
now no regret remaineth him the main thing is this mathura that guru arjan assumed birth to save the world they who repeat his hymns shall not again suffer the pain of birth the matchmaker's admiration of har gobind and of the respect in which he and his father were held exceeded all bounds they thought of proposing the marriage to guru arjan themselves but on second thoughts decided on first consulting chandu the priest and the barber reported to chandu that they had seen the guru's son in the new city of amritsar and thought that he would be a suitable parti for sada Kaur. they dilated to chandu on the excellences of har gobind whose lineage they gave on the enormous respect in which his father was held and on the splendour they had witnessed in the guru's city chandu was not pleased at hearing the guru's praises and said do you think him equal to me what if he hath many followers he liveth on offerings which is an ignominious form of livelihood if the offerings come the cup is held straight if they do not it is reversed he sitteth and watcheth and even if wealth cometh his kitchen can with difficulty be supplied he hath no store of money such wealth is like a mountain stream whatever he appeareth to possess he is in reality only a beggar while i am the emperor's minister by whom millions of money are collected and millions of lawsuits decided what power hath he while on the contrary none can reverse my order moreover the guru's caste is inferior to mine o brahman i have tested thy wisdom and knowledge in this matter thou desirest to put the ornamental tile of a top story into a gutter where am i imperial financial minister and where is the guru though he may be an object of veneration to his followers i think he must have stuffed you both with sweets that you come to me and propose an alliance with his family chandu's wife who had been listening said my lord we have been searching for a husband for our daughter for the last two years and no family hath yet pleased thee of the boys thou hast seen none hath remained unbetrothed or unwedded at last we must wed our daughter somewhere she cannot always remain with us wherever she is married it must be into a family beneath ours thou art the greatest minister in this empire as everybody boweth before thee so doth everybody bow before the guru therefore let the matter be now concluded if our daughter enter the guru's house she shall be called the revered wife of the guru and obtain the happiness which god destined her chandu still urged his objections the guru acteth not in conformity with the customs of the khatris he shaveth not he eateth from the hands of men other than brahmans and khatris and he hath adopted a new form of religion after the husband and wife had wrangled the whole night over the matter it was at last decided that sada Kaur should be given in marriage to har gobind and the marriage presents duly dispatched to amritsar it came to the ears of the sikhs of dili that chandu had used injurious expressions regarding the guru they also knew that he did not really desire the alliance but only consented in order to save himself from his wife's importunity the sikhs met to consult over the matter and it was decided to inform the guru of chandu's utterances accordingly the following letter was dispatched o true guru great king chandu is very proud he hath likened his house to a top story and the guru's to a gutter he hath called himself the head and thee the feet he styleth himself a great minister and thee a mendicant when he uttereth such insolent language beforehand what will he not do in the future his words are not only slander of thee but of guru nanak on whose throne thou sittest even if he be a rich man or a diwan what carest thou for him in the guru's house rich and poor are alike the sikhs cannot endure his insulting expressions as guru armar das hath said nanak it is wise to break with the perverse to whom worldly love is dear if thou consent to an alliance with such a haughty man thou shalt lay up for thyself enduring misery thou wantest for nothing thou art king of kings our urgent request is that thou pay no regard to the financial minister and that thou reject his alliance the messenger entrusted with this letter was ordered to speed night and day so that he might arrive before chandu's priest and barber had concluded the contract of betrothal 
he succeeded in doing so the guru who was a searcher of hearts and knew the future was aware that this letter sowed the seed of strife and had been dispatched to him with inconsiderate zeal but at the same time he felt obliged to accept the advice of the sikhs of dili he accordingly rejected the marriage presents telling the priest and the barber that an ornamental tile should not be put into a gutter the matchmakers astonished to hear these words repeated defended their master and remonstrated to the best of their ability but in vain the guru repeated to them what the dili sikhs had written and said i am contented with my humble lot and desire not an alliance with the great if a man's foot slip on the brink of a lofty tower he falleth to the ground a shapeless mass but if a man slip on a mat he sustaineth no injury guru nanak hath said regarding himself nanak is with those who are low-born among the lowly nay who are lowest of the low how can he rival the great the guru also quoted from one of his own hymns he who riseth high falleth into the pit death reacheth not those who remain on the ground while the priest and the barber were further remonstrating a sikh rose in the assembly and addressed the guru great king put not acid into milk spurn an alliance with that dog of a karar let him knock his head against his top story that consumer of wealth of the impure who revileth thee hath gone mad why demean thyself thou art king of kings what need hast thou of such an alliance the guru chid the sikh for this language and quoted from the twentieth slok of the asa kiwar nanak the mind and body of him who talketh evil are evil he is most evil and most evil is his reputation the evil person is rejected in god's court his face is spat upon the evil person is a fool and receiveth shoe beatings as punishment wherefore said the guru it is not proper for sikhs to use bad language i am not proud the proud please not god i am his slave our honour strength trust and support are in the creator ever fear him then in full assembly uprose a native of dalla one narain das a grandson of bhai paro who had been a sikh of guru amar das putting his sheet round his neck in the manner of a lowly suppliant he said true monarch i am the slave of thy feet i have a daughter whom my wife and i have vowed to offer thy son if thou make her too the slave of thy feet i shall be very fortunate i am a poor unhonoured sikh thou art the honour of the unhonoured make thy servant happy and send me not disappointed away the guru replied if thou have love in thy heart then is thy proposal agreeable to me the seventh day of the light half of the month of magar fixed on by chandu as an auspicious day for offering the marriage presents hath not been in vain upon this narain das went off at once and purchased marriage presents in the city they were put into har gobind's lap and a saffron tilak as a symbol of the completion of the betrothal was affixed to his forehead upon this another sikh called hari chand stood up and said o true king i have also decided to give my daughter to thy son if my petition please thee i will give my daughter as a servant to har gobind and thy reputation as cherisher of the poor shall shine the brighter guru arjan also though at first unwilling to accept a second wife for his son felt he could not reject the offer of a faithful sikh and so agreed to the marriage of the young people moreover hari chand had refused all other alliances for his daughter and vowed to bestow her only on the young guru hari chand went immediately and brought the marriage presents these were placed in har gobind's lap and a patch attached to his forehead as before all this took place in the presence of chandu's priest and barber who returned sad and disappointed to their master the seventh day of the light half of the month of mag sambat sixteen sixty one was fixed for narain das's daughter's marriage practically a betrothal to har gobind narain das went to his village and made all preparations for the wedding songs expressing a hope that the bridegroom may outlive the bride were sung by the women of his household the following hymn setting forth the humility of the bride and her devotion to the bridegroom was also sung on the occasion o god thou hast no love for me thou hast so many handmaidens like me thou art an ocean and mine of jewels i know not thy worth i know not thy worth thou art very wise be gracious unto me o lord mercifully grant me wisdom to meditate on thee during the eight watches of the day 
O my soul, be not proud, become the dust of men's feet, and thou shalt obtain deliverance. Nanak's God is over all, he hath many handmaidens like me. Thou art the jewel of a very deep and profound sea. Thou art my husband, I am thy bride. In proportion as thou art very great, yea, more exalted than the great, I am small. I am nothing, thou art the only one, thou art wise of thyself. O God, if thou cast on me even for a moment thine ambrosial glance, I shall survive and enjoy all delights and sweetness. I, the slave of thy slaves, am under the protection of thy feet. My soul bloometh and my body groweth young. Nanak's Lord is contained in all things. He doeth what he pleaseth. Thou art my pride, thou art my strength. My understanding, intellect, and skill are thy gifts. What thou causest me to know, I know. It is he on whom the Creator casteth a look of favour, who knoweth and understandeth. The perverse woman hath gone astray on many paths, and hath been ensnared by worldly occupations. She who is virtuous is pleasing to God, she enjoyeth all pleasure. O Lord, thou art Nanak's support, thou art Nanak's pride. I am a sacrifice, I devote myself to thee, thou art my shelter, firm as a mountain. I am hundreds of thousands of times a sacrifice to him who hath removed the curtain of error from before me. My darkness is dispelled. I have renounced sin, and my soul is reconciled with the Lord. I have pleased the Lord. I care for no one. My life hath been profitable, and I am accepted. I have become a priceless jewel of great weight. The gate of happiness in this world and the next hath opened for me. Saith Nanak, I have become fearless. God hath become my shelter. End of section 9section 10 of the sikh religion its gurus sacred writings and authors volume 3 this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox.org the sikh religion its gurus sacred writings and authors volume 3 by max arthur macaulay life of guru arjan chapter 9 when the priest and the barber returned to Dili, they told Chandu everything they had heard and seen in Amritsar, the guru's refusal and the reason thereof, the abuse of Chandu uttered by the Sikh in Darbar, the betrothal of Har Gobind, and the actual appointment of a time for his marriage. Chandu was naturally very much incensed, but he wrote the guru a letter in which as a matter of policy he concealed his resentment. He began by magnifying the guru and demeaning himself, and then continued, It is certainly true that I said thou art of inferior caste to me. This expression thoughtlessly escaped my mouth, and someone hath written and exaggerated it, and made thee displeased with me. Thou art now the most worshipful guru in the world, and it is right for thee to consider everything. It is not proper for thee to fall out with me for what lunatics and base people tell thee. If I interest myself for thee with the emperor, he too will be at thy service. I can give a large dowry to my daughter. Retain for thy son the other girls with whom thou hast formed alliances, and accept mine also. Great people contract many marriages. If thou tell me I used overbearing language, I may or may not have done so, but it was in my own private house and not meant for others to hear. Your people in public Darbar have called me a dog. Well, let bygones be bygones, and I will have many favors conferred on thee by the emperor. Thou art already on bad terms with thy brother Prithi Chand. Thou oughtest to make me an ally. If thou fall out with me too, thou shalt nowhere find an abiding place. There are now sparks flying about. If they increase, there will be a blazing fire, which it will be difficult to extinguish. Thou shalt not again have this opportunity, and if thou hast called me a dog, I may become mad and do thee harm contrary to my saner judgment." Chandu dispatched this letter by the hands of the Brahmin. The Guru, having read it, said, It is pride that ruineth men. Pride of wealth is the basis of all ills. Man must suffer for his acts. 
now know that chandu must not form an alliance with us they whom the creator joineth are united but they whom man joineth are not it is the guru's rule to comply with the wishes of his sikhs their words are immutable what they once reject it is not proper again to accept even were i to consent to chandu's alliance no good could result he tempteth me with gain but who would forfeit his soul therefore as for his threats i have no fear of them god alone is the guardian of all the priest returned with this message without being able to prevail on the guru to alter his determination the guru then made all preparations and invited guests to his son's wedding with narain das's daughter he even invited his own brother prithi chand but the invitation was refused the marriage was duly celebrated with all suitable ceremony and rejoicing the women of narain das's household sang the following composition of the bridegroom's father on the occasion of the marriage it is a time of rejoicing i sing my lord i have heard of the imperishable bridegroom and joy hath arisen in my heart my mind longeth to know when i shall be fortunate enough to meet the perfect lord grant me o my friend guru understanding to know when i shall meet god and be absorbed in him day and night i stand and wait to find by what way i may obtain the lord nanak prayeth have mercy and attach me to the hem of thy garment prithia addressed himself to the qazis and pandits who bore enmity to the guru on account of his compilation of the grant and induced them to complain to the emperor akbar that guru arjan had compiled a book in which the muhammadan priests prophets and leaders and the hindu incarnations and gods were spoken of with contempt akbar was at that time touring in the punjab and the complaint of the qazis and the pandits was placed before him by chandu on his arrival in gurdaspur chandu supported the complaint by saying that he knew the charges were based on facts upon this the emperor ordered that guru arjan and his granth should be produced before him the guru did not go himself but sent by buddha and by gurdas to read to him from it the first hymn which caught the emperor's eye was the following of guru arjan's own composition in the persian language from earth and light god made the world the sky earth trees and water are god's creation o man whatever the eye can behold is perishable the world is an eater of carrion neglectful of god and greedy of mammon like an ogre or a beast it killeth and eateth forbidden food restrain thy heart or the omnipotent will take and punish thee in hell when azrael shall seize thee of what avail shall patrons brothers courts possessions and mansions be the pure god knoweth thy condition slave nanak utter thy prayer to the holy man to guide thee the emperor on hearing this said it was a very proper hymn the qazis and pandits represented that the hymn was specially selected for the emperor's hearing and begged him to procure some one else to read the grant to him none among them being acquainted with the guru muki characters in which the sacred volume is written the emperor turned over its pages himself and pointing to a particular spot asked gurdas to read from there on this the hymn already given beginning o servant of god the inscrutable was read to his majesty the emperor on hearing this was much pleased chandu however was not to be thwarted he said that gurdas had repeated this from memory the emperor must have the granth read to him by some one else who knew gurumukhi chandu found a man called saib dayal who possessed the necessary knowledge chandu turned over the leaves of the granth and told him to read the hymn he pointed out the hymn was the following thou fastenest a stone to thy neck and seest not god who dwelleth in the heart o infidel 
thou wanderest astray in error thou churnest water and shalt die in agony the stone which thou callest god shall take thee with it and drown thee o sinner untrue to thy salt it is not a boat of stone which will ferry thee over on meeting the guru nanak recognizeth the lord the arranger is contained in the water the dry land the nether regions and the firmament when the emperor heard this he was still more pleased with the teaching of the grant and displeased with the guru's slanderers and enemies he then gave his decision accepting love and devotion to god i so far find neither praise nor blame of any one in this grant it is a volume worthy of reverence he then made an offering to it of fifty-one golden muhars and gave by buddha and by gurdas dresses of honour for themselves and a third for guru arjan he told them to give his respectful salutations to the guru and promised to go to visit him when he was returning from lahore whither he was then proceeding when chandu and his party heard the emperor's decision and his message to the guru their faces became pale and they hung down their heads through shame all good people cursed chandu and his evil reputation spread from house to house the emperor true to his word visited the guru on his return journey to dili and was charmed with his saintly bearing he was also so pleased with the imposing and beautiful temple which the guru had constructed and the delightful melodies to which the hymns of the gurus had been set that words failed him to express his gratification he called himself the guru's slave and asked for instruction to render him happy and secure peace for his soul the guru then repeated for him the following hymn one man invoketh ram another kuda one man worshippeth gosain another allah some speak of the cause of causes others of the benevolent some talk of the extender of mercy others of the merciful some bathe at the hindu sacred places others visit maka some perform the hindu worship others bow their heads in the mohammedan fashion some read the veds others the musulman books some wear white others blue some call themselves hindus others musulmans some aspire to the heaven of the hindus others to the heaven of the mohammedans but he who recognizeth god's will saith nanak knoweth the secret of the lord god the emperor partook of the guru's hospitality and prayed to be allowed to make a contribution to his large expenditure so that thereby he might secure spiritual and temporal welfare and happiness the guru replied the welfare and happiness of monarchs depend on cherishing their subjects and doing justice the monarch whose subjects are happy shall himself be happy in this life and in the next obtain praise glory and honour the emperor remitted the revenues of the punjab for that year in compliment to the guru who represented that there was a severe famine in the land and the cultivators required his majesty's consideration the guru's fame and influence largely increased owing to the respect the emperor had shown him this in the words of the chronicler was the cause of such agony to prithia as would last till it had taken his life with it bada oni states that on another occasion namely the thirteenth of the month of azur jamadi ul sani akbar with a gorgeous military retinue crossed the bias and went to goindwal to visit guru arjan whose teaching and character he appreciated bada oni also writes that people reverenced the successive gurus as spiritual leaders and solicited their benedictions unfortunately for the guru the tolerant emperor akbar died soon after and was succeeded by his son jahangir jahangir's son 
khusro nominated to the throne by akbar in supersession of jahangir claimed the punjab and afghanistan which his father was unwilling to concede him jahangir accordingly desired to obtain possession of khusro's person but khusro escaped from agra pursued by the imperial army and directed his steps towards afghanistan on the way he visited the guru at tarn taran and begged him to grant him pecuniary assistance the guru said he had money for the poor but not for princes khusro replied with great humility that he himself was now very poor needy and unfriended and had not even travelling expenses guru arjan seeing the prince's evil plight and humility took compassion on him he moreover felt friendly to the prince who had visited him a few times previously with the emperor akbar and he also felt a debt of gratitude to the prince's grandfather the late monarch so he gave him five thousand rupees to defray his expenses to kabul khusro however was seized by the imperial troops as he was crossing the jilam and taken in chains to his father prithia managed to retain sulahi khan's assistance and cooperation to ruin the guru sulahi on the pretext of having to collect revenue in the punjab obtained leave from the emperor to proceed thither on his way he visited prithia in his village of kotha under the pretence of hunting they spent their time concocting plans for the guru's destruction the guru on hearing of the further conspiracies of his enemies composed the following death laugheth over man's head but brute that he is he knoweth it not involved in quarrels pleasures and pride he thinketh not of death serve thy true guru why wander o luckless one on beholding the brilliant safflower why make the mistake of attaching thyself to it constantly sinning thou hast accumulated wealth to use it thyself but thou shalt depart naked and thy dust shall be blended with dust they for whom thou didst take trouble are at variance and enmity with thee at the last hour they will flee from thee why burnest thou with wrath he on whose forehead such destiny hath been written becometh the dust of the holy man's feet saith nanak by seeking the protection of the true guru man is released from his bonds one day prithia took sulahi to admire some brick kilns he had made on arriving sulahi's horse started at the accidental flight of a bird from under his feet and ran with his rider straight into a kiln in full blast in a few minutes horse and rider became a mass of cinders on hearing of this event the guru composed the following if any one flout the poor by stroking his beard at them the supreme god will burn him in the fire the creator who protecteth his servant hath administered perfect justice before and through the ages his glory was manifest the calumniator died in great agony none saveth him who is accursed of god in this world and the next evil shall be his reputation god embraceth and protecteth his servant nanak meditate on god's name and seek his shelter the guru composed the following also on the same subject god preserved me from sulahi sulahi by no means succeeded sulahi died unclean god drew forth his axe and smote off his head and in a moment he became ashes he was consumed ever meditating evil he who created him thrust him into the fire son friend wife nothing remaineth for him now his brethren and relations have all abandoned him saith nanak i am a sacrifice to that god who fulfilled the words of his servant the following was uttered by the guru on the same occasion the slanderer by the guru's favour hath been turned away god the supreme being was merciful he killed him with unerring arrow 
death and death's noose cannot affect me since i have established the sect of the true one the jewel of god's name i have earned as wealth which will never decrease by eating and spending in one moment the slanderer became ashes and obtained his deserts nanak foretold what was hidden the whole world saw the truth of his prophecy prithi chand was naturally most displeased at the death of his faithful ally in evil in the meantime chandu was considering how he could procure the marriage of his daughter with har gobind or avenge himself on the guru he accordingly wrote to prithia to request him to use all his influence to bring about the marriage and in the event of his failure threatened to confiscate the fief he had recently obtained from the emperor prithia however required no threats he was only too willing to assist chandu in his nefarious designs he wrote in reply that arjan who had deprived him of his rights was already his enemy and he would be only too happy to assist in meeting him adequate punishment he begged chandu to use his influence with the emperor to bring the guru to justice on receiving this letter chandu summoned prithia to dili there they both concocted a plan to induce the emperor by some means to visit the panjab where they would have an opportunity of entering into some conspiracy against the guru chandu informed the emperor of the abundance of game in the lahore district and also explained that lahore would be a convenient place to rest on the emperor's way to kashmir where he ought to spend the summer on account of the beauty of its scenery and the salubrity of its climate upon this prithia returned home chandu's scheme proved successful in a short time the emperor proceeded to the punjab on reaching the bias he encamped on its banks and went a-hunting chandu in conversation with him represented that there were several thieves in the country who during the night had stolen some of the emperor's property the emperor inquired how thieves could exist in his empire chandu replied that the emperor had a rival in the punjab namely guru arjan who entertained thieves and exercised independent authority upon this the emperor issued an order to the guru through sulabi khan nephew of the late sulahi khan to abstain from such practices the guru's business he said was to restrain others from evil and it behooved him not to do evil himself chandu wrote on his own account to sulabi khan to endeavour to induce the guru to consent to the marriage alliance and also to grant a more liberal distribution of property and offerings to prithia than had been formally agreed on salabi khan went to amritsar to endeavour to carry out these measures when the sikhs heard of salabi khan's intention they proposed that they should be allowed to kill him but they were dissuaded by the guru he was already sufficiently armed and protected against his enemies on that occasion he composed the following humility is my mace and being the dust of the dust of all men's feet my two-edged sword these no evil doer can withstand the perfect guru hath arranged this matter on salabi's journey to amritsar his party fell in with a sayid who was accompanied by several pathans the sayid represented to him that these pathans had been in his uncle sulahi khan's service and that a year's salary was due to them sulabi put them off with excuses whereupon an affray arose sulabi's escort reverencing the sayid as a descendant of the prophet did not strenuously defend their master and he was killed when chandu heard of sulabi khan's death he represented to the emperor that it had been done through the machinations of the guru he added that the guru had perpetrated many other misdeeds for instance he had deprived his elder brother prithia of the guruship and had endeavoured to deprive the hindus and muhammadans of their religions prithia had made complaints in person to the late emperor who promised to summon the guru when he visited the panjab 
when his majesty on one occasion did visit the panjab he had not time to make the necessary inquiry into the charges against guru arjan but now was the time to do so the guru only became bolder with delay and impunity upon this the emperor ordered chandu to send for prithia and he accordingly did so prithia was overjoyed on receiving the invitation on the way he for some business of his own visited tarn taran where the sikhs invited him to bathe he said that the guru's tank there was only a common pool and he would only bathe in his own tank at hihar thither he accordingly proceeded and after bathing in it and eating a surfeit at dinner he got cramp in the stomach and died the same night murban son of prithia took advantage of the guru's gift to khusro to rouse the ire of the emperor against the guru he informed chandu of it and chandu informed the emperor adding that the guru had blessed khusro and promised him that he should become emperor chandu also represented to the emperor that if he did not have khusro quickly arrested the pretender would receive great military assistance from the followers of the guru the people of the punjab he said were all highway robbers the pandits and the qazis also thought it a favourable opportunity to institute new proceedings against the guru on the old charge of having compiled a book which blasphemed the worship and rules of the hindus and the prayers and fastings of the mohammedans by such accusations chandu induced the emperor to summon guru arjan chandu's heart was now gratified for he knew he had at last secured his revenge End of section 10section eleven of the sikh religion its gurus sacred writings and authors volume three this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox dot org the sikh religion its gurus sacred writings and authors volume three by max arthur mcauliffe life of guru arjan chapter ten the guru now felt that his enemies were victorious and that his end was near but he was confident at the same time that the vials of god's wrath would burst on their heads before his departure for lahore he appointed his son har gobind his successor with all ancient ceremony and formality and gave him injunctions suitable for the occasion the guru then addressed his wife ganja this body abideth not for ever wherefore a wise person should not love it whatever is born perisheth and whatever is high falleth sooner or later this is nature's law to love the body is a grievous error all bodies daily grow old and preserve not their original strength from a child one groweth to be a man and then cometh old age which seizeth on the body and causeth it to waste away until it falleth into its final sleep live thou when i am gone mourn not for me and make no effort of thine own to separate thy soul from thy body the latter was an injunction not to cremate herself on his death the guru took with him by bidi chand by langaha by paira by jetha and by parana the emperor jahangir was at first disposed to treat the guru with respect but chandu reminded him of the guru's pecuniary assistance to khusro the emperor then addressed him thou art a saint great teacher and holy man thou lookest on all rich and poor alike it was therefore not proper for thee to give money to my enemy khusro the guru replied i regard all people whether hindu or mussulman rich or poor friend or foe without love or hate and it is on this account that i gave thy son some money for his journey and not because he was in opposition to thee if i had not assisted him in his forlorn condition and so shown some regard for the kindness of thy father the emperor akbar to myself all men would despise me for my heartlessness and ingratitude or they would say that i was afraid of thee 
this would have been unworthy of a follower of guru nanak the world's guru the conclusion of this speech was not calculated to soothe the emperor's feelings he ordered the guru to pay a fine of two lakhs of rupees and also to erase the hymns in his granth which were opposed to the hindu and mussulman religions the guru replied whatever money i have is for the poor the friendless and the stranger if thou ask for money thou mayest take what i have but if thou ask for it by way of fine i shall not give it thee even a kari for a fine is imposed on wicked worldly persons and not on priests and anchorets and as to what thou hast said regarding the erasure of hymns in the granth sahib i cannot erase or alter an iota i am a worshipper of the immortal god the supreme soul of the world there is no monarch save him and what he revealed to the gurus from guru nanak to guru ramdas and afterwards to myself is written in the holy granth sahib the hymns which find a place in it are not disrespectful to any hindu incarnation or any mohammedan prophet it is certainly stated that prophets priests and incarnations are the handiwork of the immortal god whose limit none can find my main object is the spread of truth and the destruction of falsehood and if in pursuance of this object this perishable body must depart i shall account it great good fortune the emperor made no reply but rose and left the hall of audience after this a magistrate informed the guru that he must pay the fine or be imprisoned in default when the sikhs of lahore heard this decision they proposed to unite and raise a subscription to discharge the guru's obligation the guru would not agree and sent them word that whoever contributed to pay the fine imposed on him should be deemed a pervert and would for the sake of momentary gratification imperil his future salvation men devoted to religion the guru said never paid fines fines were for thieves adulterers slanderers and robbers as the guru would not allow the fine to be paid he was placed under the surveillance of chandu the qazis and brahmans offered the guru the alternative of being put to death or of expunging the alleged objectionable passages in the grand sahib and inserting the praises of muhammad and of the hindu deities the guru replied the grand sahib hath been compiled to confer on men happiness and not misery in this world and in the next it is impossible to write it anew and make the omissions and alterations you require on hearing this the guru's enemies concluded that he would yield to no ordinary threats so they put fetters on him and began to torture him in various ways they poured burning sand on him seated him in red-hot cauldrons and bathed him in boiling water the guru bore all this torture with equanimity and never uttered a sigh or groan he was given another opportunity to recant and comply with the demands of his enemies he replied o oh, fools i shall never fear this treatment of yours it is all according to god's will wherefore this torture only affordeth me pleasure on this occasion the guru repeated the following the egg of superstition hath burst the mind is illumined the guru hath cut the fetters off the feet and freed the captive my transmigration is at an end the heated cauldron hath become cold the guru hath given the cooling name since the holy man hath been with me death's myrmidons who lay in wait for me have left me i have been released from him who restrained me what shall the judge do to me now the load of my karma is removed i am freed therefrom from the sea i have reached the shore the guru hath done me this favour true is my place true my seat and truth i have made my special object truth is the capital truth the stock and trade which nanak hath put into his house when chandu threatened to put the guru to further torture he addressed him as follows 
the earth the firmament and the stars are under the influence of fear over their heads is unchanging law wind water and fire are under the influence of fear so too is helpless indar there is only the one god without fear as i have heard he who meeting the guru singeth god's praises is happy and ever at peace corporeal beings and gods are under the influence of fear seeds and their disciples have died through fear the eighty-four locks of beings which die and are born which again and again are yoked to wombs are under the influence of fear all beings which thou o god hast created subject to the qualities of passion goodness and darkness are under the influence of fear the helpless lakshmi who produceth illusion is under the influence of fear and greatly so is dharmraj all things are filled with fear it is only the creator who is devoid of it saith nanak god is the companion of saints saints adorn his court and are therefore without fear several yogis and religious men who had met the guru and appreciated his sincerity and exalted doctrines went to condole with him in his afflictions mianmir the moslem saint of lahore also went and contributed his sympathetic tears he found the guru's body all blistered and superated and requested his permission to appeal to the emperor for his release and the punishment of his torturers the guru requested him to cast his eyes towards heaven on doing so it is said mianmir saw angels begging the guru's permission to destroy the wicked the proud and the perverse mianmir on beholding this supernatural vision asked the guru why when he possessed superhuman power he consented to endure suffering at the hands of such vile sinners the guru replied i bear all this torture to set an example to the teachers of the true name that they may not lose patience or rail at god in affliction the true test of faith is the hour of misery without examples to guide them ordinary persons minds quail in the midst of suffering in the second place if he who possesseth power within him defend not his religion by the open profession thereof the man who possesseth no such power will when put to the torture abjure his faith the sin will light on the head of him who hath the power but showeth it not and god will deem him an enemy of religion in the third place the body is naturally subject to woe and weal but not the spirit the body is perishable the soul imperishable to set aside by the exercise of supernatural power the law of nature which applieth to all things perishable and thereby to engender pride in the heart would be supreme folly mianmir on hearing this departed commending the guru's fortitude and singing his praises upon this the guru's enemies again applied themselves to his torture they kept him for three hours seated in a cauldron heated by a blazing fire the guru's life was well nigh extinct but he would not even submit to chandu's conditions namely to allow his son har gobind to marry chandu's daughter the guru repeated the following also during the period of his torture shri rag ashtapadi when very great troubles befall and nobody receiveth one when enemies pursue and relations flee away when all from whom man looked for assistance have fled and all succour is at an end if he then remember god no hot wind shall strike him god is the strength of the strengthless he neither cometh nor goeth he is permanent ever by the guru's instruction know him as the true one if man be weak from the pangs of nakedness and hunger if he have not a paisa in his purse and there be none to console him if no one gratify his aims and desires and he be never successful yet if he remember god he shall obtain a permanent kingdom if any one have excessive anxiety and bodily suffering if bound up in household and family he feel alternate joy and sorrow if he wander in every direction and cannot rest 
even for a moment yet if he think upon god his body and soul shall be happy man may be in the power of lust wrath and covetousness he may become a miser through love of greed he may have committed the four great sins and all venial sins he may be a demon to destroy he may never have listened to sacred books hymns and poetry yet shall he be saved if he think upon god and repeat his name even for a moment even though man repeat by heart the shastars the samiritis and the four veds though he be a penitent a leader of penitents or a yogi and have made all pilgrimages though he perform the six duties twice over though he bathe and perform worship yet if he love not the supreme god he shall assuredly go to hell man may have empire dominion and principality enjoyments may be scattered around him he may have delightful and beautiful gardens and his orders may be such as cannot be disobeyed he may have merriment and spectacles of many descriptions and he may continue devoted to pleasure yet if he think not of the supreme god he shall be born again as a serpent man may be very wealthy he may be attentive to ceremonial duties his reputation and conduct may be ostensibly spotless he may love his mother father children brothers and friends armies in full panoply and all men may show him honour yet if he think not of the supreme god he shall be taken and consigned to the abode below man's body may have no disease or blemish he may have no heart burning or grief he may not think of death but day and night enjoy himself he may have made everything his own and fear no one yet if he think not of the supreme god he shall fall into the power of death's myrmidons he to whom the supreme god is merciful obtaineth the society of the saints the more that association increaseth the greater his love for god he is the lord of both worlds there is no resting place but in him if the true guru be pleased nanak shall obtain the true name a daughter-in-law of chandu daughter of a pious sikh who had heard of the guru's torture considered what she could do to save him whom her father had ever reverenced and from whom he had ever obtained the object of his desires she said to herself the guru hath eaten nothing and not even drunk water or slept for several days accursed in my life in this house that i hear of the guru's torture and still see the light of day she prepared some sharbat and took it in the dead of night secretly to the guru's prison when stopped by the sentry on guard she drew forth a piece of jewellery and gave it to him he allowed her to pass with strict injunctions to return quickly she told the guru who she was recognize in me the daughter of a sikh of thine i am wife of the sinners chandu's son but i ought never to have been married to him i must have committed some great sin in a previous existence and this is the result of it hence i desire to live no longer take this sharbat and also eat something look on me as thy slave and have pity on me the guru replied hail to thee who hast so much devotion thou hast now but few days to live and thou mayest accompany me keep thy secret to thyself i cannot take food or drink from chandu's house on hearing this the lady begged him to take her as his companion to the unknown world chandu was all night meditating further torture for the guru he said to himself the guru manifesteth no pain under ordinary torture therefore i will cause him further suffering notwithstanding all the tortures employed the guru would not abate a jot of his determination for five days the guru suffered torture and then asked permission to bathe in the ravi and take his five sikh companions with him chandu might afterwards order what he thought fit chandu was very pleased at the guru's proposal and said when the guru's body is cool after bathing he will certainly consent to his son's alliance with my daughter 
he accordingly granted the guru's request and said thy life shall be saved if thou hearken to my words chandu sent with his prisoner an escort of soldiers armed with swords and matchlocks he ordered them to keep a close watch on the guru they were not to speak to any one on the way lest they should reveal the guru's sufferings they also received orders not to allow the guru to make any detour but proceed straight on and not halt before he had arrived at the bank of the river while the guru was bathing and subsequently drying himself the soldiers were not to address him or interrupt him in any way they were then to return with him and keep him and his sikhs in front of them so that he might not escape the guru enveloped himself in a long sheet and set forth the whole of his body was blistered and the soles of his feet sore and festered looking where he might tread with the least pain he proceeded very slowly seeing his servant pirana near him he leaned on his shoulder and emerged from the city by a wicket opening towards the river several people bowed as he passed the bystanders were astonished on seeing him weak from hunger and suffering and said in what a state the guru is travelling his mind however appeared collected and fixed on divine meditation as in his earlier and happier days his devotion like a mountain which cannot be moved was in no way affected by his bodily pain on arriving with very slow and painful steps at the ravi he took up some of its cold water recently melted from himalayan ice and bathed his feet and hands therewith he then went into the water and bathed his whole body meanwhile he recited with great devotion the yapji which confers salvation on sikhs his men who were like a halo round him followed his example the guru bowed at the end of his devotions and thus addressed his sikhs i have succeeded in effecting the object of my life go to my son the holy har gobind and give him from me ample consolation bid him not mourn or indulge in unmanly lamentations but sing god's praises let him also restrain from grief the other members of my family let him sit fully armed on his throne and maintain an army to the best of his ability let him affix the patch of guruship to his forehead according to ancient custom and ever treat his sikhs with the utmost courtesy let him hold by buddha in honour and in all respects except the wearing of arms hereby enjoined adopt the practices of the preceding gurus cremate not my body but let it flow on the bosom of this river having thus spoken the guru observed a minstrel approach with a two-stringed instrument and invited him to take a seat on a pleasant spot near the river sing the guru's hymns and accompany himself on his instrument the minstrel accordingly began to sing with great feeling and expression whereupon the heavenly hosts thronged to listen to witness the guru's departure and to congratulate him on his victory over torture and tyranny some recounted the guru's deeds while others listened with admiration they vowed that the earth itself had not such patience as the guru there was nothing animate or inanimate to be compared with him he hath shown extreme patience and endurance though had he chosen to exercise his miraculous power he might have averted his sufferings he hath never meditated retaliation on his enemy his praise suits none but himself for having endured extreme suffering and heeded it not he now cometh to us to abide in glory and bliss after his earthly misery the guru's death occurred on the fourth day of the light half of the month jeth sambat sixteen sixty three june a d sixteen o six when chandu's daughter-in-law heard of the guru's death she too abandoned her body as if it were a worthless blade of grass her corpse remained concealed in her chamber and none knew that her spirit had accompanied the guru's in its heavenly flight thus did guru arjan for his sanctity his conversion of the hindus and mohammedans his compilation of the grand sahib and his assistance to the grandson of his former benefactor fall a victim to the bigotry and inhumanity of a mohammedan emperor
The temple dedicated to the Guru in Lahore bears the following inscription of his own composition. Perform ablution, remember your God, and your minds and bodies shall be free from disease. Millions of obstacles shall be removed by God's protection, and good fortune shall dawn on you. I have uttered the compositions and the hymns of God. O oh, my brethren, ever sing, listen, and read them, and the perfect Guru will preserve you. End of chapter 10「Section 12 of the Sikh Religion, Its Gurus, Sacred Writings and Authors, Volume 3. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The Sikh Religion, Its Gurus, Sacred Writings and Authors, Volume 3, by Max Arthur McAuliffe. Hymns of Guru Arjan Shri Rag Life is uncertain, and man ought to repent betimes. Though only a guest for a gari or two, man arrangeth his affairs. He is absorbed in mammon and lust, and fool that he is knoweth not that he is but a guest. He only repenteth after his departure, and so falleth into the power of death the executioner. O blind man, thou art sitting on a falling bank. If thou art so fated from the beginning, then act according to the Guru's instruction. The owner may gather the crop, whether it be green, half-ripe or ripe, and fit to be cut. The reapers make preparations, bring sickles, and arrive on the ground. They cut the crop as it is measured out to them when the landlord giveth orders. The first watch of night is gone in business. During the second man sleepeth his fill. The third is passed in idle discourse and at the fourth the morning dawneth he who gave soul and body never entereth into man's mind i sacrifice and devote my life to the society of the saints through whom understanding entered my heart and i met god the omniscient know that nanak hath ever seen god who is the searcher of hearts with him the attributes of god i love that true one who dieth not or suffereth transmigration who being contained in everything will not be separated from me though i separate from him who removeth the pain and sorrow of the poor and truly loveth his servant wonderful is the form of the pure one the guru hath caused me to meet him o my mother o my brethren be friends with such a god accursed is the love of worldly things no one attached to them appeareth happy god is wise generous mild beautiful and infinite he is the companion the helper exceeding great exalted and altogether without limit he is not known as young or old everlasting is his court what we ask him we obtain he is the support of the weak on beholding him sins vanish and the soul and body are at peace if man with single mind meditate on him mental doubts shall be dispelled he is the treasury of excellences ever new and complete are his gifts ever and ever adore him forget him not by day or night he is the companion of those who are so destined from the beginning devote your body your soul and your wealth all unto him sacrifice your whole life unto him he beholdeth he heareth he is ever present he pervadeth every heart he cherisheth even the ungrateful o nanak god is ever the pardoner god's beneficence ever and ever remember god and clasp him to thy heart who gave thee soul body and wealth and adorned thee who constructed all the materials of thy body and infused into it immortal light o oh, my soul there is none but god ever remain under god's protection and thou shalt feel no sorrow jewels wealth gems gold and silver are all dust the affinities of mother father sons and kinsmen are all false the perverse man unclean beast that he is knoweth not him who made him he deemeth that god who is within and around him is distant avarice clingeth to him and his heart is attached to pride and falsehood 
boatfuls of persons without devotion or god's name come and go o god the creator mercifully preserve man and thine other creatures there is no protector but thee very unfeeling is the god of death saith nanak o god have mercy on me that i may not forget thy name nothing can be concealed from the omnipotent god in the dust of the saints feet are found the merits of hundreds of thousands of pilgrimages fastings and mortifications from whom canst thou hide thine evil deeds since god ever present beholdeth thee my god pervadeth and filleth every place true is his empire true his authority and truest of the true his seat the true one exerteth true power in the creation of the world nanak repeat the true name to which i am for ever and ever a sacrifice the guru counsels the rejection of worldly pleasures deeming the pleasures of the world sweet man partaketh of them but they prove to have a bitter taste he causeth his brethren and friends to love him heartily he is vainly devoted to sinful pleasures these shall pass away in a trice and he shall be astonished without the name o my soul apply thyself to the service of the true guru whatever is seen is perishable abandon thy perversity as a mad dog runneth in every direction so the avaricious man distinguisheth not but eateth both what is allowed and what is forbidden he who feeleth lust wrath and pride shall enter the womb again and again mammon hath spread out her net and placed a bait within it the greedy bird is snared and cannot escape my mother man knoweth not him who made him wherefore he shall suffer transmigration again and again this world hath in many ways and forms bewitched man he who is preserved by the omnipotent and eternal being shall be saved the people of god are saved by their love for him to them nanak is ever a sacrifice man during his brief measure of life ought to practise devotion when the herdsman goeth only for a few days to the pasture ground why should he prefer a claim to it when thy time is completed thou must depart yet thou art arranging thy household affairs o man sing god's praises and serve the true guru with love why art thou proud of a trifle like the guest of a night thou shalt depart in the morning why art thou attached to thy family everything is short-lived as the flowers of the garden why ever speak of thy property long for the god who gave it thee thou must assuredly depart and leave thy locks and carores having wandered among the eighty-four locks of existences thou hast at last obtained human life so difficult to obtain nanak remember thou the name the day of thy departure is near while life remains learn wise conduct o body as long as the soul thy companion is with thee so long thou livest happily when thy companion departeth thou shalt be blended with the dust if thou have felt love of god and a desire to behold him blessed shalt be thine abode as long as the soul dwelleth with thee every one will say sir sir to thee but when it departeth no one will care for thee serve thy bridegroom in thy father's house and thou shalt abide in happiness in thy father-in-law's having met the guru learn wise conduct and sorrow shall never befall thee all must go to their father-in-laws god taketh every one away nanak blessed is that happy wife who loveth the bridegroom some moral injunctions store up god's wealth worship the true guru and renounce all sin remember that god who made and adorned thee and thou shalt be saved o man repeat the name of the one eternal god who gave thee soul mind and body and who is the support of the heart the world is intoxicated with the prevailing lust wrath and pride enter the asylum of the saints fall at their feet and thy misery and mental blindness shall be removed the practice of truth patience and mercy is the best work man can accomplish he to whom god the formless one granteth grace renounceth pride and becometh the dust of all men's feet whatever is seen the extension of creation is all thou o god saith nanak the guru hath cut away doubt and i consider all things god 
the guru addresses god as a child his father relying on thee o beloved i have been made happy even if i have gone astray i am thy child o god thou art my father and mother it is easy to talk but to act as thou pleasest is difficult in thee i repose mine honour and my strength i know thee as mine thou art within and without everything thou needest nothing o father o father i know not thy ways god freeth me from entanglements o saints and cherisheth love for me the lord hath been merciful and my transmigration is at an end on meeting the guru nanak hath recognized the supreme god ashtapadi better seek god's protection than join any of the current indian religious sects i know not what things please the lord o my soul seek his way the meditator practiseth meditation he who is possessed of knowledge may employ his knowledge yet few know god the bhagati acteth according to the rules of his sect the yogi claimeth that he alone is emancipated the penitent is absorbed in his penance the silent observe silence the sannyasi the brahmachari and the hermit are devoted to their lonely lives the bhagats worship in nine ways the pandits shout the veds the householders who practise household duties the exabdis bahurupias and audhats the kapriyas the kautas the yagutas all plume themselves on their religious merits some bathe at places of pilgrimage the nirahars fast the aparasas touch nothing they deem impure some hide and do not allow themselves to be seen some in their own estimation know everything nobody admitteth any deficiency in himself all say that they have found god but it is only the saint whom god uniteth with himself all the above mentioned efforts i abandon and seek god's protection nanak i fall at the guru's feet the guru confesses the benefits he has received from god i fall at god's feet to conciliate him the true guru hath blended me with god there is none so great as he the lord of the earth is my beloved he is dearer to me than mother father sisters brothers and all friends there is none like thee o god by thine order sawan hath come and i have yoked the plough of truth i begin to sow the name in the hope that god in his beneficence will cause it to yield heaps of corn having met the guru i recognize the one god i know nothing of any one else god appointed me to the one duty as it pleaseth him so i perform it do you my brethren eat and enjoy yourselves the guru hath invested me with a robe of honour in god's court i have become master in my own village i have taken its five claimants captive i have entered thine asylum o god the five claimants have now become my tenants none of them can interfere with me nanak the village is now thickly populated i am a sacrifice and devote myself to thee o my sovereign on thee alone i meditate thou hast repeopled a ruined village i am a sacrifice unto thee i continually meditate on god the beloved and thus obtain the fruit my heart desireth god hath arranged all mine affairs and appeased the hunger of my soul i have abandoned all mine avocations and i serve the true god god firmly tied the name the receptacle of the nine treasures in my robe i have found the comfort of comforts the guru hath implanted his instruction in my heart the true guru placing his hand on my forehead hath shown me god i have built a true temple i search for and bring into it the disciples of the guru i bathe their feet fan them and ever prostrate myself before them having heard of the guru i went to him he implanted in my heart the virtues of the name of charity and of ablutions the whole world nanak having embarked on the true boat hath been saved the whole creation waiteth on thee o lord day and night lend thine ear and hear my supplication i have seen and examined every one it is thou alone who graciously deliverest us the order of the merciful hath now been issued that no one should annoy another that all should dwell in peace and that this should be a benign reign nectar falleth in torrents i speak as the master inspireth me i am very proud of thee o lord do thou accept me 
thy saints ever hunger for thee o god fulfil my desires giver of comfort grant me a sight of thee and embrace me i have found none so great as thou thou art in the earth the heavens and the nether regions thou art contained in every place saith nanak thou art the true support of the saints i am the wrestler of the lord having met the guru i put on a tall turban all are assembled for the wrestling god himself is seated to behold it the music of the drums and clarions striketh up the wrestlers enter the arena and walk round i have vanquished the five youths the deadly sins the guru patted me on the back all came together to see the wrestling and they shall take their various ways homewards the holy have obtained profit the perverse have lost even their capital thou art devoid of colour and marks o god thou appearest ever present o lord of excellences thy saints hear thy praises meditate on thee and love thee i am god's servant in every age the guru cut the rope of ignorance which bound me i will not again engage in wrestling nanak hath searched and found this opportunity of deliverance chant the happiness of the saints when the lord is merciful men bathe in the dust of the saints feet nanak hath obtained all things in god who is wealth and property beautiful o lord is thy house the saints live in the hope of rest in it their souls and bodies dissolve in love on remembering god's name and they drink its nectar they drink its nectar live immortal lives and while drinking deem the water of sin insipid when my god the lord of the earth became merciful i deemed the saints society a treasure o beloved saints all happiness and abundant joy are theirs who have sowed god's jewel in their hearts they forget not for a moment the support of life o nanak they live by repeating god's name maj gratitude to god who treats all men as equal that season is pleasant when i remember thee o god that work is pleasant which is done for thee o thou who bestowest on all that heart is happy in which thou dwellest thou art our universal father in thine inexhaustible storehouse are all treasures he on whom thou bestowest is satisfied and satiated and he is thy worshipper every one reposeth his hopes in thee thou abidest in every heart all our partners in thee thou disownest none favour with god is likened to a woman's happy married life in the house where the beloved celebrated his marriage female friends sang songs of rejoicing where the spouse hath adorned the bride there reign joy and pleasure the woman who is dear to her husband is beautiful clever skilful well conducted and distinguished she is accomplished and very fortunate she possesses sons and is a virtuous wife she hath all decorations and it is she who is wise she who is adorned with the love of her spouse is of good family and a queen the greatness of her whom her spouse hath embraced cannot be described the married life of her who hath support of the love of the unapproachable and inapprehensible spouse shall be eternal the hindu shastars and religious ceremonies are of no avail i have searched and searched in the desire to behold thee o god i have traversed every variety of forest is there any one who will bring me my god who is devoid of qualities and yet possesseth all qualities and introduce me to him man may recite aloud the wisdom of the six shastars he may worship apply frontal marks and bathe at places of pilgrimage he may perform the navali feet and sit in the eighty-four postures of the yogis but he shall obtain no comfort therefrom man may perform devotion and penance for many years he may travel and roam over the earth yet peace shall not enter his heart for a moment and his soul shall wander again and again god being merciful hath caused me to meet the saint my soul and body are refreshed and i have obtained consolation the immortal god resideth in my heart and anak singeth to god a song of rejoicing praise and prayer to the almighty darling god merciful joyous deep profound endless sustainer of the earth lofty unfathomable eternal lord i live by remembering thee destroyer of sorrow priceless treasure without fear or enmity unfathomable unequal deathless unborn self-existent the mind becometh refreshed by remembering thee 
O God, thou joyous one, be ever with me. Thou art the cherisher of high and low. Thy name is the elixir, which satisfieth my heart. Under the Guru's instructions, let me drink the nectar. In pain or pleasure, I meditate on thy name, O dear one. This wisdom have I obtained from the Guru. Thou art Nanak's support, O God. By thy love I shall be saved. The Guru expresses his love for God by familiar similes. Thou art, O God, an ocean of water. I am thy fish. I am a shatric thirst for the drops of thy name. In thee is my hope, for thee I thirst. My heart is absorbed in thee. As a child is satisfied by drinking milk, as a poor man is happy on finding wealth, as a thirsty man is refreshed by drinking water, so is my soul happy with God. As a lamp shineth in the darkness, as a woman's hopes are fulfilled on beholding her spouse, as one becometh happy on meeting one's beloved, so is my soul gladdened with God's love. The saints have put me on God's road, and being merciful have made me intimate with him. God is mine, I am his slave. Nanak, the Guru hath given me the true word. God's name is the sweetest and most potent of all relishes. The ambrosial name is ever pure. God is the bestower of comfort and the destroyer of sorrow. I have tasted and tried all other relishes, but to my mind God is the sweetest dainty of all. They who drink the nectar of his name are satisfied and become immortal on possessing it. The treasure of the name is obtained by him in whose heart the Guru's word abideth. He who obtaineth the essence of God's name is satisfied and cloyed. He who hath obtained God's sweets wavereth not. God's name is obtained by him on whose forehead favorable destiny was recorded. God hath come into the possession of one man, the Guru, from whom many receive favors. On meeting him many obtain salvation. The pious obtain the treasure of the name, but few, O Nanak, are they who have seen them. God's praises. God is my ocean. God is perfection. God is my wealth. O deep and profound one, thou art the boon of my life. He who toucheth the Guru's feet enjoyeth countless pleasures and delights. They who have seen God are pure and save all their brethren and friends. My Lord is inaccessible and inapprehensible. I meditate on him, the true one, by the kindness of the Guru. A few, by great good fortune, have obtained a sight of him, whom men make every effort to find. His palace, exalted, infinite, and invisible, the Guru hath shown me. Deep and profound is thine ambrosial name, O God. He in whose heart it dwelleth obtaineth deliverance. Nanak, they whose bonds are all cut off by the Guru are absorbed in God. The Guru delights in his devotion. By God's favor, I meditate on his name, and by his mercy I sing a song of joy. All your lives, whether standing, sitting, sleeping, or waking, meditate on God. The holy man hath given me the name as medicine. He hath cut off my sins, and I have become pure. All my pains have departed, all my pangs have been assuaged. I have become happy. He whom my beloved assisteth shall be delivered from the ocean of the world. Why should he who recognizeth the Guru as true be afraid? Since I have obtained the society of the saints and met the Guru, the demon of pride hath departed. At every breath Nanak singeth God's praises. The true Guru hath cast a veil over his sins. The condition of God's worshipper. God pervadeth his worshipper as warp and woof. God, the bestower of comfort, cherisheth his worshipper. I draw water, I fan, I grind corn for him, and am ever ready to do the work of the Lord. God hath cut off my chains and applied me to his worship. The order of the Lord is pleasing to the worshipper's heart. He acteth as is pleasing to the Lord. He becometh versed in spiritual and, and wordly knowledge. Thou art wise, O God. Thou knowest all things. God's worshippers enjoy his love. What belongeth to God belongeth to his worshipper. The worshipper is distinguished in the company of his Lord. He whom God hath clothed with his robe of honor shall not again be called on for his account. Nanak is a sacrifice to that worshipper. He is a gem of the deep and unfathomable. The devotion of the householder is superior to that of the anchoret. Everything is found at home, nothing abroad. He who searcheth abroad is lost in doubt. He who by the Guru's favor hath found God in his heart is happy in mind and body. 
a stream of nectar raineth on him in torrents the man who drinketh it after hearing and reflecting on the word rejoiceth and is glad day and night and ever sporteth with god separated from god through many births i have now found him and though dried up have revived by the guru's favour having met pious men i have obtained excellent wisdom and meditated on the name as waves blend with water so light is blended with light saith nanak the doors of error have been opened for its escape and there shall be no more wandering the guru's devotion to the holy i am a sacrifice to him who hath heard thy praises i am a sacrifice to him who uttereth thy name i am ever a sacrifice to him who worshippeth thee with heart and soul i will wash his feet and behold that merciful person who walketh in thy path i will bestow my heart on that friend of mine who meeting the guru hath found god greatly fortunate are they who know thee among crowds they live apart unaffected by them in the company of the saints they subdue all passions and cross the terrible ocean having renounced pride insolence and the darkness of worldly love my soul hath entered their asylum ye saints grant nanak the gift of the name of that inaccessible and unfathomable god god pervades creation thou art the tree thy branch hath blossomed from being small thou hast become great thou art an ocean thou art its foam and its bubbles there is nothing seen besides thee thou art the string thou art the beads of the rosary thou art its knots thou art its chief bead god is in the beginning the middle and the end and none besides is seen o bestower of comfort thou possessest no attributes and yet thou possessest all thou dwellest at ease thou art the enjoyer thou art saturated with love thou knowest thine own affairs it is thou who rememberest thyself thou art god and again thou art thine own worshipper thou art concealed o god and again manifest the slave nanak ever singeth thy praises look on him with a little kindness man is happy on meeting the guru and hearing his universal instruction o god thy word is nectar on hearing it my final emancipation is obtained on beholding the true guru the burning of my mind hath been quenched and it hath become cool happiness is obtained and sorrow fleeth far away when the saints repeat god's name water dry land and lakes are completely filled with it there is no place without it the creator showing mercy cherisheth all men and lower animals by the kind merciful and compassionate one all living things are satisfied and satiated god made the forest the glades and the three worlds he created them all in a moment under the guru's instruction nanak adore him who fulfilleth the desires of the mind god's relationship to man thou art my father thou art my mother thou art my kinsman thou art my brother thou art everywhere my protector then why should i feel fear and anxiety by thy favour i recognise thee thou art my shelter thou art mine honour besides thee there is none other the whole world is the arena of thy play men and lower animals all hast thou created thou didst appoint them to whatever duties please thee everything thou hast created is thine there is nothing ours i have obtained great comfort by meditating on thy name and my heart is refreshed by singing thy praises the perfect guru hath congratulated me nanak hath overcome his difficulties divine instruction refreshes the mind by god's order the rain beginneth to fall let us my friends having met the saints repeat his name i have obtained coolness peace composure and comfort since god himself infused coolness into my heart by god's grace the guru's instruction has been promulgated the lord god hath become merciful rain hath fallen everywhere the creator compassionate and ever merciful to the poor hath bestowed comfort on us and cherished his human beings and lower animals as a mother taketh care of her child thou o lord art the destroyer of grief an ocean of comfort and thou givest sustenance to all the kind one filleth sea and land i ever devote myself and am a sacrifice to him i ever meditate on him night and day who in one moment saveth all beings since god himself preserveth them all their sorrows and afflictions depart when the name is repeated and god looketh on us with favour o nanak the soul and body are refreshed the universal happiness produced by the diffusion of the guru's instruction rain hath fallen god made it fall 
he hath caused all men and animals to dwell in comfort their sufferings have departed and they have obtained true happiness by remembering god's name he whose they are cherisheth them the supreme god hath become their protector my god hath heard my supplication and my labour hath been successful by the guru's favour i have beheld him who is the benefactor of all living things the things that dwell in sea and land beneath the earth and in the firmament are all satisfied and i shall now wash the feet of holy men i am ever and ever a sacrifice to him who fulfilleth the heart's desires o nanak the destroyer of pain hath bestowed this boon on me and i am dyed with the love of him who is the abode of pleasure praise and thanksgiving my soul and body are thine my wealth also is thine thou art my lord and master my soul and body are all thy capital my power is from thee o god ever and ever thou alone art the giver of happiness i bow and bow and touch thy feet if it please thee and thou give me work o merciful one i will perform it o god it is from thee alone i receive thou art mine ornament whatever thou givest i treat as happiness wherever thou placest me there shall be heaven for me thou art the cherisher of all nanak having remembered thee hath obtained happiness he hath sung thy praises all day long all his heart's desires have been fulfilled and he shall never more be unhappy god sent the guru to comfort the world the supreme god hath sent the cloud and hath caused it to rain on sea and land in all directions comfort hath ensued all thirst is quenched and there is joy everywhere an exhortation to holiness my soul and body are dyed with the beloved god sacrifice to him all that thou hast sing god's praises the livelong day and forget him not even for a moment he who meditateth on god's name in the company of holy men is my beloved saint and friend in the company of holy men thou shalt cross over the world's ocean and cut death's noose by god's service the four boons are obtained repeat his name who is the tree of life unseen and inscrutable the guru hath cut off my sins of lust and anger and my hopes have been fulfilled the mortal who hath perfect good fortune shall meet god in the company of holy men the knock he within whose heart the name abideth shall be acceptable whether a householder or an anchoret prayers ought only to be offered for worthy objects if any one pray for worldly objects he shall not take long to perish he who ever worshippeth the supreme being shall on meeting the guru abide everlasting he in whose heart there is love and devotion ever waketh day and night singing god's praises god will take his arm and blend with himself him whom he hath destined to receive from him god's lotus feet dwell in the hearts of the saints without god's assistance all men are robbed ever desire the dust of the saints feet the name of the true one is their ornament whether standing or sitting sing god's name by remembering it a permanent boon is obtained o god be merciful to nanak what thou doest must be endured maj astapadi the guru replies to several questions of his sikhs who is saved who hath found the right way who hath divine knowledge who is the preacher who is the householder who is anchoret who hath found god's price how is man bound how is he set free how shall he escape from transmigration who doeth good works who doeth unselfish works who speaketh of god and causeth others to speak of him who is happy who afflicted who turneth towards the guru who turneth away from him how is god met how doth man separate from him who shall explain this to me what is that word by which the mind's wandering ceaseth what is that instruction by which man may bear weal and woe alike what is that way by which man may meditate on the supreme god what is that way by which man may sing his praises the following are the replies seriatim to the above questions the believer is saved the believer hath found the right way the believer possesseth divine knowledge the believer is the preacher blessed is the believer whether householder or anchoret the believer hath found god's price by pride man is bound by the guru's instruction he is freed the believer escapeth from transmigration the believer performeth good works the believer performeth unselfish works whatever the believer doeth is acceptable the believer is happy the unbeliever is afflicted 
the believer listeneth to the guru the unbeliever turneth away from him the believer meeteth god the unbeliever is separated from him the guru hath explained this the guru's instruction is the word by which the mind's wanderings cease by the guru's instruction woe and weal are born alike the guru's teaching is the way by which the supreme god is meditated on and man singeth his praises thou thyself hast made the whole creation thou art the cause of causes and hast established everything saith nanak from being one thou hast become endless and in the one the endless is absorbed god's praises god is indestructible then what anxiety can there be god is omnipotent so his slave is perfectly happy o giver of life so honour and happiness we obtain happiness from what thou doest for us i am a sacrifice and my life is a sacrifice to that holy man to whose soul and body thou art pleasing thou art my mountain thou art my shelter none can rival thee he to whom thy works are agreeable hath seen thee o supreme god in every heart thou art the one sole god contained in every place thou gratifiest all the heart's desires thy storehouses are filled with devotion and love he whom thou mercifully protectest shall be absorbed in thee by perfect good works god hath brought man to the surface out of the blind well he mercifully regardeth his servant with a favouring eye the servant singeth the perfect and immortal god's praises in repeating and hearing which there is no end in this world and the next thou art the protector o lord thou cherishest the child in its mother's womb the fire of maya cannot affect those who are dyed with god's love and sing his praises what excellences of thine can i remember and relate in my soul and body i behold thee thou art my friend my saint and my lord i know none but thee he whose helper thou art o god feeleth no hot wind thou art the lord thou givest comfort to those who seek thy protection by repeating thy name in the company of the saints thou becomest manifest thou art exalted unfathomable infinite and inestimable thou art the true lord i am thy servant and slave thou art the king true is thy sovereignty nanak is a sacrifice unto thee end of section twelve section thirteen of the sikh religion its gurus sacred writings and authors volume three this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox dot org the sikh religion its gurus sacred writings and authors volume three by max arthur mcauliffe the hymns of guru arjan the twelve months maj o oh god mercifully unite with thee those who by their past acts are separated from thee weary of wandering in the four corners of the world and in every direction we have come to thy protection a cow without milk is of no avail without water the tree withereth and beareth no fruit if we meet not the lord god the friend how shall we find rest the city or village or house where god is not seen is as a furnace all decorations betel and tasteful viands are unstable together with the body without the lord god all friends are as the god of death the supplication is mercifully grant me thy name o lord god whose abode is immovable unite me with thee in chet worship god and you shall greatly rejoice you shall obtain him by meeting saints and repeating his name it is only those who have found their god whose advent into the world is of account vain is his birth who liveth even for a moment without him god is equally contained in sea and land the nether regions the firmament and the forests with how much pain shall man reckon if god enter not his heart they who repeat god's name are very fortunate nanak my mind desireth my mind thirsteth for a sight of god i shall touch his feet who causeth me to meet god in the month of chet in baisakh how can they find consolation who are separated from god in whose hearts there is no love who forget him the friend and attach themselves to deceitful mammon son wife wealth remain not god alone perisheth not the whole world is strangled in its love of false occupations all but the name of the one god shall be lost on man's last journey he who forgetteth god is ruined there is none but him pure is the fame of those who are attached to the feet of the beloved nanak's prayer o god is unite me with thee that i may obtain thee baisakh is then delightful when the saints cause man to meet god 
in jeth man should unite with god before whom all bow he who clingeth to the skirt of god the friend shall never be bound by any one god's name is like gems and pearls which none may steal in god are all the loves which delight the mind what god desireth he doeth and creatures act according to his will they whom god hath made his own are blessed could men on their own account meet god why should they weep in separation nanak god is obtained by association with the saints and they who obtain him are happy in jeth the playful god is obtained by the fortunate for whom it hath been so recorded asar is a burning month for him to whom the lord god is not near he who forsaketh god the life of the world and resteth his hopes on man shall be ruined by his love of mammon and shall wear death's halter around his neck as man sowed in a previous life so was the destiny recorded on his forehead and so hath he reaped when the night of human life hath passed man regretteth and departeth without hope they who meet the saints shall be released in god's court o god show thy mercy unto me that i may thirst for a sight of thee nanak representeth o god there is none but thee asar is pleasant for him in whose heart dwell god's feet and so on happy is the woman who loveth god's lotus feet her mind and body are imbued with true love and her one support is the name the love of worldly pleasures is false everything we see shall become ashes pleasant are the drops of god's nectar he shall drink them who meeteth saints the woods and glades rejoice with god the omnipotent and unequalled my mind longeth to meet god his favour shall cause me to meet him i am ever a sacrifice to my companions who have met god nanak god mercifully regenerateth men with the word sawan is pleasant for those who clasp god's name to their hearts and badan she who beloveth mammon is lost in doubt though she have hundreds of thousands of decorations they are of none avail they whom man love leave him in a moment he wringeth his hands his body trembleth and changeth from black to white on the very day his body perisheth men call out ghost the myrmidons of death seize and take away the soul and tell no one their secret as man soweth so shall he reap the field of his works nanak god giveth his feet as a boat to him who hath sought his protection they who love the guru their saviour shall not go to hell in badan in asu ariseth the pang of love how man can meet god the mind and body greatly thirst for a sight of some one to come and cause us to meet god i fall at the feet of the saints who support me in my love how can any one obtain happiness but in god there is no place beside they who have tasted the juice of love are satiated and cloyed humbling thyself make this supplication o god attach me to thy skirt they whom god the spouse united with himself shall never be separated from him nanak there is no other shelter than god in asu they dwell happy to whom god showeth mercy in kartik they who do bad acts cannot impute the blame to others they who forget god suffer from every disease they who have turned their faces from god are separated from him at every birth all the sweets of mammon become bitter for them in a moment no one will mediate for them to whom shall they make their daily complaints nothing resulteth from man's own efforts he obtaineth what was recorded in his original destiny my lord is found by good fortune then shall all pains of separation depart o god save nanak and release him from this prison if in kartik man obtain the society of the saints all his anxieties shall depart the month of magar is beautiful for those who sit with their beloved god how can their glory be told whom god blendeth with himself the bodies and minds of those who have the saints for their companions rejoice in the Lord. they who are deprived of the society of the saints dwell alone their pain never departeth they are bound in the thrall of death they who have enjoyed their lord are seen ever standing in his service their necklaces are set with god for gems jewels and rubies nanak desireth the dust of the feet of those who fall for shelter at god's door they who worship god in magar shall never be born again in po cold shall never be felt by those whom the lord god hath embraced god's lotus feet have entered my heart and i desire to behold him take shelter in god and his service shall be thy gain on meeting the holy sing god's praises and sin shall not affect thee thou shalt be blended with what thou hast sprung from wherefore be absorbed in true love he whom the supreme being hath taken by the hand shall never be separated from him i am a hundred thousand times a sacrifice to god the friend the unapproachable and unfathomable nanak hath fallen at god's door it is to his honour to protect him po 
ho is agreeable and bringeth all happiness to him whom god pardoneth in mag bathe in the dust of the saints feet meditate on god's name and bestow it all upon all so shall the filth of the sins of births be washed away and pride vanish from thy heart lust and anger shall not seduce and the dog covetousness shall be destroyed the world praiseth those who walk in the true way mercy to human beings is more acceptable than bathing at the sixty-eight places of pilgrimage and than all alms offered there he on whom god mercifully bestoweth it is a wise man nanak is a sacrifice to those who have met their lord in mag they to whom the perfect guru is kind are called the pure in Fagun they enjoy happiness to whom god hath manifested himself the saints who render man assistance with god have mercifully blended me with him since then my couch is beautiful i possess all happiness and there is no room for sorrow my desires have been fulfilled i am very fortunate in having obtained god as my spouse my companions come to me sing a song of rejoicing and chant the hymns of the lord nobody appeareth like god no one is equal to him he hath prepared for me this world and the next and given me a stable position he hath rescued me from the ocean of the world and i shall not again have to run through births my tongue is but one while manifold are his attributes nanak is saved by falling at his feet in Fagun, ever praise him who hath not a particle of avarice the affairs of those who meditated on the name have been adjusted they who adore god the perfect guru shall be found genuine in his court god's feet are the basis of all comforts through them man crosseth over the terrible and dangerous ocean they who have obtained love and devotion burn not in sin their falsehood hath vanished their worldliness hath disappeared and they are filled to the brim with the truth they serve god the supreme being and put him alone in their hearts all months days and minutes are good for him on whom god looketh with favour nanak craveth the boon of a sight of thee o god be thou merciful unto him gauri an inquirer asked the guru in the first two lines of the following how final rest and god were obtained the guru de duly replied how is comfort found o my brother how shall god the helper be obtained there is no comfort in the house whose master saith all this wealth is mine nor in dwelling in a lofty and beautifully built mansion in such deceptive avarice man loseth his human life he is pleased on beholding his elephants and his horses the assemblage of his army his mace-bearers and his servants but on their account there is a halter of pride around his neck were man to rule over the whole world enjoy pleasures and embrace many women it would be as if a beggar became a king in a dream one comfort the true guru hath pointed out to me whatever god doeth is pleasing to his saints slave nanak he who destroyeth his pride shall be absorbed in god in this way comfort is found o my brother thus god the helper is obtained since god is everywhere contained man may lead a holy life as a householder why wander who would wander when god is contained in the water dry land the earth and in the firmament the holy are saved the perverse lose their honour none can equal him whom the merciful god protecteth since the one infinite being pervadeth all things be thou free from care and sleep happy god knoweth everything which happeneth the perverse are dying of thirst for mammon they wander through many births on account of their destiny writ from the beginning as man soweth so shall he eat on beholding god the heart delighteth the light of god is everywhere manifested god hath fulfilled all nanak's desires man after long transmigration having obtained human birth ought to endeavour to utilize it and work out his deliverance in how many births wert thou a worm or a moth in how many births an elephant a fish or a deer in how many births a bird or a serpent in how many births wert thou yoked as a horse or an ox meet the lord of the world this is the time to meet him after a long period this human body hath been formed for thee in how many births wert thou created in rocks and mountains in how many births wert thou aborted from the womb and how many births wert thou born as a vegetable thou didst wander through the eighty-four locks of existences human birth having now been obtained by thee associate with the saints perform service repeat god's name under the guidance of the guru and renounce pride falsehood and insolence if thou be dead when alive thou shalt be acceptable in god's court o god whatever hath been or shall be is thy work there is none other fit to perform it man shall meet thee o lord if thou cause him to do so saith nanak sing god's praises man 
in his present state of probation ought to practise holiness so the name in this productive soil and thy desire shall be accomplished thou shalt obtain the fruit of thy labour and the fear of death shall be dispelled ever sing god's attributes and praises clasp his name to thy heart and thou shalt quickly attain thine object fix thine attention upon god and thou shalt obtain honour at his court abandon all thy tricks and devices of speech and cling to the feet of holy men he in whose power all men are shall never be separated from us but shall be with us alway abandon shifts grasp his protection and in a moment thou shalt obtain deliverance know that he is ever near thee receive god's commands as true and obey them under the guru's instruction efface thyself and repeat god's name o nanak man ought to show gratitude to god for his many favours during the eight watches of the day meditate on that god who made thee a jewel out of earth who carefully preserved thee in the womb and who bestowed on thee renown and greatness o all-pervading may i obtain the dust of thy saints feet o men meet the guru and meditate on my lord my mind forgetteth not that god who turneth a foolish man into a preacher who turneth a senseless into a sensible man and by whose favour the nine treasures are obtained may i day and night at every breath remember him who giveth a home to the homeless who giveth honour to the unhonoured who fulfilleth all desires and by whose favour the chains of mammon are cut off by the favour of the guru poison hath become nectar saith nanak nothing is accomplished by man praise ye the preserver the advantages of devotion hear the word of god and thy uncleanness shall depart thou shalt become very pure and obtain enduring happiness by good fortune the society of holy men is obtained and love to the supreme being produced god saveth his servants who repeat his name and conducteth them across the great sea of fire by singing god's praises the heart is refreshed and the sins of many births blotted out i behold in my heart god's whole treasure why should i now go searching for it abroad when the master is kind his servant's labour is already accomplished remember 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 the attributes of him who having cut off thy shackles hath made thee his servant there is but one god in the heart and in every place he filleth the whole world the perfect guru hath dispelled all my doubts by remembering god nanak hath obtained comfort the human race tends to degenerate they who are dead have passed away those who survive stand with their loins girded looking to the occupations in which the former were engaged the latter have contracted twice their load of mammon they are entangled in things which are perishable and think not of the last hour the foolish person is bound by desire and involved in lust anger and worldly love dharmraj standeth over him he eateth poison deeming it to be sweet and saith i shall take mine enemy captive and punish him who shall dare set foot on my soil i am a pandit i am clever and wise attached to the world man knoweth not the creator only god knoweth his own state and condition what can one say how can any one describe Describe him man is engaged in whatever duties god appointed for him every one prayeth to secure his own advantage everything is thine thou art the creator thou hast no end or limits bestow this boon upon thy slave nanak that he may never forget thy name they who without service to god are attached to mammon shall regret when it is too late man is not satisfied with vast wealth it is not sufficient for him to see many phases of life he desireth to see more he is entangled with children and wife deeming them his own but his wealth shall perish and his children and wife become heaps of ashes then shall you behold him lamenting without god's name accurse the bodies accurse the wealth of the lovers of mammon all wealth is god's it is but given to man for brief use as when one putteth a bag of money on the head of a forced labourer the money reacheth the master's house but the labourer suffereth pain as when a beggar in a dream sitteth on a king's throne on opening his eyes he findeth it a baseless phantom as when a watchman is placed over another's field the field belongs to its owner and the watchman leaveth when his business is done even though the watchman strive vigorously he shall not become owner of the field he to whom the empire of the world belongeth hath sent it as a dream he who made maya hath infused so avarice into mankind god himself destroyeth he himself restoreth nanak offer thy supplication unto him men in previous births held high positions but are not now happy until saints tell them of god i have seen many forms and species of mammon with my pen i have written ingenious things on 
paper i have known what it is to be a chief a king a lord but with all that my mind was not satisfied o ye saints show me that comfort by which my thirst may be quenched and my mind satisfied i had fleet horses and elephants to ride on distilled aloe wood sandal couches and beautiful women actors sang for me at performances in the arena yet with all that my heart was not satisfied mine were thrones courts jewels and carpets all fruits beautiful gardens and the occupation of the chase the sport of kings yet my heart was not happy all was illusion and deception the saints of their kindness told me of the true one and in him i found all comfort and joy sing god's praises in the company of the saints saith nanak they are met by great good fortune he who hath god as his wealth is happy by god's mercy the company of the saints is obtained men are entangled in mammon as birds in a net man thinketh that his body is his own again and again he clingeth to it children wives and household are entanglements which prevent man from becoming the servant of god what is that way by which god's praises may be sung what is that skill by which man may escape from mammon what is for man's good he deemeth evil if one tell him the truth he regardeth it as poor poison he knoweth not what is for his profit or his loss that is how the infidel is entangled in the world the fool drinketh what is deadly poison for him and deemeth bitter the ambrosial name he never approacheth the company of the saints he wandereth through the eighty-four locks of existences birds after enjoying pleasures of various descriptions are all caught in the same net saith nanak the perfect guru hath cut the net for whomsoever he is merciful god's mercy and man's supplication by thy mercy o god the way is found by thy mercy the name is meditated on by thy mercy man is released from his fetters by thy mercy pride is dispelled if thou appoint me to thy service i will perform it i can do nothing of myself o god if it please thee i sing thy word if it please thee i call thee the true one if it please thee the true guru is kind all happiness o god is obtained from thy mercy pure is the act which pleaseth thee true is the faith which pleaseth thee the treasury of all excellences is with thee thou art the lord thy servant maketh thee this supplication may my soul and body become pure through the love of god may i obtain all happiness in the society of the saints may my soul be dyed with thy name this nanak deemeth supreme happiness of all relishes none so sweet as god's name o my tongue thy thirst departeth not for an instant however many sweets thou tasteth if thou now taste the sweetness of god thou shalt be astonished on tasting it my beloved tongue drink the nectar of god's name steeped in this relish thou shalt be satiated o my tongue sing thou god's praises every moment meditate on god the association of the saints is obtained by good fortune go to none but them and hear no words but theirs during the eight watches o my tongue adore the supreme god the unfathomable lord and thou shalt be ever happy in this world and the next by singing his praises o my tongue thou shalt be beyond all price plants and trees may burst into flower and fruit and sweet may be their flavour but god's name once tasted thou shalt never forsake no other relish can equal it saith nanak the guru hath become my succourer god who resides in the heart is the great merchant with whom the saints deal the heart is a building the body is a fence constructed round it within it are countless things within it we hear dwelleth the merchant who are the dealers who enjoy credit with him few there are who deal in the precious name who eat its nectar as food and devote their soul and body to god's service what is the way by which god will be pleased who is the man who will introduce me to that traffic i will touch his feet and renounce all ideas of mine and thine how shall i reach the merchant's palace how shall i be invited to enter it thou art the great merchant who hast millions of dealers who is that benefactor who will associate me with them searching and searching i have found my home the true one hath shown me the priceless jewel saith nanak by faith in the guru he will mercifully blend us with the merchant the saints occupation attributes and praises night and day the pious abide in the love of the one god they believe god ever with them they make the repetition of god's name their occupation they are satisfied and comforted by his sight on entering the asylum of the perfect guru they become enamoured of god and their minds and bodies grow happy god's lotus feet are support of their souls they behold him alone and carry out his orders they deal in only one thing they occupy themselves with only one thing they think of nothing but the formless one they are free from both joy and sorrow they are ever separated from the world and devoted to religion they are seen among the crowd but are not of it they fix their attention on the supreme god how can 
can i describe the glory of the saints their wisdom is unfathomable and cannot be sounded o supreme god have mercy on me and bestow on nanak the dust of thy saints feet the general prevalence of mammon maya is contained in the rejoicing and mourning of diffused throughout the world she is contained in heaven hell and the incarnation she is contained in the rich the poor and those who are conspicuous for their splendour she is contained in covetousness which is the root of trouble she is contained in the world in various forms o god the saints live by thy protection and are not subject to maya maya is contained in him who is intoxicated with intellectual pride she is contained in him who is attached to children and wife she is contained in elephants horses and other animals she is contained in him who is intoxicated with the wine of beauty and youth she is contained in kings in the poor and in those addicted to pleasures she is contained in the songs and musical instruments heard at assemblies she is contained in couches and palaces and their ornaments she is contained in the evil passions which render man blind she is contained in him who performeth religious ceremonies prompted by pride she is contained in the family man she is contained in the anchoret she is contained in human occupations and conduct she is contained in caste she is contained in everything except in those who are imbued with god's love god hath cut off the entanglements of the saints how can she be contained in them saith nanak maya approacheth not those who have obtained the dust of the saints feet while the senses are asleep the deadly sins rob the body the eyes sleep while coveting others property the ears sleep on hearing tales of slander the tongue sleepeth in the desire for the relish of sweet things the mind sleepeth admiring mammon in this world few are watchful they who are receive their boon whole all the senses are intoxicated with their own pleasures and take no thought of the body they inhabit wherefore the five plunderers and highway robbers fall upon its unguarded citadel to plunder it neither father nor mother can protect man from them neither friend nor brother can protect man from them they are not restrained by bribes or diplomacy they are only controlled by the society of the saints have mercy on me o god grant me the dust of the saints feet for all my treasure he who meeting the true guru is awake in the love of god o nanak hath the capital stock of his human life intact he to whom god is merciful is awake his capital stock wealth and property remain whole god's praises and glory and the advantages of remembering him there is none besides him in whose power are lords and emperors in whose power is the whole world who hath created everything address thy supplication to the true guru that he may arrange all thine affairs his court is the most exalted of all his name is the prop of all the saints the lord whose glory shineth in every heart is contained in everything and filleth creation by remembering him the abode of sorrow is demolished by remembering him death molesteth us not by remembering him what is withered becometh green by remembering him the sinking stone floated victory be ever to the society of the saints god's name is the support of the lives of his servants saith nanak hear o god my supplication by the favour of the saints grant me to dwell in thy name the advantages of repeating and writing god's name ever repeat god's praises with thy tongue and thou shalt obtain happiness o my brother and friend write with pen paper and ink the ambrosial word of god's name thy hand shall then become pure and the entanglements of maya shall be destroyed by thus acting all thy sin shall depart by remembering god death shall not punish thee the myrmidons of dharmjraj shall not look at thee and even though engaged with the world it shall not fascinate thee thou shalt be saved thyself and shalt save the world by repeating the name of the one god when god's name hath entered thy heart make use of it thyself and advise others to do so he on whose forehead the wealth of the name hath been written shall repeat it sing god's praises throughout the day saith nanak i am a sacrifice unto him men act perversely what belongeth to another we deem our own our hearts are attached to what ought to be abandoned say how shall the lord of the earth be found we love what is forbidden what is false we deem true the heart is in no wise attached to what is true we go crookedly by the left way leaving the straight way we wend backwards god is the lord of the two worlds nanak he who meeteth him shall be saved the guru in his humility feels himself unequal to worthily adoring god what form of thine shall i adore by what science of jog shall i discipline my body what art is that by which i can sing thy praises what speech is that o supreme god by which i may please thee what worship of thine shall i perform what way is that by which i may cross the terrible ocean what is that penance by which i may become penitent what is that name by which the filth of pride may be washed away skill worship divine knowledge meditation and the 
fruit of all his toil are obtained by him o nanak whom the compassionate true guru kindly meeteth it is such a man who possesseth excellence it is he who knoweth god and the giver of comfort granteth his prayers the guru exhorts his soul to practise devotion o my soul desire him in whom there is no deficiency o my soul make that beloved god thy friend and ever remember him who is the support of life o my soul serve him who is the primal being and infinite god o my soul place thy hope in him who is the trusted of every age nanak on meeting the guru singeth the praises of god whose love ever conferreth happiness who are the really great they who appear to be very great in this world suffer from the malady of anxiety who is great by reason of the greatness of his wealth he is great who devoteth his love to god landowners ever strive for land their covetousness is never extinguished but they must leave their lands and depart saith nanak the real thing i consider is that without repeating god's name there is no deliverance a man without piety is less useful than a beast man eateth many any species of food like a beast he is bound like a thief by the rope of worldly love his mortal body without the company of the saints is tortured in the womb by transmigration he weareth beautiful clothes of various sorts like a scarecrow in the fields to frighten animals away the bodies of all creatures are of use but man's is useless unless he utter the name saith nanak he to whom god is merciful uttereth god's name in the company of the saints the guru's mission is accomplished the word of the guru hath dispelled all trouble and affliction transmigration is at an end and all happiness attained by meditating on the fearless god fear is extinct i have sung the praises of god in the company of his saints i have put his lotus feet within my heart the guru hath taken me across the sea of fire the perfect guru extricated me when i was drowning the guru united me with god though separated from him in various births saith nanak i am a sacrifice to that guru by meeting whom my salvation hath been accomplished the following is repeated by sikhs over a sick person things which were withered god in a moment maketh green his ambrosial glance irrigateth and reviveth them the perfect god removeth all affliction when he bestoweth his service on his servant anxiety is removed and the heart's desire is fulfilled when the true guru who is an embodiment of good qualities showeth mercy sorrow fleeth away and happiness taketh its place in this there is no delay when god giveth the order our desires are fulfilled when the true guru is found the knock they who find him bear good fruit they who seek god aright have no fear the whole world is sunk in fear but he who hath the name for his support hath no fear he o lord who taketh thy protection feareth not what pleaseth thee must be done they who mourn and rejoice suffer transmigration while they who are pleasing to the lord obtain comfort maya pervadeth this fiery ocean of the world they who have found the true guru have recovered o god the preserver preserve me saith nanak what a poor creature am i worthless is the body without the name mouths without the name are empty like husks devoid of grain o mortal ever repeat god's name without it woe to the body which shall then become death's prey without it the countenance loseth its lustre without her spouse where is the wife when through devotion to the pleasures of the world man forgetteth the name his desires are never fulfilled saith nanak o god mercifully grant me the favour of repeating thy name day and night man's sins cannot be concealed from god man doeth evil but pretendeth to do good for this he shall be bound like a thief in god's court he who uttereth the name is a saint of god who is equally contained in sea land the nether regions and the firmament he who uttereth words of nectar while in his heart is poison shall be bound and punished in death's city the sins which man committeth behind many screens shall in a moment be laid bare to the world nanak god will be merciful to him in whose heart is the truth and who is dyed with the love of the name man ought to show his gratitude to god by remembering him why should we show neglect to him o mother who hath bestowed on us raiment and food he who forgetteth the lord and attacheth himself to others and exchangeth a gem for a kauri man may forsake god fascinated by other deities but who hath honour by saluting a slave instead of his master man taketh food and drink tasting like nectar but the dog knoweth not him who gave them saith nanak we are ungrateful pardon us o god thou searcher of hearts the advantage of meditation on god meditation in my heart on god's feet is for me equal to bathing and ablutions at all places of pilgrimage remember god every day o my brethren and the impurity of millions of births shall be washed away piety is for man's advantage men have made god their friend for their own advantage he fulfilleth all their desires and granteth them the dignity of salvation let also make god their friend that none may depart in vain god removeth the sorrows pains and maladies 
qualities of those who for their own objects hold him in their hearts all their desires are fulfilled who practise repetition of god's name with their tongues nanak is many times a sacrifice unto them profitable is a sight of my god the advantage of listening to divine instruction hear the story of god in the company of the saints and millions of obstacles to deliverance shall be removed in a moment by drinking the nectarious juice of god's excellences and praises and adoring his feet hunger and thirst shall depart he in whose heart god dwelleth possesseth the complete treasure of happiness comfort and peace medicines charms and spells are all in vain clasp the creator to thy heart abandon all doubts repeat the name of the supreme being and such religion saith nanak shall be unshaken god is omnipotent to save the deadly sins like robbers were with me all day long but god mercifully dispersed them let every one repeat with love the name of god who is full of all resources god in a moment causeth man to cross over the very seething ocean of the world man's many shackles can only be burst by remembering the name thus he obtaineth the reward of salvation man can accomplish nothing by tricks or devices of speech saith nanak show mercy to me o god that i may sing thy praises meditation on god and obedience to his word are potent for salvation the mortal whether learned or unlearned who meditateth on god attaineth the supreme state in the company of the saints remember god without the name false is wealth and property he who obeyeth the voice of god is handsome clever and wise profitable is his advent into the world who recognizeth his lord in every heart saith nanak he who is very fortunate applieth his mind to god's feet incongruities infidels consort not with god's servants the former are sinful the latter love god the association would be as unmeet as if one who cannot ride were put astride a thoroughbred mare as if an impotent man were to caress a woman as if a spansel were put on an ox to milk him as if a man were to mount a cow and chase a lion as if one were to worship a sheep instead of the cow comden which granteth all desires as if one were to pursue trade without capital nanak repeat god's name in thy heart remember a friend like the lord god the saints love of god illustrated by familiar examples as a wife is delighted on beholding her spouse as god's servant liveth by remembering his name as a mother reviveth on beholding her son so god's servant loveth god who is the warp and woof as an avaricious man rejoiceth on acquiring wealth so god's servant's heart is attached to his lotus feet they who bear such love to god enjoy the greatest good fortune he blendeth them with himself may i not forget thee even for a moment thou beneficent one nanak's god is the support of the soul the following was addressed to a hypocritical brahmin thou openest thy waist cloth and spreadest some of it beneath thee thou loadest thy belly like a donkey but without good works deliverance is not obtained the boon of deliverance is granted to meditation on the name thou performest worship and ablutions and appliest sacrificial marks to thy forehead thou pullest out a knife to threaten suicide if alms be not given thee thou recitest the veds with tuneful voice shrinkest thou not from killing creatures o mortal saith nanak he to whom god showeth mercy is pure in heart and meditateth upon him the condition of those who are imbued with god's love they who are imbued with god's love burn not in the flames they who are imbued with god's love are not deceived by maya they who are imbued with god's love are not drowned in the water they who are imbued with god's love bear good fruit by god's name all their fear is dispelled they meet the society of the saints and sing god's praises he who is imbued with god's love is freed from all anxieties he who receiveth the guru's spell becometh attached to god he who is imbued with god's love hath no fear of death he who is imbued with god's love hath his desires fulfilled he who is imbued with god's love suffereth not misery he who is imbued with god's love is watchful night and day he who is imbued with god's love abideth in the abode of happiness he who is imbued with god's love is preserved from doubts and fears he who is imbued with god's love obtaineth the highest wisdom he who is imbued with god's love is pure saith nanak i am a sacrifice to those who forget not my god god helps and cherishes his servants he himself is his servant's helper like a father and mother he ever cherisheth him every one is saved by entering god's sanctuary it is he who acteth and causeth to act he is omnipresent and true the creator now dwelleth in my heart fear is extinct and my soul hath obtained all happiness god mercifully preserveth his servants and their sins of many births fall off the glory of 
god cannot be described the slave nanak is ever in his sanctuary helpless man utters his wail to the almighty o strong-armed puissant god ocean of happiness i am falling into the pit take thou my hand mine ears hear not mine eyes see not afflicted and crippled i cry at thy gate patron of the poor and patronless full of mercy friend father mother thou who causest thy saints to cross over the ocean of fear nanak holdeth thy lotus feet within his heart without the guru man has not wherewithal to recommend him to god by what virtue shall i meet the lord of the soul o my mother i possess no beauty no understanding no strength i am a stranger come from afar i have not wealth or the glory of youth friendless that i am unite me o god with thee searching and searching i have renounced the world i wander thirsting for a sight of thee compassionate to the poor o merciful god nanak praya quench my thirst with the society of the saints instruction and supplication depart bird of the soul and make remembrance of god thy pinions meet the saint embrace his society put god's perfect jewel into thy heart superstition is a pit the thirst for pleasure its mire very entangling is the noose of worldly love he who cutteth it is god the world's guru dwell at his lotus feet o god beloved master lord of the poor mercifully hear my supplication o nanak's lord take my hand the soul and body are all thy capital though god is in every heart some men are good and others evil the reason is known only to god o immortal king we dwell fearlessly with thee whence cometh this fear in one person thou appearest proud in another lowly in one person thou art haughty in another humble in one person thou art a pandit and preacher in another thou art stupid in one person thou graspest at everything in another thou acceptest nothing what can man the poor wooden puppet do he who setteth the puppet in motion knoweth its condition it playeth the part for which the player dressed it he hath made various chambers of many descriptions within it and he himself guardeth it the soul must remain in whatever body it is placed what can the wretched thing do he who made something namely all the contrivance of the body knoweth its construction nanak the infinite god knoweth the value of his own work amid the pleasures of sin man thinks not of death abandon abandon the pleasures of sin o fool and madman thou art entangled with them and shalt be punished like cattle which fall upon crops what thou considerest thine advantage shall not go with thee an inch naked didst thou come naked shalt thou go thou shalt become a morsel for death and return to a body again and again beholding the short-lived sports of the world thou art absorbed in them and laughest while they last the string of life weareth away day and night thou hast not done aught for thy soul amid vain works old age hath come upon thee thy speech faileth and thy body wasteth away since that fascinating woman bewitched thee thy love for her hath in no wise diminished when the guru showed me that such was the world i abandoned pride and entered thy sanctuary o god the saint showed me the way to god the slave nanak hath adopted god's service and praises thanksgiving whom have i but thee my beloved thou art the support of the soul only thou knowest the state of my heart thou art my friend and companion i have obtained all happiness from thee thou art intangible and unequalled i cannot describe thy play o ocean of merits bestower of happiness the unapproachable invisible and imperishable god is known by means of the perfect guru since i have destroyed pride god hath banished my doubts and fears and made me completely happy by showing me the company of the saints thou hast put an end to my anxiety regarding transmigration i wash their feet i serve the guru and offer myself a sacrifice a hundred thousand times to him by whose favour the slave nanak hath crossed the terrible water and met the beloved the bliss of the holy i am a sacrifice to them whose sole support is the name how shall their greatness be estimated who are imbued with the love of the supreme being happiness peace and joy are with them there are no others generous as they they who thirst for a sight of god have come to save the world they who have sought their protection have been saved and all their desires fulfilled in the company of the saints if i fall at their feet i shall survive i am happy in the company of the saints o god be merciful to me that my heart may become the dust of the saints feet empire youth and life whatever is seen in this world decreaseth nanak hath earned the treasure of the name which is ever new and pure a yogi came to the guru and asked him if he had learned the science of yoga the following was the guru's reply the way of yoga i have heard from my guru the true guru hath communicated to me the word every moment i bow before him who is contained in the nine regions of the earth and in this body i have made the guru's instruction mine earrings and have set up the one god in my heart the five pupils collectively i have placed under the control of one 
when the organs of perception and action were obedient then i became a pure yogi i burnt superstition and applied its ashes to my body the sight of the one god i made my sect i have resignedly and gladly accepted that as the portion which god destined for me where there was no fear there i assumed my devotional attitude and the ecstatic sound is my yogi's horn i have made meditation on god my staff and love of the name my rule of life the fetters of mammon shall be struck off that fortunate person who meeteth such a yogi nanak serveth and worshippeth such a person and licketh his feet a prayer to the lord of life o lord of my life show me compassion and mercy i helpless have entered thy sanctuary give me thy hand and extricate me from the blind well i have no device or spell to assist myself causer of causes everything art thou thou art omnipotent there is none beside thee only thou thyself knowest thine own state and condition they who are so destined become thy worshippers thou o god lovest thy worshippers thou art contained in them as the warp and woof they long for thy very beloved name and a sight of thee as the chakor longeth for the moon there is no difference between god and his saints but out of hundreds of thousands and millions there is only one real servant of god he in whose heart god is manifested repeateth his praises night and day o god thou art omnipotent infinite the most high the giver of comfort and the prop of life o god mercifully grant nanak the companionship of the saints relations and worldly wealth avail not without devotion to god there is no happiness without devotion to god win for thyself the priceless jewel of human life by repeating his name even for one moment in the company of saints several people have left sons wealth wives and pleasures after enjoying them fools have departed naked leaving behind them excellent horses and elephants and even the pomp of empire the bodies which were perfumed with distilled aloe wood and sandal have been blended with the dust infatuated by worldly love they deemed god distant but saith nanak he is ever present contempt for the body o body great thy pride from such an origin transitory art thou however much thou grasp at worldly things thou lovest those things which learned saints have forbidden thee as a gambler who while losing remaineth attached to play so thy senses conquer and hold thee in bondage thou art not imbued with love for the lotus feet of him who destroyeth and createth all things the treasure of mercy gave me nanak the company of the saints by which i am saved man groping in the darkness of worldly love desires the light of divine knowledge to dawn for him is there any one who will dispel man's pride and turn his heart away from sweet mammon man hath become spiritually ignorant he desireth what existeth not his night is dark and gloomy how can morning dawn for him i have grown weary wandering and searching in every way but at last god hath been merciful and i have obtained the treasure of the company of the saints man should think of his soul not of his short-lived body o oh, my soul seek god's protection and thou shalt be happy the days in which the giver of life and happiness is forgotten pass away in vain thou hast come as the guest of one night yet thou extendest the hope of living for many ages houses palaces wealth everything that is seen is like the shadow of a tree this body of mine my entire wealth gardens and property shall all pass away thou hast forgotten god the giver in one moment these things shall become another's thou bathest and puttest on clean clothes and perfumest thyself with distilled aloe wood and sandal thou thinkest not of the fearless the formless one thou art as an elephant which throweth dust on itself after being bathed when god is merciful he will cause thee to meet the true guru all happiness abideth in god's name nanak by singing god's praises the guru shall unlock thy fetters and thou shalt be freed the following was written by the guru on hearing that a raja was preparing an expedition to seize another raja's territory the thirst of only a few is slaked man amasseth thousands and millions but restraineth not his mind he is burning for more and more though possessing beautiful women of many races he committeth adultery in other men's houses he distinguisheth not between bad and good under the many bonds of mammon he wandereth and singeth not the praises of the treasury of excellences his mind is absorbed in worldly affairs he to whom god is merciful is dead while alive and in the company of the saints crosseth over the ocean of the world nanak that man shall be acceptable in god's court to man god should be the dearest of all god is the darling object of all men some love contemplation some pleasure some divine knowledge some meditation and some a hermit's life some love lip worship some austerities some adoration burnt offerings and daily ceremonies and some a wandering existence some love the shore some the sea some the study of the veds but to nanak only god's service is dear god to the guru is everything that is precious the celebration of thy praises is my treasure thou art my delight thou art my glory thou art my beauty thou art my love thou o god art my hope and my shelter thou art my pride thou art my 
my wealth thou art mine honour thou art my life the guru hath united me with thee from whom i had parted thou art my home thou art my forest thou art my village thou art my deserts saith nanak thou art to me the nearest and dearest of all the guru gives the opinion of holy men as to the means of salvation they who dwell under the sovereign lord's protection shall be saved all others fall to the ground from the lofty heights of mammon great men after the study of the shastars the simritas and the veds have thus expressed themselves there is no salvation nor hath any one found comfort without the repetition of god's name man may have amassed the wealth of the three worlds yet his avarice will not otherwise be slain without repeating god's name can stableness be obtained no man shall transmigrate again and again man engageth in various fascinating recreations yet his desires are never satisfied they ever burn and are never quenched without the name all things are vain repeat god's name o my friend this is the essence of perfect happiness in the company of the saints and by becoming the dust of their feet nanak hath freed himself from transmigration the guru gives a compendium of his teaching without god all works are vain by works of hypocritical devotion penance and austerities man is plundered on this side he who abideth in fast Fasting, insincere ceremonies and austerities shall not obtain an eighth of a paisa in the next world the coin is different my brother this coin will be of no use there he who batheth at a place of pilgrimage and wandereth over the earth shall find no abiding place hereafter such things shall avail him not he merely pleaseth people thereby man shall not hereafter find a place in god's court by reciting the four veds he who knoweth not the pure and imperishable one uttereth sheer nonsense nanak hath expressed this opinion he who who acteth on it shall be saved serve the guru meditate on god's name and dismiss pride from thy heart the guru addresses god with great fervour come my beloved god night and day at every breath let me meditate on thee o saints give god this message i fall at thy feet without thee how shall i be saved with thee i rejoice thou art in the forest in the glades in the three worlds thou conferrest supreme happiness and joy my couch is pleasant my soul expandeth towards thee on beholding thee happiness shall be mine i will wash thy feet and continually perform thy service i will worship thee make thee offerings and do thee homage thy slave of slaves will repeat thy name repeat o saints this my supplication to god so shall my desires be fulfilled and my soul and body revived on beholding god all my griefs shall be dispelled by continually repeating god's name nanak shall be saved and obtain unfading happiness sing god's praises received from a saint and pray for god as your alms o my soul sing god's delicious praises sing god's delicious praises attached to the true one the homeless obtain a home all other relishes are insipid and render body and soul insipid accursed is his life who doeth aught contrary to god's will grasp the saint's shirt and thou shalt cross over the ocean adore the supreme god and all thy family shall be saved he who putteth god's name into my heart is my saint my kinsman my friend he who bestoweth on me the favour of blotting out all my demerits my property my treasure my home may go to ruin my wealth is in god's feet nanak begging at thy gate o god craveth for thee as his alms gari ashtapadi it is said that the one raj chand went to the guru and asked him how happiness could be obtained and unhappiness avoided the following was the guru's reply when man harboureth pride in his heart he wandereth about mad and estranged from god when man becometh the dust of all men's feet he on that account beholdeth god in every heart the fruit of humility is naturally pleasant this gift my true guru gave me when man deemeth others bad all weave plots against him when he hath ceased to speak of things as his own no one beareth him enmity when man beholdeth things as his own he suffereth serious trouble when man recognizeth the creator his sufferings are at an end when man entangled himself with worldly love he suffereth transmigration and falleth under death's continual ken when man's doubts are removed there is no difference between him and the supreme from the moment that man recognizeth a difference he suffereth pain punishment and affliction from the moment that man knoweth the one god he hath obtained all knowledge when man runneth after mammon he findeth it not nor doth his thirst depart when man fleeth from mammon she proceedeth to pursue him when the true guru is found by his own mercy the lamp is lit in the temple of one's heart when man considereth his gain and loss he realizeth the value of his temple the one god doth everything and causeth everything to be done he himself is wisdom reflection and discrimination he is not distant he is near and withal and not praise the true god with love all must perish save god who has no end or limit in the first place man issueth from his dwelling in the womb he afterwards attacheth himself to his children wife and family 
family thy dishes of many sorts and thy varied dresses o wretched man shall assuredly pass away what place is that which shall ever be permanent what word is that by which evil inclination shall be removed even the realm of indar must assuredly perish even the realm of brahma remaineth not permanent and even the realm of shiv shall dissolve maya with the three qualities and the demons shall perish mountains trees the earth the firmament and the stars the sun the moon wind fire and water the laws and alternations of day and night the shastars the simritas and the veds places of pilgrimage demigods temples and books rosaries frontal marks purely cooked victuals loin claws prostrations raiment food shall pass away with all men race castes mussulmans hindus beasts birds animals of different species all the visible creation and all forms of his existence shall perish by praising and serving god real divine knowledge is obtained which ever conferreth happiness and the permanent and true abode where the congregation of the saints are absorbed in god's praises and dwell for ever in the fearless city there is no fear no doubt no mourning no anxiety no transmigration no death no birth there is for ever joy in the theatre of spontaneous music the saints dwell there singing god's praises is their sustenance the supreme being hath no end or limit who can describe him saith nanak he to whom god is merciful shall reach the imperishable place in the company of the saints he who divests himself of love of mammon shall attain all perfection he who divesteth himself of the love of mammon is a hero he who so divesteth himself is perfect he who divesteth himself shall obtain greatness he who so divesteth himself shall be free from suffering if there is any one who so divesteth himself and banisheth his love of mammon he accomplisheth raj yar he who so divesteth himself shall have no fear he who so divesteth himself shall be absorbed in the name he who so divesteth himself shall have his thirst extinguished he who so divesteth himself shall be acceptable in god's court he who so divesteth himself shall become wealthy he who so divesteth himself shall be honoured he who so divesteth himself shall become continent he who so divesteth himself shall obtain deliverance the advent of him who so divesteth himself is profitable he who so divesteth himself shall be stable and opulent he who so divesteth himself shall be very fortunate he who so divesteth himself shall be watchful night and day he who so divesteth himself shall obtain salvation while alive he who so divesteth himself shall lead a pure life he who so divesteth himself shall be thoroughly versed in divine knowledge he who so divesteth himself shall meditate on god without so divesting himself shall man shall not be acceptable even though he perform millions of superstitious ceremonies and forms of worship without so divesting himself he shall be born again without so divesting himself he shall not escape from death without so divesting himself, himself he shall not obtain divine knowledge without so divesting himself his impurity shall not be washed away without so divesting himself everything is defilement without so divesting himself everything is an entanglement he to whom the ocean of mercy is merciful shall be freed and shall obtain all perfection he whose love of mammon is removed by the guru shall saith nanak meditate on god he who embraces a holy life shall obtain everything that is prized he who attacheth himself to god findeth a friend in everybody he who attacheth himself to god hath a stable mind he who attacheth himself to god feeleth no anxiety he who attacheth himself to god shall be saved o my soul unite thyself with god naught else shall avail thee great worldly people who think not of god are useless and ignorant although god's slave be accounted of lowly birth yet in his company men shall be at once saved hearing god's name is equal to millions of ablutions meditating on him is equal to millions of adorations hearing his praises is equal to millions of alms deeds knowing his ways from the guru bringeth millions of rewards think again and and again upon god in thy heart and thy love for mammon shall depart the immortal god is with thee o man be absorbed in thy love for him specially perform the services of him by serving whom all thine avarice shall depart by serving whom the myrmidons of death will not look at thee by serving whom thou shalt obtain great honour by serving whom thou shalt be immortal whose servant shall not be punished whose servant shall not be even bound and in whose office thine account shall not be called for o man perform the service of him who is in need of nothing who is one though of various forms and at whose sight thou art ever happy without remembering god man is on a level with everything that is low and base he who remembereth not god leadeth the life of a snake so liveth the infidel who forgetteth the name he who liveth remembering god even for a moment shall live for millions of days yea for ever cursed be the acts done without remembering god the infidel like a crow's beak dwelleth in filth without remembering the name his desires are those of a dog the infidel is nameless like a prostitute's son without remembering the name he is like a ram's horn the infidel uttereth false 
falsehood and his face is black and without remembering god's name he is like a donkey which wandereth about in foul places without remembering the name he is as a mad dog the covetous infidel falleth into entanglements without remembering the name he committeth suicide the infidel is low he hath neither family nor caste the guru causeth him to whom he is merciful to meet the society of saints and o nanak to cross over the ocean of the world the evil fate of him who forgets the name come to me o my god bestow on me thy name totally accursed be the love which is without the name he who dresseth himself or eateth without invoking the name is like a dog fallen on garbage business performed without the name is futile as the decorations of a corpse he who enjoyeth pleasures in forgetfulness of the name hath no happiness even in his dreams nay his body becometh diseased if man abandon the name for any other occupation the whole of his false gilding shall fall off he who loveth not heartily the name shall go to hell even though he perform millions of ceremonies he who remembereth not god's name in his heart shall be bound like a thief in the realm of death there might be hundreds of thousands of displays in great profusion yet without the name they would all be vain ostentation that man repeateth god's name to whom o nanak he mercifully granteth it what god the friend does for man my soul longeth for that friend who forsaketh me not at the beginning middle or end of my undertakings god's love ever accompanieth us he is the compassionate and omnipresent cherisher he perisheth not neither doth he abandon his servant wherever i gaze there is he contained he is beautiful skilful clever the giver of life he is brother son father and mother he is the support of my life and soul he is my capital dwelling in my heart he hath made me love him he hath cut off mammon's chains and beholding me with a favourable eye made me his own by ever remembering god all diseases are healed and by meditating on his feet all happiness enjoyed the all-pervading being is ever fresh and youthful he is the companion and protector of man whether at home or abroad saith nanak the saint who knoweth god's dignity hath obtained from him the name for all his wealth the man who knows not god passes his life in pleasures worldly love and pride and cannot obtain salvation through pleasures social gatherings and the gratification of evil passions man blind that he is knoweth not god his whole life passeth away saying i hoard i earn i am a hero i am distinguished no one is equal to me i am young religious of good family thus pride entereth his heart and he forgetteth it not until death so entangled is he in his boastful intellect he resigneth his wealth to his brothers friends kinsmen and companions who survive him the desire to which the mind is attached becometh supreme at the last hour if man perform purifications through pride he becometh bound by such entanglements o merciful god show mercy that nanak may become the slave of thy slaves gauri chant man should consider how to obtain god's favours here my companions let us join the, and make efforts to please god the bridegroom through the saint's spell let us abandon pride and through the filter of devotion fascinate our spouse o my companions once he cometh into our power he will not again forsake us this is a good custom of the lord nanak god will make us pure and dispel the fear of old age death and hell here my companions this is a good course let us adopt it having withdrawn from worldly cares let us sing god's praises with composure and devotion our troubles and difficulties shall depart our doubts be dispelled and we shall obtain the reward our hearts desire nanak let us meditate on the name of the supreme and omnipresent god o my companions i have ever desired to devote myself to god may he grant my desires having renounced the world i thirst for a sight of his feet i look for them everywhere to find the omnipresent being i will trace his tracks in the company of the saints nanak the holy men who have found the giver of comfort are very fortunate o my companions i now dwell with my beloved spouse and my soul and body have become attached to him hear me o my companions i sleep well since i have found my beloved i have lost my doubts i have obtained peace and rest the lord hath appeared unto me and the lotus of my heart hath blossomed i have found my husband the lord a search of hearts o nanak my married state shall never cease end of section thirteen Section 14 of The Sikh Religion, Its Gurus, Sacred Writings and Authors, Volume 3. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The Sikh Religion, Its Gurus, Sacred Writings and Authors, Volume 3 by Max Arthur McAuliffe. Hymns of Guru Arjan the bawan akari or acrostic the divine guru is my mother the divine guru is my father the divine guru is my lord and supreme god the divine guru is my companion and dispeller of spiritual ignorance 
The divine Guru is my relation and my brother. The divine Guru is the giver and the teacher of God's name. The divine Guru hath the spell that cannot be counteracted. The divine Guru is peace, truth, the image of wisdom. The divine Guru is a philosopher's stone by touching which man is saved. The divine Guru is a place of pilgrimage, his divine knowledge a lake of nectar, by bathing in which the illimitable is obtained. The divine Guru is the creator, the remover of all sin. The divine Guru is the purifier of the impure. The divine Guru is from the beginning, from the beginning of time and in every age. The divine Guru is the spell of God's name by the utterance of which man is saved. O God, mercifully bring me, foolish and sinner that I am, into the company of the Guru, so that by clinging to him I may be saved. Nanak boweth to the divine Guru, the true Guru, the supreme Brahm, the supreme God. Slok 1. God himself created and caused men to act. He himself is capable of acting. Nanak, there is one pervading God. There neither was nor shall be another. Pari 1. O A M, I bow to the one God and to the saint, the true Guru. The formless one is the beginning, the middle, and the end. He himself is rest. He himself hath his seat in bliss. He himself heareth his praises. He himself createth himself. He is his own father, his own mother. He himself is small. He himself is large. Nanak, his play cannot be understood. O God, compassionate to the poor, be merciful, that my heart may become the dust of the saints' feet. Slok to the one God is without form, and yet with form. He is without qualities, and yet possesseth all qualities. To find the one God as one, Nanak, and the one God as manifold. Pari two O A M the one God the great Guru created all things he hath strung them all on one string the three qualities are separately diffused instead of possessing no attributes God now appeareth possessing all attributes he made creation of all forms from the increase of mental desires resulteth transmigration he himself is free from both birth and death nanak he hath no end or limit slok three there are rich and fortunate who possess the hoard of the truth and the stock and trade of god's name nanak the true and pure name is obtained from the saints pari three s true 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 is he there is nothing separate from the true being it is he whom he putteth into his asylum who obtaineth his protection remembereth him singeth his praises and causeth others to hear him doubt and error in no way enter him his glory appeareth manifest nanak is ever a sacrifice unto the holy man who attaineth to this distinction slok four why art thou crying out for wealth all worldly love is false all they who are without the name nanak are as dust pari four d h the dust of thy servants feet is pure o god blessed are they whose souls desire it they want not wealth they desire not even paradise they are fascinated with the love of the very dear one and the dust of the saints feet why should worldly affairs affect those who forsake not the one god or go elsewhere to worship he in whose heart god hath put the name o nanak is a perfect saint of god slok five it is not by adopting various religious garbs or by knowledge or meditation or by obstinacy that god is obtained by any one saith nanak he to whom god is merciful is a saint and possessor of divine knowledge pari five in g divine knowledge consisteth not in words uttered by the mouth nor in extracting different species of arguments from the shastars he possesseth divine knowledge in whose heart god is firmly fixed it is not by discussion he becometh capable he who is strict in his obedience to god's order possesseth divine knowledge heat and cold are all the same to him the possessor of divine knowledge to whom god extendeth mercy meditateth on god o nanak under the guru's instruction slok six men come into the world but without knowing god they are as beasts and cattle nanak the holy man on whose forehead such destiny hath been written knoweth god pari six the fetus reversed in the pit of the womb performeth penance and continueth to remember god at every breath man then cometh into this world to meet the one god but fascinating maya fascinateth him at his birth he becometh entangled with what he must abandon and in his soul forgetteth the giver he to whom thou showest favour o lord of the earth will not forget thee saith nanak either here or there 
slok seven man is born by god's order he dieth by god's order no one is exempt from his order transmigration is at an end for him nanak in whose heart god abideth pari seven this soul hath dwelt in many wombs immersed in sweet illusion it was entangled in them this illusion hath reduced the world to subjection and infused a love for itself into every heart o oh, my friend tell us of some device by which we may escape this dangerous illusion maya approacheth not him o nanak whom god mercifully associateth with the saints slok eight god himself hath appointed good and bad acts for man to perform but man the brute indulgeth in pride nanak what can he do without god pari eight it is god alone who causeth man to act it is he himself who diffuseth demerits and merits man performeth the duties of the station in which god hath placed him in this world and receiveth what god conferreth upon him no one knoweth god's limit it is only what he doeth that occurreth it is from him alone the whole creation hath proceeded nanak he himself is the arranger slok nine man continueth to love women pleasures and the tumult of the passions things fleeting as the dye of the safflower nanak take god's protection and thy selfishness shall depart pari nine o my soul the more thou lovest anything except god the greater thine entanglements the apostates do the very things which in every way hinder their emancipation they who while practising pride continue to perform ceremonial works bear a crushing load when there is no love for the name such works are sinful they who are in love with delicious maya are bound by death's rope deluded by error they know not that god is ever with them they shall not be acquitted when their accounts are examined a mud wall can never be clean he to whom god giveth knowledge o nanak becometh holy and his understanding pure slok ten they who associate with the saints and who are dyed with the deep dye of the one god's love o nanak shall have their fetters cut off pari ten are dye this heart of thine with god's love repeat god's name with thy tongue so shall no one address thee rudely in god's court every one shall honour thee saying come sit down in that palace thou shalt obtain thy dwelling where there is no transmigration or destruction god's wealth is in the house of him nanak on whose forehead such destiny was recorded in the beginning slok eleven the sins of covetousness falsehood and worldly love are committed by the foolish and the blind slaves of maya o nanak they love an offensive smell pari eleven l they are entangled and steeped in the juice of evil passions they are intoxicated with the wine of mental pride and worldly love and from this worldly love resulteth transmigration as god ordereth so man acteth there is no one imperfect and no one perfect there is no one wise and no one foolish where god appointed men there they perform their duties nanak the lord is always unaffected by mundane affairs slok twelve my darling god the lord of the earth is deep profound and unfathomable nanak there is none like unto him he is unconcerned pari twelve l there is none equal to him he himself is the only one there shall be none other he is now and ever hath been no one hath found his limit he is contained as fully in an ant as in an elephant he is famous known everywhere he to whom he hath given his love repeateth his name o nanak under the guru's instruction slok thirteen he who hath tasted the savour of god naturally enjoyeth his love nanak blessed is the advent of such into the world he is acceptable to god pari thirteen deem fortunate the birth of him whose tongue repeateth god's praises he goeth and sitteth with the saints and night and day meditateth on the name with love he to whom god showeth compassion and mercy is at his birth endued with the name he has been born once but shall not again enter the womb nanak he shall be absorbed in the sight of god slok fourteen nanak be absorbed in the name by the repetition of which the heart becometh happy worldly love is erased and there is an end to pain sorrow and longing for earthly pleasures pari fourteen why rid thyself of evil inclinations and duality relinquishing them sleep in peace and composure why go and take the protection of the saints by whose assistance thou shalt cross this terrible ocean 
why he who taketh the one name and stringeth it in his heart shall not be born again why by the support of the guru thou shalt not lose thy human birth nanak he in whose heart the one god dwelleth hath obtained happiness slok fifteen he who is our friend in this world and the next dwelleth within our souls and bodies the perfect guru teacheth us o nanak to utter god's name continually pari fifteen night and day remember him who will in the end be thy helper these worldly pleasures only last for a few days every one must leave them and depart who hath a mother father son daughter home or wife thou canst take none of them with thee amass such things as are not perishable so shalt thou depart to thine own home with honour they who in this cow age sing god's praises in the company of the saints o nanak shall not come again into the world Shlok sixteen, though one be very beautiful, of high birth, wise, a divine, in words, and wealthy, yet shall he be deemed as dead, O Nanak, if he have no love for God. Pari sixteen, in G, even though man be versed in the six Shastar systems, and perform the exercises of Purak, Kambak, and Rechak, even though he practice divine knowledge meditation pilgrimages and ablutions only eat food cooked by himself live apart from human contact and dwell in the forest yet if he feel no love for god's name in his heart every act of his shall only be brief superior to him deem thou the pariah o nanak in whose heart god dwelleth slok seventeen man wandereth about in the four quarters and the ten directions of the world bearing the mark of deeds done weal and woe deliverance and transmigration nanak are according to man's written record pari seventeen k god is the creator and cause of everything no one can efface that written record what god once doeth cannot be altered the creator erreth not to one he himself pointeth out the right way another he causeth to wander sorrowfully in the wilderness he playeth his own play whatever he giveth nanak man receiveth slok eighteen various and countless people o nanak repeat god's name men eat spend and enjoy themselves but god's storehouses fail not them pari eighteen k h with that all-powerful one there is no stint he continueth to give what he deemeth right to give wheresoever man may go the wealth of the name is the treasure from which the saints spend it is their capital with patience humility joy and composure they continue to repeat god's praises they to whom god is merciful sport and enjoy themselves they who have god's name for their wealth in their homes are ever wealthy and of good report they on whom god looketh with favour suffer not trouble or pain or torture nanak they who are pleasing to god are successful slok nineteen calculate and consider in thy mind that men must assuredly depart the desire for transitory things is effaced by the guru's instruction only in the name is their health pari nineteen g sing god's praises at every breath and ever repeat his name why repose confidence in thy body delay not my friend there is no reliance on childhood youth or old age the time is not known when the noose of death will fall upon thee behold the wise the meditative and the clever even they remain not here the fool clingeth to the things which the rest of the world leaveth behind he on whose forehead such destiny hath been written continueth to remember god by the guru whose favour nanak fortunate is her advent who is the spouse of the beloved slok twenty i have searched all the shastars and veds they tell of nothing save this that the one god was in the beginning in the beginning of time is now nanak and ever shall be pari twenty g h put this into thy heart that there is none but god there was none and there shall be none he is everywhere contained thou shalt be absorbed in him o man when thou enterest his asylum in the cow age the name is the real atonement for sins after toiling and moiling in superstitious exercises many regret it without devotion to god how can stability be obtained he to whom the divine guru gave the great nectarious essence hath stirred it up o nanak and drunk it slok twenty one god has counted and fixed for man all his days and breathings these cannot be increased or diminished the length of a sesame seed nanak they who desire to live on in error and worldly love are fools pari twenty one n g death shall seize him who hath fallen away from god 
he seeth not god who dwelleth in his heart and he shall suffer many transmigrations divine knowledge and meditation shall come to him to whom god mercifully granteth them no one shall be emancipated by making calculations the frail pitcher shall burst at last only they who utter god's name their lives long really live they become distinguished nanak and not obscure slok twenty two in thy heart meditate on god's lotus feet and its inverted lotus shall bloom god himself will appear o nanak under the saint's instruction pari twenty two c h blessed blessed that day and auspicious that conjuncture when i cling to the guru's lotus feet after wandering in the four corners and the ten directions of the globe i through the favour of god obtained a sight of him through excellent meditation all duality is removed my mind hath become pure by association with the saints nanak he to whose eyes the salve of divine knowledge hath been applied shall forget his anxieties and behold the one god slok twenty three the breast becometh cool and the heart happy by singing the chant of god's praises show such mercy o god that nanak may become thy slave of slaves pari twenty three c h h we are thy slave boys yea we are the water carriers of the slave of thy slaves c h h we are the dust of thy saints feet show us thy mercy o god we have abandoned all devices and stratagems and propped up our souls with the prop of the saints the puppet of ashes whom the saints assist shall nanak obtain the supreme state slok twenty four man is greatly elated by his strength and power and thereby diseaseth his frail body through his pride he is entangled nanak but the name will release him pari twenty four j when a man thinketh something of himself he is caught like a parrot in a trap when he thinketh he is a saint and possessed of divine knowledge god will show him no respect whatever in the next world when he thinketh he is a preacher he merely roameth over the earth like a traitor he who removeth his pride by association with the saints o nanak meeteth god slok twenty five rise at dawn utter the name yea night and day worship god thus shalt thou feel no anxiety nanak and all thy troubles shall vanish pari twenty five j h by occupying thyself with god's name all thy griefs shall be effaced the perverse man whose heart feeleth worldly love shall die in excessive grief o my soul when thou hearest the ambrosial word in the company of saints thine impurities and sins shall depart nanak from him to whom god is merciful lust wrath and other evil passions shall depart slok twenty six though you make efforts of various kinds you shall not have eternal life my friends you shall have eternal life saith nanak if you repeat god's name with love pari twenty six in why know for a certainty that these bodies of yours which you love shall perish even though you make calculations you cannot count how many have departed whatever you behold shall perish to what shall you attach yourselves know this in your hearts as certain that love of the world is false he who knoweth this is a saint and removed from error him with whom god is pleased he extricateth from the blind well he whose arm is omnipotent is able to create the world nanak praise him who uniteth the soul with himself slok twenty seven by serving the saints the bonds of transmigration are broken and man obtaineth rest nanak may i never forget the sovereign god the treasury of excellences pari twenty seven serve the one god to whom no one appealeth in vain if he dwell in thy soul body mouth and heart thou shalt obtain whatever thou desirest he to whom the holy man is kind shall obtain the service by which god's court shall be won if god be compassionate thou shalt abide in the company of the saints i have searched in many lands but found no happiness without the name the ministers of death shall receive from him who joineth the society of the saints again and again i sacrifice myself to the saints through whom o nanak the sins of old are blotted out slok twenty eight they with whom god is pleased are not stopped at his gate supremely blessed are they nanak whom god hath made his own 
Pari 28. Th. He who, having abandoned all else, attacheth himself to the one God, afflicteth no one's heart. They who are buffeted by worldly love are dead and find nowhere comfort. They who abide in the company of the saints are refreshed. The ambrosial name is sweet to their souls. The soul of the man who pleaseth his Lord, O Nanak, becometh refreshed. Slok 29. Prostrations and obeisance many times to thee, O God, who possesseth all contrivances and art omnipotent. Reach me thy hand, O God, saith Nanak, and save me from wavering. Pari 29. D. O my soul, this is not thy dwelling. Know that place where thy dwelling is. Learn from the Guru's instruction the way to that dwelling. Man undergoeth toil to erect a dwelling here, which will not go an inch with him. He on whom the omnipotent God looketh with favour, knoweth the way to that dwelling. That dwelling is permanent and true, and is obtained in the company of the saints. Nanak, they who find it, waver not. Slok 30. When Dharm Raj beginneth to smite, none can restrain him. Nanak, they who repeat God's name in association with the saints shall be saved. Pari 30. D. H. Why goest thou about searching? Search in thine own heart. God dwelleth with thee. Why wanderest thou from forest to forest? Throw down thy heap of terrible pride in the company of the saints. So shalt thou find rest, abide in peace, and be blessed with the sight of God. He in whom that heap is shall be born and die, and suffer the pain of the womb. He who is steeped in worldly love and entangled with egotism shall come and go. I have now gradually fallen under the protection of the saints. God hath cut the meshes of sorrow, Nanak, and united me with himself. Slok 31. Where the saints ever repeat God's name and praises. Dharmraj saith, Approach not there, O my ministers. If you do, neither you nor I shall escape. Pari 31. In he who conquereth his own heart is victorious in the battle. He who dieth fighting with his pride and worldly love is blessed. He who effaceth his pride shall under the perfect Guru's instruction be dead while alive. He shall conquer his heart, meet God, and obtain a robe of honour for his bravery. He shall consider nothing his own. The one God shall be his prop and support. He shall continue night and day to remember the supreme and infinite God. He shall so act as to make his heart the dust of all men's feet. He shall understand God's order, be ever happy, Nanak, and obtain what was destined for him. Slok 32. I will devote my body, soul, and wealth to him who causeth me to meet God. Nanak, my doubts and fears shall then be dispelled, and death shall no longer look for me. Pari 32. T. Love him who is the treasury of excellences, the sovereign God. Thou shalt then obtain the fruit thy heart desireth, and thy yearning shall depart. He in whose heart the name dwelleth shall have no fear on the road to death. His understanding shall become enlightened. He shall obtain salvation and a place in God's court. Nor wealth, nor mansion, nor youth, nor empire shall depart with thee. In the company of the saints continue to remember God's name. It is this that shall avail thee. There shall be no more burning when God himself removeth thy fever. Nanak, God himself protecteth us. He is our mother and father. Slok 33. The perverse have grown weary of their various toils, yet they are not satisfied, and their thirst is not allayed. They shall die in the midst of their hoarding, Nanak, and their wealth shall not depart with them. Pari 33. Th. None is permanent. Why stretchest thou thy feet forward? In thine efforts after wealth alone thou committest great fraud and deceit. Thou toilest to fill thy purse, O fool, and then fallest down weary. At the last moment that shall not avail thy soul. Thou shalt obtain permanence by worshipping God and accepting the saint's instruction. Ever love the one God, that is the true love. He is the cause of causes. All contrivances are in his hand alone. We remain at the post to which thou, O God, hast appointed us. Saith Nanak, the creature is helpless. Slok 34. His slaves have seen the one God who giveth everything. They continue to remember him at every breath. Nanak, a sight of him is their support. 
Pari 34. D. The giver is one. He giveth to all. In his giving there is no stint. Innumerable are his full storehouses. The giver liveth for ever. O oh, my foolish mind, why forgettest thou him? No man is at fault. My friend, it is God who forged the fetters of Maya's illusion. The holy men whose pain he himself removeth shall, O oh, Nanak, be satisfied. Slok 35. O oh, my soul, grasp the prop of the one God, lay aside thy hopes in others, ponder on the name, and thine affairs shall succeed. Pari 35. D. H. If thou abide with the saints, the wanderings of thy heart shall then cease. If God himself bestow mercy from the beginning, the mind shall become enlightened. They have the true capital and are the true traders, whose stock and trade is the name, and who deal in God. Patience, glory, and honor are for him who attentively heareth God's name. The holy man in whose heart God is contained shall, O Nanak, obtain greatness. Slok 36. Nanak, the perfect guru, hath taught that for him who in the company of the saints repeateth the name with his tongue and with love in his heart there is no hell. Pari 36. In. They in whose souls and bodies the name abideth shall not fall into hell. They who under the guru's instruction repeat the name which is a treasure shall not perish by the poison of mammon. No refusal awaiteth him to whom the guru hath given the spell of the name. God's name, which is full of nectar, is the treasury of wealth. Nanak, unbeaten musical instruments sound for him who repeateth it. Slok 37. When I abandoned deceit, worldly love, and sin, the great supreme being preserved mine honor. Nanak, adore him who hath no end or limit. Pari 37. P. The sovereign God is beyond estimate. His limit cannot be ascertained. He is the purifier of sinners and inaccessible. Millions of sinners who meet the saints and repeat the ambrosial name become pure. He whom thou thyself preservest, O Lord of the earth, loseth all deception, fraud, and worldly love. God is emperor. He alone is entitled to the umbrella over his head. Nanak, there is no other sovereign. Slok 38. By restraining the mind, death's nooses are cut. Transmigration is an, at an end, and victory obtained. Nanak, permanence is obtained from the Guru, and transmigration effaced for ever and ever. Pari 38. Ph. O soul, thou hast returned after long wanderings. In this Kal age thou hast obtained a human body so difficult to obtain. Thou shalt not again have the present opportunity. Repeat God's name, then death's noose shall be cut away, and there shall be no transmigration for thee. Utter the name of the one God, that is the real utterance. Have mercy, O God the Creator, and unite poor Nanak with thyself. Slok 39. Hear thou my supplication, supreme being, compassionate to the poor and lord of the earth. Nanak, the dust of the saints' feet is to me comfort, wealth, great enjoyment, and pleasure. Pari 39. B. It is he who knoweth God who is a Brahman. He is a Vaishnav who is pious and accepteth the pure religion. He is a hero who effaceth his wickedness. Nothing evil may approach him. Man is bound by the fetters of his own pride, and yet blind that he is, he imputeth blame to others. Discussion and subterfuges are all of no avail. O God, he whom thou causest to know thee, saith Nanak, knoweth thee. Slok 40. Heartily worship God who is the destroyer of fear and the remover of sin and sorrow. He in whose heart he dwelleth through the companionship of the saints shall never again, O Nanak, wander in transmigration. Pari 40. B. H. Dispel thine errors. This world is all a dream. In error are demigods, goddesses, and gods. In error are sids, strivers, and so is Brahma. In mazes of error man is ruined. This world is difficult to cross and very dangerous. The pious who have effaced error, fear, and worldly love shall, Nanak, obtain supreme happiness. Slok 41. Through wealth the mind wavereth in many ways and becometh entangled. He whom thou, O God, preservest from asking for it, saith Nanak, loveth the name. Pari 41. M. He who asketh is silly. The bestower who is wise continueth to bestow. What God giveth, he giveth once for all. O foolish man, why callest thou aloud? When thou prayest, thou prayest for worldly things, from which happiness resulteth to no one. If thou pray for anything, then pray for the one God, by whom, saith Nanak, thou shalt be saved. 
slok forty two their wisdom is perfect and they are distinguished in whose hearts is the perfect guru's instruction nanak they who know their god are fortunate pari forty two m he who knoweth god's secret is satisfied on meeting the company of the saints he deemeth woe and weal as the same he is exempted from entering hell or heaven the man who knoweth god's secret dwelleth in the world and yet is apart from it he is as it were the eminent being who filleth every heart he who is not entangled by mammon nanak hath found happiness in god's love slok forty three o my friends allies and adherents hear me there is no emancipation without god nanak he who falleth at the guru's feet hath all his fetters cut away pari forty three why though man make efforts of many kinds how far can he succeed without the one name the efforts by which emancipation is obtained are made in the company of the saints the salvation which every one holdeth to cannot be obtained without the repetition of god's name god is capable of giving salvation o master preserve us men without merits nanak that man's intellect becometh enlightened whom god himself instructeth in thought word and deed slok forty four think of thyself be angry with no one abide humble in the world nanak and through god's favour thou shalt be saved pari forty four are become the dust of every one's feet abandon pride and the sins to thy debit shall be blotted out thou shalt be victorious in the struggle o brother and acceptable in god's court if under the guru's instruction thou fix thine attention on god's name thy sins shall gradually be blotted out by the perfect guru's peerless word nanak they on whom god and the guru have conferred favours are dyed with the love of god's name and intoxicated with its savour slok forty five the diseases of covetousness falsehood and the other deadly sins infest this body but the pious who drink the medicine of god's nectar o nanak shall be healed pari forty five l he o god to whom thou administerest medicine is at once cured of his sorrows and pains that medicine is the name whosoever heartily loveth it shall not even dream of disease the medicine of god's name is in every heart my brethren except the perfect guru no one knoweth how to prepare it he whose way of life the perfect guru hath appointed o nanak shall never again sicken slok forty six god is everywhere there is no place without him he is with thee nanak whether thou art at home or abroad what concealest thou from him pari forty six w bear not enmity to any one god is contained in every heart he is contained in sea and land by the favour of the guru some rare person singeth his praises enmity and jealousy shall depart from the heart of him who under the guru's instruction heareth god's praises nanak he who under the guru's instruction repeateth god's name shall be released from all caste and caste marks slok forty seven the stupid and ignorant infidel passeth his life in egoism in agony he dieth as one thirsty o nanak and thus obtaineth his deserts pari forty seven r he who by association with the saints worshippeth the name which is the essence of religious acts shall not engage in strife he in whose heart the beautiful one dwelleth shall have his strife erased and ended it is the ignorant perverse man in whose heart the sin of pride dwelleth who harboureth strife nanak when the holy man instructeth all strife ceaseth in a moment slok forty eight o my soul grasp the protection of the holy man lay aside thy phrases and devices the guru's instruction nanak dwelleth in the heart of him on whose forehead good fortune was written pari forty eight s h weary of repeating the shastars the simritis and the veds we have now o god entered thine asylum in my researches i have come to this conclusion that without worshipping god there is no deliverance we constantly make mistakes thou art omnipotent infinite and illimitable o compassionate one protect us who have fallen under thy protection saith nanak o god we are thy children slok forty nine when pride is erased happiness resulteth the mind and body are healed nanak and he who is worthy of praise becometh manifest 
pari forty nine k h thoroughly praise god who in an instant can fill to the brim what is empty when a mortal is thoroughly humble he night and day repeateth the name of the eternal god the lord giveth happiness to those who please him the infinite supreme being is so potent that he can in a moment pardon numberless sins nanak the lord is merciful slok fifty verily i say unto thee hear me o my soul fall under the sovereign god's protection cast aside all thy phrases and devices nanak and god will unite thee with himself pari fifty s o silly man lay aside devices the lord is not pleased with tricks and orders even though thou practise a thousand forms of cleverness not one shall avail thee day and night repeat his name o my soul which will go with thee he whom god himself applieth to the saint's service nanak shall never feel unhappy slok fifty one happiness resulteth from uttering god's name and keeping it in mind nanak god provideth all things and is everywhere equally contained pari fifty one lo god filleth the hearts of all men are continually born but the guru's wisdom destroyeth their pain he is happy who hath escaped from pride where there is no pride there is god by the power of the company of the saints the pain of birth and death is removed god becometh merciful to those who by association with the saints lovingly fix the name of the compassionate one in their hearts nanak everything hath proceeded from god without him no one hath accomplished anything slok fifty two looking to his account man shall never be released since he he erreth every moment saith nanak o thou pardoner pardon us and save us pari fifty two man is disloyal and a sinner he is a stranger to god and of little wisdom he knoweth not the essence of all things who gave him soul body and happiness for the sake of worldly gain he goeth searching in every direction god the giver the bestower he treasureth not in his heart for an instant greed falsehood sin worldly love these things he harboureth in his heart he passeth his life with great adulterers thieves and slanderers if pleasing to thee o god pardon the counterfeit along with the genuine saith nanak o supreme god if it please thee stones shall float on water slok fifty three eating drinking playing and laughing have we wandered in many births o god rescue us from the terrible ocean prayeth nanak we rely on thee pari fifty three having both enjoyed and suffered the pain of many births we have returned as human beings troubles are removed by meeting the holy man and being absorbed in the true guru's instruction man adopting contentment amasseth truth and liveth upon the ambrosia of the name genuine is the mercy of god i have found my haven in joy and happiness my cargo hath safely arrived i have had great profit and i return home with honour genuine is the consolation the guru gave me i have met god on my return god himself acteth and acteth he was in the beginning and shall be in the end nanak praise him who is contained in every heart slok fifty four o ocean of mercy compassionate god we have entered thine asylum nanak is happy in giving the one word god a place in his heart pari fifty four god holdeth the three worlds by letters through letters the veds are studied through letters the shastars the simridis and the purans through letters hymns discourses and sermons through letters is the way of escape from fear and error through letters religious and worldly acts are performed and pure faith obtained the whole visible world is contained in letters but nanak the supreme being is beyond letters slok fifty five o inaccessible one thy hand holdeth the pen which writeth man's destiny on his forehead thou of incomparable form art contained in all things man's tongue cannot describe thy praises nanak on beholding thee is fascinated and devoted unto thee pari fifty five o eternal supreme god indestructible destroyer of sin o all-pervading contained in everything destroyer of grief lord of excellences formless one o man's companion o thou without the three human attributes prop of all supporter of the earth o ocean of excellences who hast ever discrimination o god most remote thou art wast and shalt be o thou constant companion of the saints support of the supportless i am thy slave i am without merits no merit is mine saith nanak grant me the gift of thy name that i may string it and keep it in my heart slok 
the divine guru is my mother the divine guru is my father the divine guru is my lord and supreme god the divine guru is my companion and dispeller of spiritual ignorance the divine guru is my relation and my brother the divine guru is the giver and the teacher of god's name the divine guru hath the spell that cannot be counteracted the divine guru is peace truth and the image of wisdom the divine guru is a philosopher's stone by whose touch man is saved the divine guru is a place of pilgrimage his divine knowledge a lake of nectar by bathing in which the illimitable is obtained the divine guru is the creator the remover of all sin the divine guru is the purifier of the impure the divine guru is from the beginning from the beginning of time and in every age the divine guru is the spell of god's name by whose utterance man is saved o god mercifully bring me foolish and sinner that i am into the company of the guru so that by clinging to him i may be saved nanak boweth to the divine guru the true guru the supreme brahm the supreme god End of section 14section fifteen of the sikh religion its gurus sacred writings and authors volume three this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox dot org recording by padi alawalia ottawa the sikh religion its gurus sacred writings and authors volume three by max arthur macauliffe Section 15, Sukmani, Part 1, Sloks 1 to 8 Sukmani, Slok 1 I bow to the primal Guru. I bow to the Guru of the primal age. I bow to the true Guru. I bow to the holy divine Guru. Ashtapadi 1 Remember, remember God. By remembering Him you shall obtain happiness and erase from your hearts trouble and affliction. Remember the praises of the one all-supporting God. Numberless persons utter God's various names. Investigate in the Veds, the Purans, and the Simritis, men have made out the one word which is God's name. His praises cannot be recounted, who treasureth God's name in his heart even for a moment. Saith Nanak, Save me, O Lord, with those who are desirous of one glance of thee. In this Sukmani is the name of God, which like ambrosia bestoweth happiness, and giveth peace to the hearts of the saints. By remembering God, man doth not again enter the womb. By remembering God, the tortures of death disappear. By remembering God, death is removed. By remembering God, enemies retreat. By remembering God, no obstacles are met. By remembering God, we are watchful night and day. By remembering God, Fear is not felt. By remembering God, sorrow troubleth not. Men remember God in the company of the saints. Nanak, by the love of God, all wealth is obtained. By remembering God we obtain wealth, supernatural power, and the nine treasures. By remembering God we obtain divine knowledge, meditation, and the essence of wisdom. Remembrance of God is the real devotion, penance, and worship. By remembering God, the conception of duality is dispelled. By remembering God, we obtain the advantages of bathing at places of pilgrimage. By remembering God, we are honoured at His court. By remembering God, we become reconciled to His will. By remembering God, men's lives are very profitable. They whom He hath caused to do so remember Him. Nanak, touch the feet of such persons. To remember God is the most exalted of all duties. By remembering God, many are saved. By remembering God, thirst is quenched. By remembering God, man knoweth all things. By remembering God, there is no fear of death. By remembering God, our desires are fulfilled. By remembering God, mental impurity is removed, and the ambrosial name filleth the heart. God abideth on the tongue of the saints, whose most humble slave Nanak is. They who remember God are wealthy. They who remember God are honoured. They who remember God are acceptable. They who remember God are distinguished. 
They who remember God feel not want. They who remember God rule the world. They who remember God dwell in happiness. They who remember God live for ever. They to whom God showeth mercy ever remember him. Nanak prayeth for the dust of such men's feet. They who remember God are philanthropic. I am ever devoted to those who remember God. The faces of those who remember God look bright. They who remember God pass their lives in bliss. They who remember God chasten their hearts. The ways of those who remember God are holy. They who remember God feel extreme joy. They who remember God dwell near him, and by the favour of the saints are watchful night and day. Nanak, meditation on God is obtained by complete good fortune. By remembering God everything is accomplished. By remembering God man never grieveth. By remembering God man uttereth his praises. By remembering God man is easily absorbed in him. By remembering God man findeth an immovable seat. By remembering God the lotus of man's heart bloometh. By remembering God man heareth the unbeaten melody. The happiness which is obtained by remembering God hath no end or limit. They to whom God is merciful remember him. Nanak seeketh the protection of such men. By remembering God his saints have become distinguished. By remembering God the Veds were composed. By remembering God men have obtained supernatural power, continence and generosity. By remembering God even the lowly are known in every direction. By remembering God the whole earth is supported. Remember, remember God the cause of causes. For the remembrance of God he created the whole world. Where God is remembered, there is God himself. Nanak, the pious whom God hath mercifully instructed, have obtained the boon of remembering him. Slok 2 O thou destroyer of the pain and grief of the distressed, Lord of every heart, thyself without a Lord, I have come under thy protection. O God, be with Nanak. Ashtapadi 2 where man hath neither mother, nor father, nor son, nor friend, nor brother, there, O my soul, God's name shall be with thee and assist thee. Where the very terrible ministers of death crush thee, there the name of God alone shall go with thee. Where there are very great obstacles, the name of God will remove them in a moment. Thou shalt not be saved even by many expiations. It is the name of God which removeth millions of sins. O my soul, utter the name of God under the Guru's instruction. Thus shalt thou, saith Nanak, have manifold joys. The king of the whole world is miserable. Only he is happy who uttereth God's name. Even though there be millions of entanglements, by uttering the name of God we shall be free from them all. The various pleasures of the world allay not our thirst, but by pondering on God's name it is quenched. On the road on which man goeth alone, the name of God is with him to cheer him. Ever ponder on such a name in thy hearts, and under the Guru's instruction, Nanak, thou shalt obtain the supreme state. Even though thou have millions of arms, thou shalt not be saved. But if thou utter the name, thou shalt be saved. When many obstacles harass thee, the name of God will at once save thee. Man dieth and is born in many births, but he shall obtain rest by uttering the name. The soul is defiled by filthy pride filth, which is never washed away. But the name of God cleanseth all impurity. Repeat such a name, O my soul, with love. Nanak, it is obtained in the company of the saints. On the way where the miles cannot be counted, the name of God there shall be thy provision. On the way where there is pitch darkness, the name of God shall accompany and light thee. On the way where nobody knoweth thee, the name of God shall be there to recognize thee. Where there is very terrible heat and great sunshine, there the name of God shall be a shadow over thee. O man, where thirst tormenteth thee, there, saith Nanak, the name of God shall rain nectar on thee. Uttering the name is the business of the pious. It giveth peace to the hearts of the saints. God's name is the shelter of his servants. By God's name millions have been saved. The saints day and night praise God. The pious use God's name as their medicine. The name of God is a treasure of the holy. The Supreme Being gave this gift to man. Nanak, 
the pursuit of divine knowledge is the rule of the holy whose souls and bodies are dyed with the love of the one god the name of god is the way of salvation for his servant the food of god's name satisfieth his servant the name of god is his servant's beauty and delight by uttering god's name harm never befalleth one god's name is his servant's glory from god's name man obtaineth lustre God's name is enjoyment and salvation to his servants. By uttering God's name, man is never separated from him. Nanak, every demigod worshippeth him who is dyed with the worship of God's name. God's name is wealth and treasure to his servants. God himself gave his name as a boon to man. God's name is to his servants a powerful stronghold. God's servant knoweth naught but God's glory. The man of God who is the warp and the wolf is dyed with God's love. In deep meditation man is intoxicated with the essence of the name. During the eight watches of the day the man of God repeateth his name. The saints of God are distinguished and not obscure. The worship of God conferreth salvation upon many. Nanak, how many shall be saved with holy men? This name of God is as the tree which groweth in heaven. The singing of God's praises is as the gifts of Camden. Speaking of God is the best of all utterances. By hearing the name, pain and sorrow are removed. The praise of the name dwelleth in the hearts of the pious. By their influence all sins depart. It is by great good fortune association with the pious is obtained. It is by serving them men meditateth on God's name. There is nothing equal to God's name, Nanak. A few men obtain it by the Guru's instruction. Slok 3 I have seen many Shastas, many Simritis, and searched them all. They are, Nanak, not equal to God's priceless name. Ashtapadi 3 Muttering spells, doing penance, pretended knowledge, all meditation, the exposition of the six Shastas and of the Simritis, the practice of yog, the performance of vain religious ceremonies, the abandonment of everything, wandering in the forest, superstitious efforts of various descriptions, alms-giving, the sacrifice of horn, the bestowal of many jewels, cutting pieces off one's body and making them a burnt offering, the performance of fasting and vows of many kinds, all are not equal to the contemplation of God's name, Nanak, even if it be only once repeated as directed by the Guru. Were one to wander through the nine continents of the earth, live for a long time, and become a great anchoret and penitent. Were one to burn oneself in the fire, make gifts of gold, excellent horses and lands, perform the Nivali feat, adopt many yogi attitudes, adopt the Jain mortifications, make great spiritual efforts, and cut one's body into pieces, even then the filth of pride would not depart. There is nothing equal to God's name. Nanak, by the utterance of the name under the Guru, Man obtaineth salvation. Even though the soul leave the body at a place of pilgrimage, yet if it retain worldly desires, pride and arrogance will not depart from it. Even though one practice purification day and night, the filth of the heart will not leave the body. Even though man subject his body to much mortification, evil passions will never abandon his heart. Even though we wash his temporary body with much water, how can a wall of mud become clean? O oh, my soul, exalted is the name of God. Nanak, the worst sinners have been saved by the name. By too much cleverness man shall feel the fear of death. Even by various efforts his thirst shall not be satisfied. Even by adopting various religious garbs, the fire of his worldly love is not quenched. Even by millions of other religious efforts, man is not acceptable in God's court. He over whom worldly love hath spread its net shall not escape in heaven or hell. Death heedeth naught but the praises of God. He punisheth all other works of man. By repeating God's name grief is dispelled. Nanak uttereth the name without effort. Let him who prayeth for the four boons apply himself to the service of holy men. Let him who desireth to remove his troubles continually sing the name of God in his heart. Let him who desireth honour for himself renounce pride by association with holy men. 
Let him who feareth transmigration come under the protection of holy men. Nanak is a sacrifice, a sacrifice unto those who thirst for the sight of God. Among all men foremost is he who, by association with the pious, effaceth pride. He who deemeth himself lowly shall be deemed the most exalted of all. They whose minds are the dust of all men's feet shall see God's name in their inmost hearts. They who expel evil from their hearts shall regard the whole world as their friend. The holy man who looketh upon weal and woe as the same shall not, Nanak, be affected by good or evil. To him who hath no wealth, O God, thy name is wealth. To him who hath no home, thy name is a home. To him who hath no honour, thy name is an honour. Thou givest gifts to all persons. Thou, O Lord, actest and causest to act. It is only thou who hast the secrets of all hearts, who knowest thine own condition and limit. Thou art, O God, thine own beloved. It is thou alone who canst praise thyself. Saith Nanak, no one else knoweth thy praises. Of all devotion, the best devotion is to utter the name of God and do pious works. Of all rites, the best right is to remove the filth of evil inclinations by association with saints. Of all efforts, the best effort is ever heartily to repeat God's name. Of all speech, the divine speech is to utter with the tongue God's praises heard from the Guru. Of all places, that is the best place, Nanak, where God's name dwelleth in the heart. Slok 4. O unworthy and foolish man, ever remember God. Fix thy heart upon him, Nanak, who made thee. This will avail thee in the end. Ashtapadi 4. Mortal, think upon the goodness of God, what thine origin is, and what thou appearest now, that God who made thee, fashioned thee, and adorned thee who preserved thee in the fire of the womb, who in thine infancy gave thee milk to drink, in thy youth food, comfort, and intelligence, in thine old age relations to watch over thee, and who put food into thy mouth as thou wast seated. Unworthy man, however, value not these favours. If thou, O God, pardon him, then, O Nanak, he shall be acceptable. Thou feelest an affection for others and abandonest him by whose favour thou dwellest in comfort on the earth, and rejoicest with children, brothers, friends, and wives, by whose favour thou drinkest cool water, and the pleasant winds and the priceless fire are at thy service, by whose favour thou enjoyest all pleasures, and livest with all the necessaries of life, who gave thee hands, feet, ears, eyes, and a tongue, such sins of ingratitude attached to blind and foolish man, Nanak prayeth, Save us, O Lord, from such sins. The ignorant man loveth not him who protecteth him in the beginning and the end. The fool fixeth not his heart on him by service to whom the wealth of the world is obtained. The Lord who is ever and ever present is thought by the blind to be far away. The stupid and foolish forget him by service to whom honour is obtained at his court. Man erreth ever and ever. Nanak, the Infinite One, is the only preserver. Man abandoneth a jewel and loveth a kori. He renounceth truth and occupieth himself with falsehood. What he shall have to part with he deemeth enduring. The thought of death which is to happen he putteth away from him. He troubleth himself about what he must part with. He spurneth the succorer who abideth with him. He washeth away and removeth the coating of sandal and like a donkey, conceiveth a love for ashes to roll in. Man hath fallen into a terrible blind well. Saith Nanak, O merciful God, extricate him. He is only man in appearance. His acts are those of a brute. He beguileth people day and night. He weareth a religious dress, but within him is the filth of worldly love. However much he try, he cannot conceal his sins. Before the world he practiseth contemplation, meditation, and ablution, while in his heart he hath the greed of a dog. In his heart is the fire of avarice, while he applieth ashes to his body. There is a stone tied to his neck, how shall he cross over the bottomless ocean? He in whose heart God himself dwelleth shall, O Nanak, 
be easily absorbed in him. How shall a blind man find the road, even though he hear where it is? Take his hand, and he shall reach his goal. How can a deaf man understand riddles? Talk to him of the night, and he will think you are talking of the dawn. How can a dumb man sing a stave when, though he try, he would break his voice? How can a cripple roam on a mountain? He could never reach there. O merciful Creator, Nanak humbly supplicateth thee, that by thy favour he may be saved. Man thinketh not upon the succour who abideth with him. He loveth what is hostile to him. He dwelleth within a house of sand, and indulgeth in joy, and sports, and the pleasures of the world. He is certain in his heart that they shall last for ever. Attached to the sins of revenge, enmity, lust, wrath, worldly love, falsehood, excessive avarice, and deceit, the thought of death never entereth his foolish heart. In this way he hath passed several lives. Nanak prayeth, O God, save him by thy favour. Thou art the Lord, I make this supplication unto thee. Soul and body are all thy property. Thou art mother and father, we are thy children. By thy favour we obtain many comforts, nobody knoweth thy limit. O God, thou art the most exalted of the exalted. All things are strung on thy string and must obey the orders thou issuest. It is only thou thyself who knowest thine own condition and limit. Nanak thy slave is ever a sacrifice unto thee. Slok 5 They who leave God the giver, and attach themselves to other pleasures, shall never be acceptable. O Nanak, without the name their honour shall depart. Ashtapadi 5 If man obtain ten things and lay them by, Shall he basely forfeit his faith for the sake of one thing? If God give not even one thing, and take away the ten things, say what can foolish man do? Ever bow down to that Lord with whom force is of no avail. All happiness abideth in him to whose heart God is dear. The man whom God hath caused to obey his order hath, Nanak, obtained all things. The banker giveth countless capital to man. He eateth and drinketh, and useth it with pleasure and joy. But if God the banker take back some of what he hath entrusted to man, the fool becometh angry. He, by his own act, forfeiteth confidence, and God will not again trust him. If thou place the things before their owner, and obey God's order with all thy might, he will make thee fourfold happy. Nanak, the Lord, is ever compassionate. Man is enamoured of the various forms of mammon, but it is temporary, know this for a certainty. Man falleth in love with the shadow of a tree. When that vanisheth, he mourneth in his heart. Everything we see is transitory. Yet man, thoroughly blind that he is, is attached to it. He who giveth his love to a passing visitor shall gain nothing thereby. O my soul, the love of God's name is comfortable. Nanak, God attacheth to himself those to whom he showeth mercy. Perishable are body, wealth, and family. Perishable are pride, egoism, and worldly love. Perishable are dominion, youth, wealth, and property. Perishable are lust and direful wrath. Perishable are carriages, elephants, horses, and raiment. Perishable the love of worldly things, a sight of which causeth man to rejoice. Perishable are deceit, worldly love, and pride. Perishable is self-conceit. Imperishable the worship performed under the protection of holy men. Nanak liveth by meditating on God's feet. Perishable the ears which listen to slander of others. Perishable the hands which steal the property of others. Perishable the eyes which behold the beauty and the charms of another's wife. Perishable the tongue which tasteth dainty foods and other savours. Perishable the feet which run after evil. Perishable the heart which coveteth another's goods. Perishable the body which benefiteth not others. Perishable the nose which delighteth in the smell of evil. Without understanding God, everything is perishable. Fruitful is the body, Nanak, which taketh the name of God. Vain is the life of the infidel. 
How can man be pure without truth? Vain are the spiritually blind without God's name. Foul breath issueth from their mouths. Without remembering the name, their days and nights pass away in vain. As a crop perisheth without rain, as the money of the miser is worthless, so everything is vain without repeating God's name. They are to be highly congratulated in whose hearts the name of God abideth. Nanak is a sacrifice, a sacrifice unto them. He who professeth one thing and doeth another, in whose heart there is no love, but who attacheth men to him by his words, shall be tried by the Lord, who is wise, who knoweth everything, and is not pleased simply by outward appearances. He who practiseth not what he preacheth shall come and go, shall be born and die. The world shall be saved by his teaching, in whose heart the formless one dwelleth. Only they who are pleasing to thee, O God, can know thee. Nanak falleth at the feet of such men. Supplicate the Supreme Being who knoweth all things. God accepteth the prayers of his creatures. He himself and by himself decideth. To one man he showeth himself afar, and to another near. He himself is free from all stratagems and wiles. He thoroughly knoweth the ways of man's heart. The man who is pleasing to him, he attacheth to his skirt. He is contained in every place. He to whom he showeth favour is his servant. Nanak, every moment repeat God's name. Slok 6 Nanak hath taken thy protection, O divine Guru. Mercifully grant that his lust, wrath, avarice, worldly love, and pride may depart. Ashtapadi 6 Bear that God in thy mind, by whose favour thou eatest of the thirty-six dishes. Thou shalt obtain salvation by remembering him by whose favour thou appliest perfume to thy body. Meditate on him continually in thy heart, by whose favour thou dwellest comfortably at home. Repeat his name with thy tongue for the eight watches, by whose favour thou dwellest in comfort with thy family. Nanak ever meditateth on him by whose favour thou enjoyest mental and bodily pleasure. He is worthy of meditation. Why shouldst thou be enamoured of others and forsake him, by whose favour thou wearest silks and satins? O man, sing his praises for the eight watches, by whose favour thou sleepest in comfort on thy bed. Repeat his praises with thy mouth and with thy tongue, by whose favour every one honoureth thee. O man, ever think upon the Supreme Being alone, by whose favour thy faith is preserved. By uttering the name of God, thou shalt obtain favour at his court. By uttering the name of God, thou shalt obtain honour at his court, O Nanak, and go home with honour. Fix thine attention on that lovable God, by whose favour thy beautiful body remaineth healthy. O man, thou shalt obtain happiness by uttering God's praises, by whose favour thy honour is preserved. O man, take shelter in that Lord God, by whose favour all thy defects are concealed. O man, at every breath remember the Most High, by whose favour none can equal thee. Nanak, perform his service, by whose favour thou obtainest a human body so difficult to obtain. O man, why art thou slow in remembering him, by whose favour thou wearest jewels? O man, never forget thy God, by whose favour thou ridest on horses and elephants. String and keep God in thy heart, by whose favour thou hast gardens, and property, and wealth. Standing or sitting, O man, ever meditate upon him who made the framework of thy body. Meditate upon him who is the invisible one, and he will preserve thee, Nanak, in this world and the next. Meditate upon him during the eight watches of the day, by whose favour thou bestowest much in charity. Remember that God at every breath, by whose favour thou performest thy religious and worldly duties. Remember that God, ever incomparable, by whose favour thy form is beautiful. Meditate on that God day and night, by whose favour thou hast obtained the superior state. By the Guru's favour, Nanak, repeat his praises, by whose favour thine honour is preserved. Why attach thyself to any other and forsake him, by whose favour thine ears hear melody, by whose favour thou beholdest wonders, by whose favour thou utterest ambrosial words, by whose favour thou abidest in ease and comfort. 
by whose favour thy hands move to discharge their duties, by whose favour thou art completely successful, by whose favour thou obtainest supreme bliss, by whose favour thou shalt be filled with happiness and comfort. Awaken thy heart, Nanak, by the Guru's favour. Never at all forget thy God in thy heart, by whose favour thou art distinguished in the world. O foolish man, repeat his name, by whose favour thou obtainest glory. Know in thy heart that he is ever present, by whose favour thine affairs are completed. O my soul, attach thyself to him, by whose favour thou obtainest the truth. Nanak, utter the name of him, by whose favour all are saved. He uttereth God's name, whom he causeth to utter it. He singeth God's praises, whom he causeth to sing them. Through God's mercy man becometh enlightened. Through God's compassion the lotus of the heart bloometh. If God be pleased, he abideth in man's heart. By God's compassion man's intellect is superior to that of others. All wealth is obtained, O God, by thy kindness. No one obtaineth anything by himself. We apply ourselves to the duties to which thou hast appointed us, O Master. Nanak, we have no power in ourselves. Slok 7 The Supreme Being is inaccessible and unfathomable. He who repeateth his name shall be saved. Hear, O my friends, Nanak's representation and the wonderful story of the saints. Ashtapadi 7 By association with saints the face becometh bright. By association with saints all filth is removed. By association with saints pride is effaced. By association with saints divine knowledge is revealed. By association with saints God is known to be near. By association with saints everything is decided. By association with saints the jewel of the name is obtained. By association with saints we should strive for the one God. What mortal can express saints' praises? Nanak, the glory of saints, is merged in that of God. By association with saints, the unseen is obtained. By association with saints, man ever flourisheth. By association with saints, the five evil passions are restrained. By association with saints, man partaketh of the ambrosial essence of the name. By association with saints, man becometh the dust of all men's feet. In the association of saints is fascinating converse. By association with saints, the mind wandereth not in any direction. By association with saints, it becometh stable. By association with saints, the mind is free from illusion. Nanak, by association with saints, God is well pleased. By association with saints, all enemies become friends. By association with saints, man becometh very pure. By association with saints, man feeleth not enmity for any one. By association with saints, man's feet walk not awry. A man cannot be evil who associateth with saints. By association with saints, man knoweth the supreme joy. By association with saints, there is no fever of pride. By association with saints, man abandoneth all self-conceit. Only God knoweth his saints' greatness, Nanak. There is an understanding between God and his saints. By association with saints, the mind never wandereth. By association with saints, happiness is ever obtained. By association with saints, man obtaineth what is unseen. By association with saints, man beareth intolerable things. By association with saints, man dwelleth in an exalted position. By association with saints, man shall reach God's palace. By association with saints, man's faith is completely established. In the association of saints, the Supreme Being alone is mentioned. By association with saints, man obtaineth the nature of the name. Nanak is a sacrifice to the saints. By association with saints, all one's family is saved. By association with saints, acquaintances, friends and family are saved. By association with saints, that wealth is obtained from which every one gaineth advantage. Dhamraj performeth service for those who associate with saints. By association with saints, the king of the demigods singeth man's praises. 
By association with saints, sins flee away. By association with saints, man singeth the praises of the ambrosial name. By association with saints, man reacheth every place. Nanak, by association with saints, man's birth is profitable. By association with saints, man hath no travail. On beholding and meeting them, man becometh happy. By association with saints, blemishes are removed. By association with saints, hell is avoided. By association with saints, man shall be happy in this world and the next. By association with saints, they who are separated from God shall meet him. By association with saints, man departeth not empty, but obtaineth the fruit he desireth. The Supreme Being dwelleth in the hearts of saints. Nanak, man hearing God's delicious name from saints, shall be saved. In the association of saints, hear God's name. In the association of saints, sing God's praises. In the association of saints, God is not forgotten. In the association of saints, man shall assuredly be saved. To the association of saints, God is dear. By association with saints, he is seen in every heart. By association with saints, man becometh obedient. By association with saints, I have been saved. By association with saints, all maladies are healed. Nanak, association with saints is obtained by good fortune. Even the Vids know not the greatness of saints. They describe them as far as they had heard of them. The greatness of saints is beyond the three qualities. The greatness of saints pervadeth every place. There is no end to the glory of saints. The glory of saints is endless. The glory of saints is the highest of the high. The glory of saints is the greatest of the great. The glory of saints appertaineth to them alone. Saith Nanak, My brethren, there is no difference between God and his saints. Sloke 8 He whose heart is true, and whose words are true, looketh at nobody but the one God. Nanak, these are the marks of a man who knoweth God. Ashtapadi 8. The man who knoweth God is ever uncontaminated, as a lotus is untouched by the water. The man who knoweth God is ever stainless, as all things purified by the sun. The man who knoweth God looketh on all men as equal, as the wind bloweth on the rich and poor alike. The man who knoweth God is uniformly patient, like the earth which one man diggeth up and another smeareth with sandal. This is the attribute of the man who knoweth God. Nanak, his nature is like that of fire. The man who knoweth God is the purest of the pure, as filth cannot permanently attach to water. The mind of the man who knoweth God is enlightened, like the firmament above the earth. To the man who knoweth God a friend and foe are the same. The man who knoweth God hath no pride. The man who knoweth God is the most exalted of the exalted. Yet his mind is the most humble of all. Nanak, only those are Brahmgyanis whom God himself maketh so. The man who knoweth God is the dust of all men's feet. The man who knoweth God feeleth spiritual pleasure. The man who knoweth God showeth kindness to all. From the man who knoweth God cometh nothing evil. The man who knoweth God ever looketh on all with an equal eye. Nectar reigneth from the glance of him who knoweth God. The man who knoweth God is free from entanglements. The way of the man who knoweth God is pure. Divine knowledge is the food of the man who knoweth God. The man who knoweth God meditateth on him. The man who knoweth God hath his hopes on one alone. The man who knoweth God shall never perish. The man who knoweth God is steeped in humility. The man who knoweth God delighteth to show kindness to others. The man who knoweth God is not involved in worldly affairs. The man who knoweth God restraineth his wandering mind. Very good are the acts of the man who knoweth God. Everything prospereth with him who knoweth God. In the company of the man who knoweth God all shall be saved. Nanak, the whole world praiseth the man who knoweth God. The man who knoweth God loveth him alone. God abideth with the man who knoweth him. The name is the support of the man who knoweth God. 
The name is a halo for the man who knoweth God. The man who knoweth God is ever watchful. The man who knoweth God renounceth pride. The heart of him who knoweth God feeleth supreme delight. The home of him who knoweth God is ever happy. The man who knoweth God dwelleth in peace and rest. The man who knoweth God, O Nanak, shall never perish. The man who knoweth God is called a Brahmgyani. The man who knoweth God loveth but him alone. The man who knoweth God is free from care. Pure is the doctrine of him who knoweth God. He is a Brahmgyani whom God maketh so. Great is the glory of the man who knoweth God. A sight of the man who knoweth God is only obtained by good fortune. Be a sacrifice to the man who knoweth God. Shiv searcheth for the man who knoweth God. Nanak, the Brahmgyani, is himself God. The man who knoweth God is priceless. The man who knoweth God knoweth everything. Who knoweth the secret of him who knoweth God? Obeisance ever to him who knoweth God. Even half a letter of his praises who knoweth God cannot be written. The man who knoweth God is the Lord of all. Who can tell the worth of the man who knoweth God? Only the man who knoweth God knoweth his own state. The man who knoweth God hath no end or limit. Nanak ever boweth to the man who knoweth God. The man who knoweth God is the creator of the whole world. The man who knoweth God liveth for ever and dieth not. The man who knoweth God bestoweth on creatures spiritual and temporal benefits. The man who knoweth God is the perfect being, the arranger. The man who knoweth God is the patron of the patronless. The man who knoweth God holdeth his arm over all. The man who knoweth God owneth the whole world. The man who knoweth God is himself the formless one. The glory of the man who knoweth God is peculiar to himself. Nanak, the man who knoweth God is the Lord of all. End of section 15 Recording by Padi Balawalia, Ottawa Section 16 of the Sikh Religion Its Gurus, Sacred Writings and Authors, Volume 3 This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Padi Baluwalia, Ottawa The Sikh Religion, Its Gurus, Sacred Writings and Authors, Volume 3 by Max Arthur McAuliffe Section 16, Sukmani, Part 2, Sloks 9 to 16 Slok 9 Nanak, he is an Aparas and saveth all, who preserveth the name in his inmost heart, who seeth God in all things, and who every moment boweth to the Lord. Ashtapadi 9 Nanak, among millions there is scarcely an Aparas whose tongue toucheth not falsehood, whose heart loveth to behold the Bright One whose eyes gaze not on the beauty of others' wives, who serveth holy men and loveth saints, whose ears hear not slander of any one, who deemeth himself the worst of all men, who, by the favour of the Guru, renounceth all wickedness, who banisheth all evil desires from his heart, curbeth his passions, and refraineth from the five deadly sins. He is a Vishnav, with whom God is pleased, he is free from the influence of Mammon, who, in performing good acts, looketh not for reward. Of such a Vaishnav pure is the religion. Nanak, that Vaishnav shall obtain final salvation, who desireth not a reward for anything, who is only attached to God's service and singing his praises, who remembereth God in his mind and body, who is merciful to all creatures, who himself holdeth fast God's name, and causeth others to repeat it. He is a Bhagauti who loveth God's service, who forsaketh the company of all wicked men, who removeth all superstition from his mind, who deemeth and worshippeth all nature as a supreme being, who, by association with the saints, washeth away the filth of sin. Of such a Bhagauti, supreme is the wisdom, he who continually serveth God and dedicateth his soul and body to his love, 
who placeth God's feet in his heart. Nanak, such a Bhagauti shall obtain God. He is a pundit who awakeneth his own mind, who searcheth for God's name in his heart, who drinketh the excellent juice of God's name. The world liveth by that pundit's instruction. The pundit who implanted God's word in his heart shall not be born again. Nanak, ever make obeisance to that pundit who understandeth the real meaning of the Vedas, the Purans, and the Simritis, who recogniseth the great in the minute, and who instructeth the four castes. The name, the ground spell, giveth knowledge to all. He who among the four castes repeateth it shall obtain salvation. Some rare man obtaineth it by association with the saints. By the favour of God, the keeping of the name in the heart shall save brutes, sprites, blockheads, and hard-hearted persons. The name is the medicine for all diseases. Singing God's praises is beatitude and joy. God's name is found not in any other way, or by any other religion. Nanak, he for whom such destiny was written from the first, shall obtain God's name. He in whose heart is God's dwelling may truly be called God's slave. The soul of the world appeareth to his gaze, and he hath obtained the state of God's slave of slaves. The servant of God who believeth that he is ever near shall be acceptable at his court. His servant to whom he showeth kindness shall obtain all knowledge. The man who among all men is a recluse at heart, thus becometh, O Nanak, a slave of God. He whose heart loveth God's order is said to have obtained salvation during life. To him joy and sorrow are the same. He is ever happy, and is never separated from God. To him, as is gold, so is dross. As is nectar, so is bitter poison. As is honour, so is dishonour. As is the poor man, so is the king. He who deemeth what cometh from God as best shall, O Nanak, be said to have obtained salvation during life. All places belong to the Supreme Being. Creatures have different names according to where God placed them. God is able to act and cause others to act. What pleaseth him shall ultimately be. God extended himself in endless waves. The play of the Supreme Being cannot be understood. Man's enlightenment is according to the understanding God had giveth him. The Supreme Being, the Creator, is imperishable. He is ever, ever, ever compassionate. By remembering and remembering him, Nanak hath become happy. Slok 10. Many people praise him who hath neither end nor limit. Nanak, God created his creatures of many kinds and various species. Ashtapadi 10. Many millions are his worshippers. Many millions are engaged in religious and worldly duties. Many millions dwell at places of pilgrimage. Many millions wander as anchorettes in the forest. Many millions listen to the Veds. Many millions perform excessive penances. Many millions meditate on God in their hearts. Many millions of poets compose verses in his praise. Many millions meditate on his ever new names. Even then, Nanak, they find not the Creator's limit. Many millions are proud. Many millions are in blind ignorance. Many millions are hard-hearted misers. Many millions are unsociable and morose at heart. Many millions steal others' property. Many millions bring false charges against others. Many millions make efforts to acquire wealth. Many millions wander in foreign lands. Where thou didst place men, O God, there are they. Nanak, only the Creator knoweth his own creatures. Many millions are Siddhs, Jatis, and Yogis. Many millions are kings and enjoy pleasures. Many millions of birds and serpents have been created. Many millions of stones and trees have been produced. Many millions of winds, waters, and fires. Many millions of countries and regions of the earth. Many millions of moons, suns, and stars. Many millions of demigods, demons, and crowned Indus. God holdeth all things by his string, and, O Nanak, saveth those whom he pleaseth. Many millions of beings were created with three qualities of impulse, darkness, and goodness. Many millions of Vids, Purans, Simritis, and Shastas. Many millions of jeweled oceans. 
Many millions of animals of various descriptions. Many millions were made long-lived. Many millions of hills and golden mountains. Many millions of yakshas, kinars, and pishachas. Many millions of sprites, ghosts, pigs, and tigers. God is near all, yet far from all. Nanak, God filleth everything, and yet is separate. Many millions inhabit the nether regions. Many millions dwell in hell and heaven. Many millions are born, live, and die. Many millions wander through many wombs. Many millions live without exertion. Many millions are wearied with labor. Many millions are created wealthy. Many millions are anxious for riches. Wherever God pleaseth, he placeth them. Nanak, everything is in God's power. There are many millions of Bairagis who love God's name. Many millions search for God and find him in their hearts. Many millions thirst for a sight of God and find him, the imperishable one. Many millions pray for the society of the saints. They are those who love the Supreme Being. Nanak, they are ever blessed, with whom God is well pleased. Many millions of sources of life and regions were created. Many millions of skies, mundane eggs, many millions of incarnations. In diverse shapes the world was spread out. Many times was extension extended. Ever and ever there is but one God. Many millions of creatures were made of many descriptions. From God they emanated, and in God shall they be absorbed. No one knoweth his limit. Nanak, God himself is all in all. There are many millions of his slaves whose minds are enlightened. Many millions who know the real thing, and ever look with their eyes on the one alone. Many millions drink the essence of the name, become immortal, and live for ever and ever. Many millions sing the excellences of the name, and are absorbed in divine bliss, happiness, and tranquillity. God watcheth over every breath of his servant, for, O Nanak, God's servants are dear to him. Slok 11. The cause of causes is the one God. There is none other. Nanak is a sacrifice to him who is contained in sea and land, in the nether regions and the firmament. Ashtapadi 11. The cause of causes is capable of acting. What pleaseth him shall come to pass. He who hath no end or limits establisheth and disestablisheth in a moment. By his order he supporteth and holdeth the firmament. By his order there is creation, and by his order absorption in himself. The occupations of high and low are according to his order. By his order there are the varied phases of nature. Having created, he beholdeth his own greatness. Nanak, God is contained in all things. If it please God, man obtaineth salvation. If it please God, he maketh a stone cross the ocean of the world. If it please God, he can restore the lifeless body. If it please God, then man recounteth his praises. If it please God, then he saveth sinners. He himself createth, he himself designeth, he himself is the lord of both worlds. The searcher of hearts sporteth and is pleased. He causeth man to do as he wisheth. Nanak, there is nothing seen but him. Say what can be accomplished by man. What pleaseth God he causeth to be done. If man had the power, he would acquire all things. God doeth what pleases himself. Through not knowing God, man is attached to sin. If he knew God, he would save himself from it. The mind led astray by superstition wandereth in every direction, and in a moment returneth. God bestoweth his service on him, to whom he is merciful. Nanak, such a man shall be absorbed in the name. God the cherisher of the poor can, in a moment, make a humble worm a king. Him who is totally obscure, God can, at once, render everywhere famous. The Lord of the world will not take the accounts of those on whom he bestoweth his favours. Soul and body are all his property. Every heart is full of God's light. He made his own handiwork. None liveth by beholding his greatness. Man's power is not at his own disposal. The cause of causes is the Lord of all. Helpless creatures must obey orders. What pleaseth God shall ultimately be. Man is sometimes exalted and sometimes debased. Sometimes he mourneth, sometimes he laugheth with delight and joy. 
Sometimes he engageth in blame and praise. Sometimes he is up in heaven, sometimes down in hell. Sometimes he is acquainted with divine knowledge. Nanak, God himself causeth us to meet him. Sometimes man danceth in a variety of ways. Sometimes he sleepeth day and night. Sometimes he is terrible in his mighty wrath. Sometimes he is the dust of all men's feet. Sometimes he is enthroned as a great king. Sometimes he weareth the attire of a lowly beggar. Sometimes he falleth into evil repute. Sometimes he is called very good. As God keepeth him, so he remaineth. By the favour of the Guru, Nanak speaketh the truth. Sometimes as a pundit, man expoundeth texts. Sometimes vowed to silence, he practiseth contemplation. Sometimes he batheth the places of pilgrimage. Sometimes, as a seed or a striver, he preacheth divine knowledge. Sometimes his soul wandereth in many wombs, is in an elephant, a worm, or a moth. As a player, he playeth several parts. As God pleaseth, so he maketh man dance. What pleaseth God shall come to pass. Nanak, there is none other than he. Sometimes man obtaineth the same society, from which he returneth not again, and which shall not perish. The light of divine knowledge shall then shine in his heart. His soul and body, dyed with the name of the one God, shall ever abide with the Supreme Being. As water blendeth with water, so light is blendeth with light. Transmigration is ended and rest obtained. Nanak is ever a sacrifice to the Lord. Slok 12 They who have effaced themselves and become humble are happy, while the very haughty, O Nanak, are consumed by their pride. Ashtapadi 12 He in whose heart is the pride of dominion shall fall into hell and become a dog. He who boasteth of his youth shall become a creature of filth. He who calleth himself good shall die and be born again and wander in many a womb. He who is proud of his wealth and property is stupid and blind and ignorant. He in whose heart God mercifully planteth meekness shall obtain, O Nanak, salvation in this world and happiness in the next. Not so much as a straw shall go with him, who, becoming wealthy, plumeth himself thereon. He who relieth on his large army and men shall be destroyed in a moment. He who deemeth himself stronger than all shall in a trice become dust. Damrad shall disgrace him who, in his pride, thinketh naught of any one. He whose pride is effaced by favour of the Guru shall be acceptable, Nanak, in God's court. If man do millions of good acts, but possess pride, he incurreth only trouble. All his acts are in vain. He who is proud of his various mortifications shall be born again and again in hell and heaven. How shall he who, though making many efforts, softeneth not his heart, go to God's court? Goodness shall not even approach him who calleth himself good. Saith Nanak, Pure shall be the glory of him whose heart is the dust of all men's feet. Man hath no happiness so long as he thinketh he can do something. As long as man thinketh he can do something, so long shall he wander in wombs. So long as man deemeth any one an enemy or a friend, so long shall his mind not be stable. As long as man is intoxicated with the love of Mammon, so long shall Damraj punish him. It is by God's grace man's bonds are burst and by the Guru's favour pride, O Nanak, is removed. Even though man earn thousands, he will run after a luck. He will never be satisfied in his pursuit of wealth. Though he devote himself to the enjoyment of many evil passions, he will never be satisfied. He will kill himself pursuing more. No one can be satisfied without contentment. Otherwise, all efforts are vain like the illusion of a dream. All happiness is obtained by loving the name, but only a few obtain it by great good fortune. God himself is all in all, the cause of causes, and ever and ever, Nanak, repeat his name. The Creator is the cause of causes. What resource hath man? He becometh as God regardeth him. There is only God. Whatever was created was according to his pleasure. He is far from all, and yet with all. He understandeth, beholdeth, and exerciseth judgment. He himself is one, and he himself is many. He neither dieth nor perisheth. He neither cometh nor goeth. Nanak, 
he is ever diffused through our creation. He himself instructeth, and he himself understandeth. He himself is blended with everything. He made his own expansion. Everything is his. He is the creator. Say, can anything be effected without him? The one God is in every place. He himself acteth his own parts. He exhibiteth plays of endless kinds. He is in the soul, and the soul is in him. Nanak, his worth cannot be described. True, true, true is the Lord God. By the Guru's favour some rare person describeth him. True, true, true is he who created all. Among millions some rare one knoweth thee, O God. Excellent, excellent, excellent is thy form, very beautiful, unbounded, and incomparable. Pure, pure, pure is thy word. Every one heareth it with his ears and repeateth it. Holy, 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 holy is thy name. Nanak uttereth it with heartfelt love. Slok 13 He who entereth the asylum of the saints shall be saved. He who slandereth the saints, Nanak, shall be born again and again. Ashtapadi 13 By calumniating the saints, man's life is shortened. By calumniating the saints, man escapeth not from death. By calumniating the saints, all happiness vanisheth. By calumniating the saints, man falleth into hell. By calumniating the saints, the understanding is clouded. By calumniating the saints, man is without glory. None can save him who is accursed of the saints. By calumniating the saints, man falleth from his position. Nanak, even a slanderer shall be saved in the company of the saints, if the merciful saints but show him mercy. By calumniating the saints, man's face becometh crooked. By calumniating the saints, man croaketh like a raven. By calumniating the saints, man is born as a serpent. By calumniating the saints, man is born as a creeping worm. By calumniating the saints, man burneth with thirst. By calumniating the saints, man deceiveth everyone. By calumniating the saints, all man's influence departeth. By calumniating the saints, man becometh the lowest of the low. There is no abiding place for him who calumniateth the saints. But if it please the saints, O Nanak, he too may obtain salvation. The slander of the saints is a great malefactor. The slander of the saints hath not a moment's rest. The slander of the saints is a great murderer. The slander of the saints is a curse of God. The slander of the saints loseth his dominion. The slander of the saints becometh afflicted and poor. The slander of the saints contracteth every disease. The slander of the saints is ever separated from God. The slander of the saints committeth sin upon sin. But, O Nanak, if it please the saints, he too may obtain salvation. He who slandereth the saints is ever impure. He who slandereth the saints is no man's friend. He who slandereth the saints shall be punished. He who slandereth the saints shall be abandoned by all. He who slandereth the saints is very proud. He who slandereth the saints is ever a sinner. He who slandereth the saints dieth and is born again. He who slandereth the saints swerveth from happiness. He who slandereth the saints hath no abiding place. But if it please the saints, O Nanak, they will join him with themselves. He who slandereth the saints breaketh down halfway. He who slandereth the saints succeedeth in nothing. He who slandereth the saints shall wander in deserts. He who slandereth the saints shall fall into the wilderness. He who slandereth the saints is hollow within, as the corpse of a dead man hath no breath. He who slandereth the saints hath no root whatever. He shall himself eat of the fruit he hath planted. He who slandereth the saints hath no protector. But if it please the saints, O Nanak, they will save him too. He who slandereth the saints shall cry aloud, as a fish without water wriggleth in agony. He who slandereth the saints shall never be full, as a fire is not satisfied with firewood. He who slandereth the saints is left alone, like a miserable barren sesame stalk in a field. He who slandereth the saints is void of honesty. He who slandereth the saints ever uttereth falsehood. Such is the fate of the slanderer from the beginning. Nanak, 
whatever pleaseth God, shall take place. He who slandereth the saints shall become deformed. He who slandereth the saints shall receive punishment in God's court. He who slandereth the saints ever gaspeth. He who slandereth the saints is neither dead nor living. He who slandereth the saints never hath his hopes fulfilled. He who slandereth the saints departeth disappointed. No one obtaineth permanence by slandering the saints. Man is as it pleaseth God to make him. No one can set aside his destiny. Nanak, the true one, knoweth everything. Every heart is his. He is the creator. Ever and ever bow to him. Praise God day and night. Meditate on him at every breath you draw and at every morsel you eat. Everything prevaileth that God hath done. Man shall become as God maketh him. God playeth his own play. Who else can criticize him? He giveth his name to those to whom he is merciful. And Nanak, very fortunate are they. Slok 14 Quit devices, my good friends, and remember God, God the King. Treasure in thy heart thy hopes in the one God, O Nanak, so shall suffering, error, and fear depart. Ashtapadi 14 Know that all reliance on man is vain. It is God alone who bestoweth, by whose gifts we remain satisfied, and not again feel thirst. The one God alone destroyeth and protecteth. There is nothing in man's power. Happiness cometh from understanding the will of God. String his name and wear it on thy neck. Remember, remember, remember that God, Nanak, and no obstacle shall come in thy way. O man, praise the formless one in thy heart. O man, practice works of righteousness. Quaff the nectar of the name, and thy tongue shall become pure, and thou shalt render thy soul for ever happy. Behold God's splendour with thine eyes. In the company of the saints, love for all other company shall vanish. Walk with thy feet in God's way. Thy sin shall be erased if thou even for a moment repeat God's name. Do God's work, hear his story with thine ears, and thy countenance, O Nanak, shall be bright in his court. Very fortunate are they in the world who ever and ever sing God's praises. He who meditateth on God's name shall be accounted rich in the world. Know that he shall ever and ever be happy who uttereth the supreme God's name with mind and tongue. He who recognizeth the one only God shall obtain knowledge of this world and the next. He whose mind is won over to the name Namak shall know God the pure one. Know that his thirst shall be quenched who, by the Guru's favour, knoweth himself. The holy man who repeateth God's praises in the company of the saints should be exempt from all disease. He who night and day singeth the one God's praises shall be saved even in the bosom of his family. Death's noose shall be cut from him, who putteth his hopes in God alone. He whose soul hungereth for the supreme God shall, O Nanak, have no suffering. He who thinketh upon the Lord God is a happy saint and wavereth not. The servant to whom God showeth his mercy, say of whom shall he be afraid? As God is, so doth he appear unto him, contained in his own creation. He who is successful in his long search for God by the Guru's favour knoweth the whole reality. When I look, I see God is the root of all things. Nanak, he is at once minute and great. He is not born, neither doth he die. He playeth his own parts. Things visible and invisible, which come and go, the whole creation is supported by the commander, and he himself is contained in everything. Employing many devices, he maketh and unmaketh. He is imperishable and infrangible. He supporteth the universe. He is unseen, inscrutable, and glorious. Nanak, they who he himself causeth to repeat his name, repeat it. They who know God are glorious. The whole world shall be saved by their spell. God's servant shall save all. God's servant shall cause sorrow to be forgotten. They who repeat the name under the Guru's instruction shall be happy. The merciful one shall blend them with himself. The fortunate man, to whom God showeth mercy, shall apply himself to their service. He who uttereth the name shall obtain rest. Nanak, consider him as the best. Whatever he doeth is for the love of God. 
he shall ever and ever abide with him. Whatever naturally happeneth, happeneth, and recognize him as the Creator. What God doeth is pleasing to the saints. As he is, so he appeareth unto them. They shall be absorbed in him from whom they have sprung, and be alone deemed worthy of the treasure of happiness. He himself giveth honour to his own. Nanak, know that God and his servant are one. Slok 15 God is full of all power, and knoweth the affairs of his creatures. I am a sacrifice to him, O Nanak, by remembering whom salvation is obtained. Ashtapadi 15 God is the mender of what is broken. He himself cherisheth all creatures. Nobody applieth in vain to him, whose heart feeleth anxiety for all. O man, ever repeat God's name. He himself is the imperishable Lord. From what man doeth himself, nothing resulteth. O mortal, even though thou desire it hundreds of times, without God nothing shall avail thee. Salvation, Nanak, is obtained by repeating the name of the one God. If man be handsome, he should not be charmed thereby, since it is God's light that shineth in everybody. If man be wealthy, why should he be proud thereof, since all the wealth that God hath given belongeth to him? Even though one be a mighty hero, what efforts can he make without obtaining power from God? If any one plume himself on being very liberal, God the real giver will think him a fool. He whose malady of pride is cured by the Guru's favour shall, O Nanak, never suffer from it again. As a pillar supporteth the house, so the word of the Guru supporteth the heart. As a stone floateth when put into a boat, so are mortals saved by clinging to the Guru's feet. As a lamp giveth light in the darkness, so man shineth on beholding the Guru. As man can find his way in a great wilderness if he have a guide, so light shall shine for him when he joineth the congregation of the saints. I desire the dust of such saints' feet. O God, fulfil Nanak's desires. O foolish man, why dost thou bewail? Thou shalt obtain what was written for thee in the beginning. God is the dispenser of woe and weal. Abandon others and think of him. Whatever he doeth, gladly agree to. Why wanderest thou astray, O thoughtless one? O greedy moth, attached to pleasures, what came into the world with thee? Repeat God's name in thy heart, Nanak, and thou shalt go to thy home with honour. In the dwelling of the saints, God's name is found, the merchandise thou camest into the world to obtain. Renounce pride, weigh God's name in thy heart, and purchase it with thy life. Load thy merchandise, set out with the saints, and... Having freed thyself from the entanglements of the deadly sins, every one will congratulate thee. Thy countenance shall be bright, and thou shalt obtain honour in God's court. Few are the merchants who deal in this merchandise, and to them Nanak is ever a sacrifice. Bathe the saints' feet, and afterwards drink the bathing water. Dedicate thy soul to the saints. Bathe thyself in the dust of the saints' feet, and become a sacrifice unto them. The service of the saints is obtained by good fortune. Sing God's praises in their company. The saints preserve man from various dangers. He who singeth God's praises shall taste the savour of nectar. He who cometh to the door of the saints and seeketh their protection shall, O Nanak, obtain all happiness. God reanimateth the dead. He gives support to the hungry. All wealth is in his glance. But man only obtaineth what was originally destined him. Everything is God's. He is omnipotent. There neither was nor shall be any but him. O man, ever and ever repeat his name day and night. This is the most exalted and sacred duty. He to whom God hath mercifully granted his name shall, O Nanak, become pure. He whose heart hath faith in the Guru shall remember the Lord God. They in whose hearts is the one God are called saints in the three worlds. True are the acts and true are the ways of those in whose heart is the truth, and who utter the truth with their mouths. True is God's glance, true his world, true his practice, and true his creation. He who recognizeth the Supreme Being as true shall, O Nanak, be absorbed in the true one. 
Slok 16 God hath no form, outline, or colour. He is exempt from the three qualities. He causeth him, O Nanak, with whom he is well pleased, to know him. Ashtapadi 16 Keep thou the imperishable God in thy heart, and renounce human love. There is nothing superior to God. He is one without interruption in all things. He is far-seeing, he is knowing. O deep, profound, and all-wise, supreme Brahm, supreme God, Gobind, treasure of mercy, compassionate pardoner, Nanak's heartfelt desire is to fall at the feet of thy saints. God is the fulfiller of desires and capable of giving protection. What he hath inscribed in man's destiny shall take place. He can destroy and create in the twinkling of an eye. None but himself knoweth his counsel. He is ever happy and joyous. All things are, I have heard, in his palace. He is king of kings and supreme yogi among yogis. In penance, he is the king of the penitents. In the domestic state, he is an enjoyer. By constant meditation on him, the saints obtain happiness. Nanak, no one hath found the limit of such a being. To his play there is no limit. All the demigods have grown weary searching for it. What doth a son know of his father's birth? God hath strung all things on his own string. His servant, to whom he giveth wisdom, divine knowledge, and meditation, meditateth on him. They whom he leadeth astray among the three qualities, die to be born again, and again suffer transmigration. The high and the low places of the earth are his. O Nanak, man knoweth as God causeth him to know him. God hath various forms and various colours. He assumeth various guises, and yet remaineth the same. God the indestructible, who hath one form, hath extended himself in various ways. He acteth various parts in a moment. The perfect one filleth every place. He hath made creation in various forms. He himself knoweth his own worth. All hearts are his, all places are his. Nanak liveth by ever uttering God's name. By the name are sustained all creatures. By the name are supported the regions of the earth and the universe. By the name are supported the Simritis, the Vids, and the Purans. By the support of the name we hear God's praises, and obtain divine knowledge and meditation. By the name are supported the firmament and the nether regions. By the name is the whole world upheld. By the name are maintained all cities and houses. By hearing the name with attention, man is saved. He whom God mercifully attacheth to his name shall, O Nanak, obtain final deliverance. God's form is true, true is his place. He is the true spirit. He alone is supreme. His acts are true. His word is true. The true spirit is contained in everything. His deeds are true. His creation is true. The root of the world is true, and true what springeth from it. Pure are his acts, the purest of the pure. Everything turneth out well for him to whom God giveth knowledge. The true name of God bestoweth happiness. True faith, Nanak, is obtained from the Guru. True are the words and instruction of the saints. True are they into whose hearts they enter. He who knoweth how to search for the truth shall obtain salvation by uttering the name. God himself is true, and true is everything he hath made. He himself knoweth his own measure and condition. The creation belongeth to its maker. He taketh counsel with none but himself. The measure of the Creator is not known to the creature. Nanak, what pleaseth God prevaileth. Man wondereth at the wonders upon wonders of creation, but is only he who knoweth God who obtaineth bliss. The men of God who are enamoured with his love receive under the Guru's instruction the great boons. They are generous and dispellers of sorrow. In their company the world shall be saved. He who serveth the saints is very fortunate. In the society of the saints, man fixeth his attention on the one God. They who sing the excellences and praises of God shall, Nanak, by the favour of the Guru, obtain their reward. End of section 16 Recording by Padi Palawalia, Ottawa
Section 17 of the Sikh Religion Its Gurus, Sacred Writings and Authors, Volume 3 This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Padi Aluwalia, Ottawa The Sikh Religion, Its Gurus, Sacred Writings and Authors, Volume 3 by Max Arthur McAuliffe Section 17, Sukmani, Part 3, Slokes 17 to 24. Slok 17. The True One was in the beginning. The True One was in the primal age. The True One is now also, O Nanak. The True One also shall be. Ashtapadi 17. His feet are true, and true is he who toucheth them. His worship is true and true his worshipper. A sight of him is true, and true is he who obtaineth it. True is his name, and true is he who meditateth on it. He himself is true, and so is everything he sustaineth. He himself is excellent, and the bestower of excellence. The word is true, and true is God who uttereth it. The ears are true which hear the praises of the true one. To him who understandeth, everything is true. Nanak, God is altogether true. He who knoweth in his heart him whose form is true shall recognize the root of all things, the cause of causes. Divine knowledge shall be revealed to him into whose heart faith in God hath entered. He shall abide free from fear and be absorbed in him from whom he sprang. If one take a thing and blend it with another of the same kind, it cannot be said to be separate from it. A man of understanding can understand that. When God is found, O Nanak, man becometh one with him. The servant of the Lord obeyeth his order. The servant of the Lord ever adoreth him. The servant of the Lord possesses faith in his heart. Pure is the conduct of the Lord's servant. His servant knoweth that God is with him. God's servant is dyed with his name. God cherisheth his servant. The formless one preserveth the honour of his servant. He is a servant to whom the Lord showeth mercy. Nanak, such a servant remembereth God at every breath. God will draw a veil over the faults of his servant, and will assuredly preserve his honour. He will bestow greatness on his slave, cause him to repeat his name, and preserve his honour. No one knoweth God's condition or measure, no one is equal to God's servant. God's servant is the most exalted of the exalted. The servant whom God applieth to his service shall be renowned, O Nanak, in every direction. If God infuse power into a little ant, it can reduce to ashes armies of hundreds of thousands of millions of men. God preserveth and holdeth out a hand to him, whom he desireth not to deprive of life. Though man make efforts of many kinds, his exertions are in vain. No one can kill or preserve but God. He is the preserver of all creatures. Why art thou anxious, O mortal? Nanak, repeat the name of God the Unseen, the Wonderful. Ever, ever, ever repeat God's name. Satisfy thy soul and body by quaffing its nectar. The holy man who obtaineth the jewel of the name will look on no one but God. He will deem the name his wealth, the name his beauty and delight, the name his happiness, God's name his companion. He who is satisfied with the savour of God's name shall be absorbed soul and body in it. To utter the name standing, sitting, or sleeping, saith Nanak, is ever the duty of the man of God. God gave the gift to his worshipper to utter his praises day and night. They who serve with heartfelt love shall be absorbed in the Lord. They shall know the past and the present, and recognize the order of their God. Who can describe his greatness? I know not how to describe even one of his excellences. They who abide the whole day in the presence of God, saith Nanak, are the perfect men. O man, take shelter with them. Give them thy soul and body. He who recognizeth his God is bountiful in all things. In his shelter thou shalt find all happiness. By a sight of him thou shalt blot out all sin. Renounce all other cleverness and attach thyself to his service. Nanak, ever worship his feet, and thou shalt suffer no more transmigration. Slok 18 he who knoweth the true being is called the true Guru. 
His disciple is saved by association with him, O Nanak, and by singing God's praises. Ashtapadi 18 The true Guru cherisheth his disciple. The true Guru is ever compassionate to his servant. The Guru will remove the filth of his disciple's wickedness. Under the Guru's instruction, the disciple will repeat God's name. The true Guru will cut the fetters of his disciple if the disciple recoil from evil deeds. The disciple to whom the true Guru giveth the wealth of the name is very fortunate. The true Guru adjusteth this world and the next for his disciple. Nanak, the true Guru loveth his disciple as his life. The servant who dwelleth in his Guru's house should heartily accept his order, not overrate himself, ever meditate on God's name in his heart, and sell his soul to the true Guru. The affairs of such a man shall prosper. He who serveth the true Guru without any desire of reward shall obtain the Lord. The servant to whom God showeth favour, Nanak, will accept the Guru's instruction. The servant who fully conciliateth the Guru shall know the state of the Supreme Being. He in whose heart is God's name is the true Guru. I am many times a sacrifice to such a Guru. So bestoweth all treasure on men, and is day and night imbued with love for the Supreme Being. The holy man is in God, and God is in the holy man. God himself is one. Of this there is no doubt. The Guru is not obtained by a thousand devices. Nanak, such a Guru is only found by good fortune. A sight of the Guru is profitable. He who beholdeth him is purified. By touching his feet, man's conduct and practice become spotless. He who on meeting him uttereth God's praises shall arrive at the court of the Supreme Being. On hearing his words the ears are satisfied, the mind gaineth contentment, and the spirit consolation. He on whom the perfect Guru, whose spell is immortal, looketh with his ambrosial glance becometh a saint. His excellences are endless, his worth cannot be appraised. Nanak, whoso pleaseth him, he blendeth with himself. Man has but one tongue. God's praises are manifold. He is the true being of perfect discrimination. Mortal cannot by any word succeed in describing him. He is inaccessible, incomprehensible, and unperturbed. He liveth not by food. He is without enmity, the giver of comfort. No one hath found his worth. Many saints continually make obeisance to him, and meditate in their hearts on his lotus feet. Nanak is ever a sacrifice to his true Guru, by whose favour the name of such a God is repeated. This divine essence only few obtain, but they who drink it become immortal. That being shall never perish in whose heart the Lord of Excellences appeareth. He who taketh God's name during the eight watches, who giveth true instruction to his servant, who is not veneered by worldly love, who keepeth but the one God in his heart, for him a lamp shall shine in the darkness, and, O Nanak, his doubts, worldly love, and sorrows flee away. By the perfect instruction of the saints, man becometh cool in the midst of heat. Sorrow is put to flight, happiness resulteth, the fear of birth and death is removed, fear ceaseth, man abideth fearless, and all troubles vanish from his mind. God showeth mercy to his own, who, in the company of the saints, repeat his name. By listening, O Nanak, to God's praises with attention, mental stableness is obtained, and superstition and transmigration cease. He whose power fascinateth the whole world is without the three qualities, and yet possesseth all qualities. God himself performeth his own play, only he himself knoweth his worth. There is no other than God. He, the one Spirit, pervadeth all things without interruption. He, the warp and the wolf, is contained in all forms and colours. He becometh manifest by association with the saints. He who made creation infused his power into it. Nanak is many times a sacrifice unto him. Slok 19 Except God's worship, nothing shall go with thee, O man. Worldly things are ashes. 
Nanak, the essence of wealth is in the repetition of God's name. Ashtapadi 19 In the company of the saints reflect on God. Remember the one God and rest upon His name. Forget all other efforts, my friend. Put God's lotus feet into thy heart. He is the omnipotent, the cause of causes. Firmly grasp His name. It is the best thing. Lay up this wealth, and thou shalt be fortunate. Pure is the instruction of the saints. Keep the hope of the one God in thy heart, Nanak, and all thy maladies shall be healed. By serving God, thou shalt obtain the wealth after which thou now hastest in every direction. The happiness which thou ever desirest, my friend, shall be found by loving the society of the saints. The glory for which thou performest good acts shall be obtained by hastening to God for protection. It is not by many remedies maladies are healed. It is by administering the medicine of God's name. Of all treasures, God's name is the treasure. Repeat it, Nanak, and thou shalt be acceptable in God's court. Thy mind which now wandereth in every direction shall rest by enlightening it with God's name. No obstacle can impede him in whose heart God abideth. This Kai age is hot. God's name is cool. Remember it, remember it, and thou shalt ever be happy. By service and love the mind becometh enlightened. Fears depart, all hope shall be fulfilled. Man shall abide in the imperishable home, saith Nanak, and death's noose be cut for his escape. It is the true man who meditateth on God. It is the falsest of the false who suffer transmigration. But transmigration shall be effaced by serving God. Abandon pride and seek the protection of the divine Guru. So shall thy precious human life be saved. Remember God who is the support of the soul. Man shall not be saved by many devices or by studying the Simritis, the Shastas, and the Veds. Nanak, heartily serve God, and thou shalt obtain thy heart's desire. Thy wealth shall not depart with thee. Why art thou wrapped up in it, O foolish man? Son, friend, family, and wife, say what ownership hast thou in them. Dominion, worldly pleasure, and extensive wealth, say who can escape from these. Horses, elephants, carriages, and equipages are delusive shows and false displays. Ignorant man knoweth not him who gave them. Nanak, he forgetteth the name and afterwards regretteth. Take the advice of the Guru, O silly man. Without devotion many clever men have been lost. Worship God with thy heart, O my friend, and thy mind shall become pure. Put his lotus feet into thy heart, and the sins of many births shall depart. Repeat his name thyself, and cause others to do so. By hearing it, and uttering it, and abiding by it, thou shalt obtain salvation. The real thing is God's true name. Nanak, sing his excellences with devotion and love. By singing God's praises, filth shall be washed away, and the poison of pride which overspreadeth thee shall depart. By remembering God's name at every breath thou drawest, Thou shalt become free from care and abide in happiness. O man, lay aside all thy cleverness. The true wealth thou shalt acquire in the company of the saints. Obtain God's name as thy capital. Deal with it. Thou shalt be happy in this world and victorious in the next, saith Nanak, he on whose forehead such fate hath been written. Seeth the one God without interruption in all things. Repeat the name of the one God. Magnify the one God. Remember the one God, make him thy heart's desire. Sing the excellences of the one God who is endless. With soul and body, repeat the name of the one God. God himself is the only, only, only one. The perfect God filleth every place. There have been many expansions of the one God. Worship the one God, and all thy sins shall depart. Nanak, by the favour of the Guru, the one God is known by him whose soul and body are thoroughly imbued with his love. Slok 20 After many wanderings, O God, I have come to thine asylum. Nanak's prayer, O God, is, Let me apply myself to thy service. Ashtapadi 20 I, a beggar, 
Beg a gift of thee, O God. Mercifully grant me thy name. I crave for the dust of the saints' feet. Fulfill my desire, O Supreme Being. Let me ever sing thine excellences, and meditate on thee at every breath. Let me ever love thy lotus feet, and continually perform thy service. Thou art mine only shelter, mine only support. None that craveth thine excellent name. In God's favouring glance there is great happiness, but few obtain God's savour. They who have tasted it are satisfied. They who have become perfect beings and waver not. They are filled with the sweetness and delight of love, and in the company of the saints feel desire to meet God. They enter his asylum forsaking all others. Their hearts are enlightened, and they fix their attention on him day and night. Very fortunate are they who repeat God's name. Nanak, they who are dyed with it are happy. The desires of God's servants are fulfilled. He obtaineth pure instruction from the true Guru. God is merciful to his servant, and rendereth him ever happy. God cutteth his fetters, he is emancipated, and the ignorance from which the pain of birth and death resulteth is no more. His wishes are fulfilled, his desires are all fulfilled. He is blended with God, and is ever present with him. God to whom he belonged hath blended him with himself. Nanak is absorbed in God's service and his name. Why forget him who destroyeth not the effects of labour? Why forget him who regardeth what is done for him? Why forget him who gave us everything? Why forget him who is the life of living beings? Why forget him who preserveth us in the fire of the womb? By the Guru's favour some rare one seeth him. Why forget him who extricateth man from sin, and joineth with him those who had broken with him during many births? The perfect Guru hath taught me the real thing, so Nanak hath meditated on his God. O holy saints, do this. Abandon all else and repeat God's name. Remember it, remember it, remember it, and you shall be happy. Repeat it yourselves and cause others to repeat it. By service and love you shall cross over the world. Without service the body shall be as dust. From the treasure of the name all beatitude and happiness are obtained, and even they who are drowning obtain rest. O Nanak, repeat the name of the Lord of Excellences, and all thy sorrow shall depart. The wish of my soul and body is that the pleasures of love, affection, and desire for God may spring up in me that I may have the happiness of beholding him with mine eyes, and that my soul may be gladdened by washing the saints' feet. Few there are who can obtain association with the saints, and whose souls and bodies are filled with love for thee. Mercifully grant me one thing, O God, to repeat thy name by the Guru's favour. Nanak, God's praises cannot be expressed. He is contained in all things. He is the pardoner, compassionate to the poor kind to the saints, and ever merciful. Gobin Gopal, the patron of the patronless, cherisheth all creatures. He is the primal being, the creator of the world, the support of the souls of holy men. He shall become pure who repeateth his name, and devoteth to him service, affection, and heartfelt love. Devoid of virtue, low and ignorant, None hath seeketh thy protection, O Supreme Power. He who singeth God's praises even for a moment shall obtain everything, heaven, salvation, deliverance. He to whose heart the story of God's name is pleasing shall enjoy the various pleasures and greatness of a monarch. They whose tongues continually repeat God's name shall enjoy plenteous food, raiment, singing and dancing. Good are his deeds, Glorious and wealthy is he in whose heart the perfect Guru's spell abideth. O God, grant Nanak a dwelling with thy saints, where all happiness shall be manifested unto him. Slok 21 The formless one who possesseth all qualities, and yet is devoid of them, is in profound contemplation. Nanak, what he hath made, he again absorbeth in himself. Ashtapadi 21 before this world in any wise appeared, by whom were bad and good acts committed? When God was in profound meditation, with whom were enmity and strife? 
when no colour or trace of man was seen, say who then felt joy or sorrow. When there was only the Supreme Being Himself, where was worldly love? Who had superstition? He Himself performed His own play. Nanak, there was no other Creator. When God was the sole Master, say who accounted bond or free. When there was only the one God, inaccessible, limitless, say who was born in hell or heaven. When God, who is without attributes, was in profound repose, say where were Shiv and his consort. When God himself held his own light, who was fearless, who feared anyone? He himself performed his own play. Nanak, God is inaccessible and illimitable. When the imperishable one was seated on his comfortable throne, say where were then transmigration and destruction? When there was only the perfect God, the Creator, say who had any fear of death. When there was only the one invisible and incomprehensible God, whom did Chitta and Gupt call on for his account? When there was only the pure, incomprehensible and unfathomable Lord, who was then emancipated, who was bound with fetters? God is wonderful in himself. Nanak, it was he himself created his own form. When there was only the pure being, the Lord of men, and there was no filth of sin, say what was the need of ablution. When there was only the bright, formless, and undisturbed one, who was held in honour, and who in dishonour? When there was only the Lord of the world, say who was the victim of deceit and fraud. When God's light was contained in himself, who felt hunger, who satiety? The Creator is the cause of causes. Nanak, the Creator is beyond calculation. When God's glory was contained in Himself, who was then mother, father, friend, son, or brother? When He Himself was versed in all accomplishments, where did anyone see the Vedas and Mohammedan books? When God kept His designs to Himself, who thought of favourable or unfavourable omens? When He Himself was far, and He Himself was near, who was master and who was slave? Man is astonished at the wonders of creation. Nanak, only God himself knoweth his own condition. When the undeceivable, the impenetrable, and the inscrutable one was contained in himself, who felt the influence of Mammon? When there was no one to offer obeisance to God but himself, the three qualities had not yet entered the world. When there was only the one God, who was free from care, who felt care, when God was content with himself, who preached and who listened? God is totally infinite, the most exalted of the exalted. O Nanak, he himself is his own parallel. When God made this illusion of the world, he diffused the three qualities in it. Demerits and merits began to be spoken of. Some suffered hell and others enjoyed heaven. God made the snares and entanglements of mammon, pride, worldly love, doubt, excessive fear, woe and weal, honour and dishonour, and delivered different kinds of doctrines. God himself performeth and beholdeth his own play. When he collecteth the stage properties, O Nanak, he alone remaineth. Where there are saints of the invisible, there is he himself. When God extended himself, the saints became glorious. He himself is the arbiter of both states. God's glory is peculiar to himself. He himself performeth plays, amusements, and frolics. He enjoyeth pleasures, and yet remaineth separate from them. He attacheth whomsoever he pleaseth to his name, and causeth whomsoever he pleaseth to play the play of the world. He is incalculable, unfathomable, uncountable, and unrivalled. His slave Nanak speaketh as he causes him to speak. Slok 22 O Lord of men and lower animals, Thou art contained in everything. Nanak, the one God is everywhere extended. Where is there another scene? Ashtapadi 22 Thou Thyself art the speaker, Thou Thyself the hearer. Thou art one, and Thou art many. When it pleased God, he created the world, and when it pleased him, he absorbed it in himself. Without thee, O God, nothing is done. 
Thou holdest the whole world on thy string. He whom God himself instructeth, obtaineth the true name, looketh on all with an equal eye, knoweth the truth, and is, O Nanak, victorious over the universe. Men and the lower animals are in the power of him who is compassionate to the poor and the patron of the patronless. No one can destroy whom God preserveth. He whom God forgetteth is already dead. Why should any one leave God and go to another? The one bright monarch is over all. Know that he in whose power are the ways of all creatures is with thee whether at home or abroad. The ocean of excellences is endless and illimitable. The slave Nanak is ever a sacrifice unto him. The perfect compassionate God filleth every place. He is merciful to all and knoweth his own affairs. The searcher of hearts is contained in everything and cherisheth creatures in diverse ways. Whatever creatures he made, meditate on him. He blendeth with himself whosoever pleaseth him, performeth his service and singeth his praises. He who hath hearty faith in him, O Nanak, recognizeth the one God, the Creator. The hopes of him who is attached to the name of the one God shall not be in vain. Service is the duty of the servant. He who obeyeth God's order shall obtain the supreme state, than which nothing more exalted can be conceived. He in whose heart the formless one dwelleth, and who night and day worshippeth the Guru's feet, shall burst his fetters and be free from enmity, he shall be at ease in this world, happy in the next, and, O Nanak, God will blend him with himself. Be joyous in the company of the saints. Sing the praises of God, who is the primal joy. Meditate on God's name, the real thing. Save thy human life so difficult of attainment, and sing the ambrosial words of God's praises. That is the way to save thy soul. He who beholdeth God ever near him shall be delivered from his ignorance, and his spiritual darkness dispelled. Hearken to instruction, and treasure it in thy heart. So shalt thou, Nanak, obtain the reward thy heart desireth. Arrange both this world and the next for thyself by clasping God's name to thy heart. Perfect is the teaching of the perfect Guru. He in whose heart it dwelleth assayeth the truth. With thy soul and body, attentively repeat God's name, and sorrow, pain, and fear shall depart from thy heart. O dealer, deal in the true merchandise of the name, and thy cargo shall go to heaven with thee. Put the prop of the one God into thy heart, Nanak, and thou shalt not again suffer transmigration. Where can any one go far from God? Thou shalt be saved by meditating on the Preserver. All his fear shall depart who uttereth the name of the fearless one, and he shall be saved by God's mercy. He whom God preserveth shall not feel misery. By repeating God's name, his mind shall be happy, his anxieties shall depart, his pride be erased, and there shall be none equal to him. None at all his affairs shall succeed, over whom the brave Guru watcheth. The world shall be saved by beholding the Guru, whose understanding is perfect, whose glance is nectar, and whose lotus feet are incomparable. Profitable is the sight of him, beautiful his form, blessed his service, and acceptable his servant. He in whose heart the searcher of hearts, the supreme being, dwelleth is happy, and death shall not approach him. Nanak, he who in the company of the saints meditateth on God, becometh immortal, and obtaineth the immortal rank. Slok 23 The Guru hath given the eye salve of divine knowledge, by which the darkness of ignorance is dispelled. The mind of him, O Nanak, who by God's favour meeteth the saints, is enlightened. Ashtapadi 23 In the company of the saints I have seen God within me. God's name to me is sweet. All things of various colours and diverse forms are in the heart of the one God. God's name is the nine treasures and ambrosia for him, in whose body it findeth a resting place. Where there is deep meditation, the unbeaten sound is heard. The wonder and marvel of it cannot be described. He to whom God showeth himself, beholdeth him, and, O Nanak, obtaineth understanding. 
The Endless One is with thee, whether at home or abroad. He is contained in every heart, in earth, heaven, and nether regions. In all worlds, he is the perfect cherisher. In forest, glade, and mountain, he is the supreme being. As he ordereth, so are his creatures' acts. In wind, water, fire, and in every direction, he is contained. There is no place where he is not. Nanak, by the Guru's favour, obtain happiness. Consult the Vedas, Purans, and Simritis, and thou shalt know that the one God is in the moon, the sun, and the stars. Everybody speaketh with the voice of God, who is unwavering and never wavereth. He playeth his play with all his appliances. He cannot be obtained by purchase. His attributes are priceless. His light is in all things. He holdeth the warp and woof of the world. Nanak, this is the creed of those who, by the Guru's favour, are freed from superstition. In the sight of the saints everything is God. In their hearts is all faith. It is only good words the saints hear. They love God who is contained in all things. The rule of the saint who knoweth God is to speak the truth to everybody. Whatever happeneth he taketh for the best. For he recognizeth God as the cause of causes. God dwelleth within as also without man. Nanak, on beholding him, all men are fascinated. He himself is true. True is everything that he hath made. Everything was created by God. If it please him, he expandeth himself. If it please him, his form alone remaineth. His manifold power cannot be seen. He blendeth with himself whomsoever he pleaseth. What can be described as near him, and what distant, since he himself filleth all space? Nanak, God causeth that man to understand him, whom he teacheth that he himself is within him. God himself abideth in all the elements. He beholdeth all things with his own eyes. The whole creation is his body. He himself heareth his own praises. He hath made transmigration as a play, and rendered Maya subservient to him. Included in everything, he yet remaineth distinct. Whatever order is to be given, he giveth himself. By his order man cometh, by his order man goeth. Nanak, when it pleaseth him, he blendeth man with himself. Whatever cometh from him is not evil. Say, hath any one except him done good? He himself is good. His acts are very good. He himself knoweth his own mind. He himself is true, and true is everything that he supporteth. The warp and woof of the world he hath blended with himself. His condition and measure cannot be described. If any one else were like him, he would know how to describe him. Nanak, by the favour of the Guru, it is known that all God's acts must be accepted. He who knoweth him must always be happy, and God will blend him with himself. He in whose heart God dwelleth is wealthy, of high family, honoured, and obtaineth salvation during life. Hail, 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 a man hath come, by whose favour the whole world shall be saved. The object of his coming was that through him the name might be remembered. He was saved himself, and he saved the world. To him, Nanak, I ever make obeisance. Slok 24 he who worshippeth the perfect God, whose name is perfect, and who singeth the praises of the perfect one, O Nanak, obtaineth the perfect one. Ashtapadi 24 Hear the instruction of the perfect Guru. Regard the Supreme Being as ever near thee. Repeat his name at every breath, and the anxiety of the heart shall depart. Abandon the fleeting wave of desire, and heartily pray for the dust of the saints' feet. Renounce pride, make supplication, and thus shalt thou in the company of the saints cross the ocean of fire. Fill thy storehouses with divine wealth, Nanak, and bow before the perfect Guru. By repeating God's name in the company of the saints, thou shalt obtain rest, comfort, peace, and happiness. Drink the nectarious essence of God's praise, and thou shalt avoid hell and save thy soul. Think in thy heart of the one God who hath one form, but many manifestations. Gopal, Damodar, compassionate to the poor, destroyer of pain, completely merciful. 
Remember, remember for ever his name. Nanak, it is the support of the soul. The saints' words are the holiest hymns. Priceless rubies are those gems. He who heareth them and liveth according to them shall be saved. He shall be saved himself and save others. Profitable his life and the lives of his associates, whose heart is touched by divine love. He for whom the unbeaten music of rejoicing playeth shall on hearing it be happy and sing God's praises. God shineth in the countenance of the holy man. Nanak, in his company men are saved. Hearing that God is able to give shelter, I have come to seek it. God hath mercifully blended me with himself. No hatred remaineth me. I have become the dust of all men's feet. I have in the saints' company obtained God's nectarious name. The divine Guru was pleased with me, and the service of his servant hath been rewarded. By hearing God's name and repeating it with my tongue, I have become free from entanglement and sin. God hath himself kindly shown me compassion, and, O Nanak, my cargo hath arrived at his haven. Praise God, my dear saints, with attentive and composed minds. In the Sukmani are composure, and God's praises and name. He who hoardeth it in his heart shall become wealthy, and all his desires shall be fulfilled. He shall become a distinguished person, renowned throughout the world. He shall obtain the highest place of all, and shall not again undergo transmigration. Nanak, he who obtaineth the Sukmani shall depart after earning the wealth of God's name. These advantages shall be obtained by him who reciteth the Sukmani, and heartily heareth Guru Nanak's words in praise of the name. Rest, peace, wealth, the nine treasures, understanding, divine knowledge, all spiritual power, wisdom, devotion, union with and meditation on God, the best divine knowledge, the most excellent ablutions, the four desirable objects, mental enlightenment, contempt of all things, though in the midst of them, beauty, cleverness, knowledge of the truth, and the power of looking on all men as equal. If any one heartily utter this precious hymn, he shall obtain salvation in every age. It containeth the sound of God's name, which the Simritis, Shastas, and Veds repeat. God's name is the sum total of all faith. It dwelleth in the hearts of his saints. Millions of sins are erased in the company of the saints, and by their favour man escapeth death. They on whose forehead God recorded such destiny have, O Nanak, entered the asylum of the saints. He in whose heart this Sukmani dwelleth, or who listeneth to it with love, shall remember the Lord God. The pain of birth and death shall be removed from him. His human life so hard to obtain shall that moment be saved. His renown shall be spotless and his speech nectar. The one name shall be contained in his heart. Sorrow, disease, fear and doubt shall not exist for him. His acts shall be pure. He shall be called a holy man and his fame shall be the most exalted of all. None such are the merits of the composition called Sukmani. End of section seventeen. Recording by Padi Palawalia, Ottawa.